Hello and welcome to Lane Audiobooks. Please subscribe and leave your suggestions and favorite novels on this channel. Thank you so much, and please enjoy the light novel. Volume 1 of The Eighth Son. Are you kidding me? Chapter 01, When I Wake Up. Eh? Where is this? As usual I woke up to the sound of my alarm clock that was set for 6 a.m. and quickly prepared to go to work. On my way to work, I stopped by the convenience store and bought breakfast, onigari and oolong tea. I ate my onigiri and drank the oolong tea while on my way to work. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Shinko Iakinomiya, 25 years old. Furthermore, I graduated from a decent university upon graduation, I entered a trading company like everyone else. Currently it is my third year of working at the company and I have subordinates who are younger than me however, I am constantly pulled into dilemmas between them and the boss. But it was something that somewhat applied to everyone, so I never really felt like quitting. Though for ordinary members of society, it should not be strange to think about quitting at least once however. They will only end up thinking that they are not brave enough or lack the financial resources to actually quit. I still live alone with no wife or girlfriend in an apartment within a 10 minute walk from the company. Most of my meals are eaten outside. Usually I get barely enough sleep because of fatigue from working until morning. I even spend the remainder of my holidays doing household chores such as cleaning and laundry. I can say that too is also ordinary. There are many people like me in Japan. I am not really that dissatisfied with life as long long as I keep working in the company, I might get a girlfriend, get married and have a child. You could say it was a pretty ordinary life. Or so I thought. I wake up as always, not remembering the contents of my dream. Strangely, the sound of my alarm clock that was always noisy was not present. I did not know what time it was but my eyes tells me it is dark outside. The room was pitch black, so I decide to investigate my surroundings and get up. As my eyes begin to gradually get used to the dark, I noticed many unfamiliar things, one after another. This was supposed to be my apartment room that I currently reside in yet I don't see any of the familiar wallpapers or any recognizable furniture. Three similar beds to mine had been placed near me then. I noticed that including myself there are three figures sleeping in the beds. And as I focus my eyes on the bulges on the other beds, I could see they were human-like figures in the beds. So this place is a quadruple room. When did I become a freeloader? To shake the confusion from the sudden change in environments, I decide to check my own condition. Just as I thought, my condition was quite different from before I went to bed. First, was my bed itself. Which should have been a high quality product by an eatery was now an old fashioned bed which was not all that comfortable. Even the blanket I was using was worn out and a little smelly. Then I thought about something trivial, I just bought that blanket a week ago, it was a new blanket too. After which, I steal my mind and begin to confirm the condition of my own body. Eh? Did my body become smaller? Sure. I am not that tall but my body should have been the average height of a Japanese male. However, right now, no matter how I look at it, my body had shrunk down to that of a child's height. Eh? This is? I had been reading web novels lately, so the idea of reincarnation into another world came to my mind at once. And as for not becoming a baby, there is a possibility that my consciousness now possesses another human being in another world. That would mean, it is dark now and the other people sleeping near me might think I was crazy if I made any noise at this late hour. Plus, I do not even know the relationship between the owner of this small body and the remaining three bed owners. However, it is most likely a big family though I don't know who they are. I must behave myself till I can confirm my situation so another nap will suffice. For now, I was overcome with the desire to sleep as I thought about this and fell back to sleep. Chapter 02, I think I'm in a trance. A boy again this is the eighth one. Man, dear, he's such healthy boy give him a suitable name. Woman, you're right how about Wendlin? His chance to succeed bore Mr. House is almost zero though. Man, within the dream world, it was as though my consciousness drifted away from my body, I witnessed the birth of a baby boy as if it was a scene from a movie. I, apparently, have been born as the eighth son of this poor Mr. House. Or is it more accurate to say that I took over his existence? As I later learned, this poor Mr. House is a lower-ranked noble family that governs around three villages on the frontier each with a population of two to three hundred villagers. Arto von Benno Bormister is the current family head, and for better or worse, he is a mediocre man in his forties with a similar class noble as his legal wife. 
Joanna and the local village chief's daughter as his mistress. The two women together had eight boys, including me, Wendlin, should a lower class noble, who governs a population of around 800, really have this many children though? In this era, I don't think they practice family planning. From the information I've gathered up until now, I came to understand that this world resembles Europe during the Middle Ages even if a child is born, there is no guarantee that all of them will grow up safely either. However, they can't afford to have only one child either, and as there is no guarantee that the legal wife may give birth, I can at least agree on the matter regarding a mistress, but eight boys is definitely too many in the worst case scenario a family feud will ensue. I feel sorry for the mistress children but that is probably not something I should worry about I still haven't actually seen the mistress face either. She is the mother of two boys and two girls, and if the memory of this body is accurate, the first boy will be the village headman's heir while the second will be wed to the daughter of the wealthy, but Ellis, farmer the girls also seem to have their marriages decided already. But enough about them their futures have been decided. The legal wife gave birth to the remaining six sons I thought that I was the, the mistress child, but I was given birth by the legal wife when she neared 40 years old. Honestly, I don't think a woman of her age should be getting pregnant but then again, from the financial aspects of a poor territory, it would be impossible to acquire a new, younger wife. To put it the other way around, I'm glad that their relationship as a married couple was excellent. Dear. Perhaps Wendlin might have talent for the sword or magic. Joanna, it's possible for him to be independent if that's the case. Artur, from the small child's memories I've taken over, I gradually came to understand my current condition. First of all, I am Wendlin, the eighth son of this shameless poor noble, a five-year-old six when counted from the start of the new year. Despite being born in a noble house, I cannot inherit any territory because I have so many elder brothers in the worst case. I would be unable to live as a noble. Generally, the eldest son would take over the house, the second is considered his spare, in case something happens, and any other sons are sent out to seek their own lives. Unlike a great noble family with vast territory or a noble family in an important position spanning generations in the capital city, for this poor lower-ranked noble whose only merit is bearing children, the third son and onward needs to make plans about their own future or else, risk their own life. That's harsh. What will happen to me, who should be sleeping at home, in his apartment? I don't have time to be happy about hearing the phrase magic a little while ago. I don't know how the adults live in this world, but I must find my own way to live for when the time comes to leave. It won't do any good to panic, but I have no idea how to live as a child who is just playing around. I confirmed Wendlin's life up till now by digesting it through this omniscient view afterwards. I'll wake up and hastily collect information so that I won't be suspected by my new family. Chapter 03, A Poor Noble House in the Southernmost Frontier After absorbing the previous Wendlin's memory from the dream, I woke up along with my new brothers to eat breakfast in the mansion's dining room. Although I say mansion, it was just the mansion of a lower-ranking noble. As there are a limited number of rooms, they are divided accordingly by utility. There's a study, a warehouse for food, money goods and armor, and etc. In my opinion, it's at best similar to a wealthy farmer's home. Those who have their own personal room are the current family head, Artur, 45 years old, and his legal wife, Joanna, 44. The others include Kurt, 25, the eldest son and Herman, 23, the second son. The four remaining brothers from the legal wife had been shoved into one room. Besides me, they are Paul. 19, the third son, Helmut, 17, the fourth son, and Eric, 16, the fifth son. This is the depressing scene of an overcrowded home though it's a good setting for an old novel. It should be noted that the mistress Layla, 31 resides at her parents' house, the villa of the village head. Living with her are her children, Walter, 14, the sixth son, Carl, 13, the seventh son, Agnes. 11, the eldest daughter, and Karina. 10, the second daughter. Although their name belonged to proper German nobles, the fact is the same in either world. From the information in yesterday's dream, it seems that there aren't enough rooms for everyone residing in the mansion. As it was not necessary for the mistress child to receive a noble's education, there was no need for them to stay in the mansion, nor for interactions with them, though. 
the previous Wendlin have met them several times in his memory. Others living there include the village head Zare and his wife, who happens to be an influential person in the territory, but the politics of it all don't matter to me since I won't inherit it. Back at the mansion, there are retainers that could be seen maintaining the house able. 71 is the butler who has been serving the family since the previous head there are four maids as well. But all of them are grandmas from the village since there is a possibility that Artur, with zero family plans and values, would impregnate them. There are also retainers that command the militia in times of war, but they are essentially ordinary farmers, artisans, hunters or blacksmiths from the village since they don't live in the mansion. All of them commute to work from their family houses in the village. In poor villages on the frontier, like this one, there is no difference between a warrior and farmer. In the case of an emergency, their governing nobles can mobilize them at will. Even so, there has been no occurrence of conflict in a small territory like this for the last 200 years. To begin with, the Bormister territory of the current family head, Artur von Benno Bormister, is in the southern end of the Helmut Kingdom on the Lingaya continent. The only potential enemy for the Helmut Kingdom would be the Urquhart Holy Empire that lies to the north of the continent however. The two nations are divided by a massive wilderness. The Urquhart Holy Empire had made headway by contributing money and labor on the development of this area, but has yet to secure a safe approach to the Helmut Kingdom located to the south. That is to say, both sides are unable to afford war due to logistic expenses. Nonetheless, until about 200 years ago, both nations have repeatedly summoned armies as a cautionary measure. They proceeded to sign a ceasefire treaty afterwards, as the exercise only wasted food and resources thus, a peaceful borderline was established. In addition, since trade between the two countries was opened, and excluding some hardliners, it can be said that the flames of war has been extinguished. Hence, I am at ease as I won't have to experience war one can say that I was lucky in that respect. Dear, what's the matter? Dot. Joanna. I turn my gaze to the meal in front of me. Brown bread served with a small portion of meat and vegetable a bowl of soup seasoned with only salt it is an incredibly bland meal, but it seems like eating meat in the morning is a proof of nobility. Nobles ate three meals a day whereas farmers ate only two. Since both of the menu included bread and soup. The social distinctions doesn't appear so different. The brown bread was hard and tasteless, if only it was followed with some soft white bread, jam, butter, cheese and tea or something the poor set of soup would become gorgeous with just that. I heard that there are big differences in the menu between rural, urban, and other areas. Is that true? I wouldn't know unless I go to the other areas though. If it is true then I have some disappointing news. Our Bormester territory appears to be quite poor. The matter of establishing a branch office of the Adventurers Guild has been refused. Artur. They might have been busy with work. Joanna. Clearing more transportation routes or the like would have been fine too. Artur. My new father, Artur, has a sour look in front of his remaining dish of soup. It was confirmed before that magic exists in this new world, as well as the famed Adventurers Guild. Magic and creatures like monsters exist too so there must be adventurers who hunted to make a living. Since the monsters in our territory are quite strong. Artur, father, can't you just call the army in to hunt them in one sweep? Dot. Kurt. Kurt, that's not possible we can't repeat the same blunder as the late Brithhilda Margrave Dono. Artur, the heir and eldest son, Kurt Nissan, suggested raising an army but was immediately rejected by Artur. Can I say something father? Dot. Wendlin. What is it, Wendlin? And no more soup for you. Artur. From yesterday's dreams, I, as the eighth son, am six years old if counted from the new year one was even seven years younger than the seventh son. Hence, my seat is at the end of the dining table, at the edge even. I was simply asking a question. But it was misunderstood as wanting a second serving you could consider it to be more evidence that this house is poor. No. I am not asking for more soup I want to ask about the Brithhilda Margrave's armor that tried to hunt the monsters. Wendlin. About that huh, we were requested to aid with the monster subjugation in our Bormister territory a few years ago. Artur. Judging from the terms of the request, they seem to have been confident in the endeavor, but after provoking the monsters on their own turf pointlessly, the Margrave's army of 2000 received a miserable crushing blow. Just after the new head of Brithhilda Margraviate took over, 
His first work was to rebuild the destroyed army. The new Brithhilda Margrave Dono said that as a noble, he doesn't have the rights to the territory currently occupied by the monsters to put it in another light, it means that he would never engage the monsters in our Bormister territory ever again. Artur, and so, I have to spend my life in a terribly ominous place until I grow up. The soup that I put in my mouth felt tasteless when I thought so. It wasn't that tasty to begin with, since it's only seasoned with small amounts of salt. Chapter 04 Bormister Knight Territory The territory under the Bormister House is actually large enough to be comparable to the territory held by an Archduke. Eric, after breakfast, I got an explanation from Eric Nissan he has the same mother as me that is to say he is of noble descent as well. He gives me a brief explanation on the facts of our parents' families, the Bormister Knight Territory. I was worried that they might have thought that it was strange for a six-year-old boy to ask such questions but my new parents, my other brothers and the servants didn't find anything strange about it. Or rather I, who is ten years younger than the fifth son Eric, whom looked mild and intellectual, was treated like an immature eighth son as such I did not garner that much attention until now. It actually saved me some trouble sometimes being treated as an immature kid. If we develop everything then, father. Wendlin. If we can develop it yet yeah, must be hard for the Margrave. Eric. But from Eric Nissan's dull tone. He left the question of if we could develop it open. My new hometown, Bormister Knight Territory, was located on the southeast side of the kingdom and faced the sea. But in between the coast and the villages, a vast amount of savage land and forest still remained. The forest was called the Demon Forest by the people and inside had ingredients and medicinal herbs of various natures. There were also some places mineral and jewel deposits could be found it would make the territory enormously wealthy if it could be developed. But this forest was, at the same time, also a monster den. The reason behind a monster outbreak was unknown, but the general idea was that common wild animals became huge and brutal. This clearly indicated that such creatures had emerged naturally from the ecosystem of the area. With their abundant reproductive ability, even the weakest creatures could be considered too strong for a normal person to defeat. On the other hand, the fur and tusk that could be harvested from such animals was considered expensive material the meat of such animals was also delicious and of high quality too. As such there existed adventurers that specialized in the subjugation of such monsters the adventurer guild that supported and managed them also exists the problem was that even the adventurer guild had refused to establish a branch office here because the Bormister Knight territory was considered frontier territory. The strong adventurers certainly could earn a lot in the demon forest but monsters Monsterdens of that level exists in many places around the continent. Eric, it was said that there exist thousands of places of such kind varying from small to large areas where such monsters lived on the Lingaya continent. They lived in the wilderness, prairie, river, lakes and marshes just like our forest. After a certain area had become a domain for monsters, they would eliminate any humans or other animals they had wandered inside the domain. The miserable death of the Margrave Brithhilda's army that Arthur talked about was the result of underestimating the strength of the monster territory. About the Margrave army's end, father and also the previous Margrave Brithhilda were too impatient did they get punished by the royal palace in the capital city after that. Dot. Wendlin. It is also the job of some adventurers with considerable ability to hunt monsters by secretly invading the monster territory with only a few people. Of course there were also many people who lost their lives but since the reward was equal to the risk, a fortune could still be made from such activities there were many people who had become famous and served in the royal palace because of such exploits including nobles based on Eric Nissan's story. But Eric Nissan then why did they refuse to establish the guild branch here? Dot. Wendlin, since they were busy. Eric, it appeared that there were also multiple domains where monster lived near the royal capital. The monsters in such domains have not come out for some reason not even one step from their domain, but they are merciless to any military forces or adventurers who invades their territory. Humans who invade the monster domain to get rich quickly are fighting desperately against monsters that try to eliminate them. Even with many people becoming adventurers, 
There were also those that retired early so there were still a lot of untouched monster domains in the center of the Lingaya continent. That was also a reason why the Bormister Knight territory couldn't be developed. The Helmut Kingdom and the Urquhart Holy Empire also called the area where the monsters live the Nevis continent in annoyance. I also think that our Bormister Knight territory is an area in the frontier where someone with the title of a knight could just possess a vast amount of territory. Eric. Originally, the first Bormister was a poor knight who lived in poverty without duty he took ten poor people and started a farming village on this open ground. The royal palace didn't think that people would actually start a farming village on this ground the Bormister house was only admitted as a noble house once the palace had received a report that our ancestors had succeeded in setting up a village. Eric. That said, this Bormister Knight territory was located in the most remote region of the kingdom to the extent that trade with the outside was limited. There are three villages that had developed at the foot of a mountain range that runs through the border area in the north and west. The population is about 800 people in total and their main occupation is agriculture with a bit of hunting and gathering things from the forest. A few even mine iron and copper. Eric. Our neighbor. The Brithhilda house was involved in a painful experience related to us in the western part an alliance of small and weak lords just like us in the northern part of the kingdom had gathered their territories together. At the same time, the wyverns that lived in swarms traveled constantly through mountain range in our territory there were also a lot of monsters that lived elsewhere so the only method of trade was trading with the caravan that came once every several months. They can barely pass through the thin mountain path if they come with guards adventurers are acquired as escorts through such a pass as such the goods exported are expensive. Eric, due to going to such remote villages a distance away. Guard duty of such caravans seemed to be unpopular with their adventurers given that there was the possibility of wyverns attacking the caravan that made the reward of such duties rise enormously which led to the item prices also going up in response it appears that there was no tariff imposed as well as declared by Arthur with his lord's right because the caravan will not come if we place a tariff. Eric. Eric Nissan kept explaining to me with a wry smile in short. We were surrounded from most sides by monster domains. The kingdom had given their approval that the local area and the huge savage land surrounding it was part of our territory to start with though. It was impossible to develop given a small and weak house controlled the territory and it was located in a rural area as well. This is the reality of my new home, the Bormister Knight Territory. Chapter 05 people in Bormister Knight Peerage House. That's it for now as I have sword practice after this. Eric. Thanks, Eric Nissan. Wendlin. No worries, it's for my cute little brother after all. Eric. After breakfast, Eric the fifth son, explained to me in detail about our family, who was still considered young due to my appearance. He later left the mansion saying he had sword practice. From the contents of yesterday's recollection. Eric Nissan was not really that good at the sword regardless, he seemed determined to learn the sword quickly and trained constantly despite being a lower class noble. However, there is no one in the current Bormister family that excels in swordsmanship. In fact, though our territory is surrounded by monsters, it does not seem to be in constant conflict with monsters. It seems that monsters never come out of their own domain and this fact remained without exception for the past several thousand years. You could say that the area where the monsters lived in may be near but they won't be a threat so long we did not step into their domain. Furthermore, I feel bad for saying it. But the Bormister Knight territory consists only of poor farming villages everyone except for the eldest son Kurt, who is father's heir, is assigned some sort of work. I have never cultivated the fields before but for the population of the Bormister territory that was gradually increasing, we would either need to reclaim the untouched plains or those yet to be occupied by monsters we also hunt in the forest for meat but only where common wild animals live. I can't really say that this is work meant for a noble but perhaps it is suitable for this poor knight family with a lot of kids. Though, compared to the other lower noble class family in rural areas, apparently this is the norm. However, they seem to practice martial arts such as the sword and bow or horse riding in their free time. Eh? Why don't we learn etiquette? reading, writing, and maths as nobles. Wendlin. Why should a lower class noble in the frontier, like us, learn etiquette? We don't even have any task in the royal capital other than the appointment. Joanna. Since, the content of our lessons were surprisingly few, I asked mother who was diligently making rope despite being a noble lady and she answered me with a puzzled look. In short, 
in the Bormester territory, with the exception of taking the long trip to the royal capital in the event of the family's head formal bestowal ceremony, there is no particular need to learn etiquette as a noble. In truth, even in the bestowal ceremony with the king, the armor worn is one that was handed down generation to generation within the Bormister family. I, as Helmut's king there, number generation of Helmut kingdom, I grant thou. Name the seventh rank knight peerage. I wield my sword, for his majesty, for the kingdom and for the people. It seems to end with just this exchange. Since there are so many similar knights in the kingdom, the busy king cannot even attend the ceremony for long. My new mother explained to me while dexterously braiding the rope in her hands. There certainly is no need for etiquette if this exchange is only a once in a lifetime thing. The exception to this would be for the higher ranked nobles and the nobles that enter government service at the capital city. Besides, about maths, reading and writing. Joanna. This also seems to not be needed much. Even though I thought we were nobles, if I were to think about the Middle Ages in Europe, I heard that there were many nobles who could not write. So long as you were able to write your own name, you can just leave everything such as tax calculations to the village chief and the village headman I remembered in a book I read that knowledge in maths wasn't needed at all. This is unlikely for a noble in the royal palace but it's hardly a problem if the noble's role was to take an active part in keeping the peace and waging war. However, since most enemies stay in one's own territory, there is no opportunity to hone and show off those skills either. Even with the etiquette for the Middle Ages in Europe, there were also some people who ate meat by grasping it in their hand. I can write all of our names but some people can only read and write simple characters. Come to think of it, was Wendlin ever able to read and write a simple sentence? Dot. Joanna. I am just the useless eighth son and am not really counted as manpower within the Lord's territory since I am just a child. For that reason, it seems that Wendlin was reading alone in the study room before I possessed him. The first job for the useless eighth son is to not become a hindrance for the working members of the family. Yes, only a little bit. Wendlin, you need to work harder. Joanna, this might hurt mother but it was natural since I can't inherit the family territory, if I think about it, I doubt I can even remain here. Even brother Eric who is not that good at the sword works hard on learning it as he most likely foresees a future where he might need it. However, it seems Eric is unusually good at maths, reading and writing considering the house he is a part of. I'll be reading a book in the study room. Wendlin. Okay. Joanna. I hastily went to the study room after talking to mother. Everyone else busy, I am just a useless kid after all. The age gap with my brothers is quite big and I do not really talk to them especially the eldest and second son. That doesn't mean that I am hated. The more correct answer is that there is no point of initiating contact since our ages are so far apart. Based on the memories from the previous Wendlin, I began to practice the sword and bow for a little bit after becoming six years old but the training was unreasonable for a six-year-old kid in the end. I just wanted to avoid disturbing the rest of the other adults. I can say it was a mission imposed on me. Oh, the number of books is surprisingly high. Wendlin. Even a poor noble family has its own history so there were many books in father's study room. There were books from numerous fields, which included topics such as history, literature, mathematics, mineral, biological and monsterology, a book on geology that matched a high school graduation level in Hosaiera Japan, a simple children's picture book, and even a cookbook. I feel that our meals are poor even though we have a cookbook. You can assume that they had given up since the materials used in the recipes cannot be secured. I can read it normally, I mean it's in Japanese. Wendlin. Though I had such premonitions since I converse with my family in Japanese, the common language in this world seems to be Japanese, though there are slight differences. Firstly, the format or style adopted by the lower class nobles has no relationship with the style of plebans or the royal palace in the capital but they can read and write it a little. They don't use kanji at all. Kanji part in hiragana, part of hiragana are described in katakana. This is seems to be how most sentences are formed in this world which I feel is rather difficult to read. Next is the format used by the kingdom and the neighboring empire primarily by the royal family, high-ranked nobles, the upper echelons of the church and various guilds scholars or academic societies of the various fields of study it is also the standard used in official documents published in the central government. It seems that this format, used by those in high position, 
is closer to ordinary Japanese. I can read this quite easily. Well, it was somewhat familiar but there were also parts where the meaning tends to be uncertain. There are even English words mixed in some nouns for some reason or part of the Japanese sections are written in Romanji. The more complicated English verses were quite difficult though I don't have much issues because a majority of the books were written in kanji but depending on the book, it may be in the Romanji notation the law governing all this was a little unclear. Even the official documents, the percentage of hiragana and katakana used is about 70%. Kanji 20% and the others are 10%. I honestly felt that it didn't matter but I am worried since bureaucrat and government officials are such creatures in any world. Since I am just a six-year-old kid right now, all I can do right now is to continue working hard at my martial arts and to build up my stamina though it will be good to store up on the knowledge of this world by reading the books in the study room, for later. I thought this to myself as I looked through the bookshelf till I spotted the one subject I really hoped to find. Beginner magic, intermediate magic, advanced magic, foundation in alchemy, producing magic tools for the first timers oh, there is really magic. Wendlin. I pick it up, feeling excited that I may be able to use magic. Chapter 06. The Existence of Magic. Magic. Eric. Yes, magic. Wendlin. It was time for lunch just as I was about to start reading. I went towards the dining room in anguish. Lunch was just brown bread with vegetable soup and minced meat seasoned with salt, just like breakfast. I'm just happy to be able to eat in this world, was what I thought as I ate my meal. As I began to finish up my meal as always, I asked Eric and Yisan, who sat next to me, what he knew about magic. By the way, my parents and my two older brothers were apparently busy discussing how best to cultivate the newly expanded land and paid me no heed. Concerning magic, almost all books on the subject is in father's study room there is even a crystal ball used for magic training. Eric, it seems the magic techniques in this world was not something that was hidden away. Those detailed books were placed in the study room because father was unfamiliar with magic. There is also the crystal ball but the books related to their subject of magic are cheaper than the books concerning other fields. Eric, the reason is simple, very few human beings have magical talent. Apparently magical talent is not hereditary as well. The chances of a prodigy in magic coming from a farmer's family is actually quite high. It was thus established that books on magic should be easily obtainable even for commoners. It seems that I won't die without knowing whether I have any magical talent. By the way, it is the kingdom that is providing the aid since an excellent magician brings a lot of benefits to the nation. Actually, most humans have a small amount magic power but most are unable to cast magic at any scale it is said that only one person in a thousand can use magic. Eric. Moreover, of that number, only half of them are able produce a spark how fill a cup of water only once a day. They can do only that much. A magician who can produce a fireball capable of burning monsters will be hired and given a high salary by anyone in the royal family or one of the nobles however, such a person is quite rare. Eric, they would go that far since such a person is only one in several thousands and can't be found that easily. The number of people who live in this country is about 50 million according to a book I read and based on that alone, I calculated that there are only about 10,000 to 20,000 capable of using magic. Next is Eric, magicians seem to have preferences. There are the classical magicians that use magic attacks such as fireball, ice arrow, rock splinter and wind blade. Then there are some that fight by combining magic and hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques, increasing their attacks, agility and defense against both melee and magic. There are also people who specialize in non-combat magic such as communications or ways to reach a destination quickly. Finally, there are those who purify metal ores, use magic stored in magic crystals or specialize in creating magical tools. The number of people in each category grow smaller as you go down the list so it is extremely logical that such an existence can earn a lot of money. Magic, it's filled with dreams. Wendlin. Well, yeah. Dot. Eric. Eric Nissan let out a complicated smile to my comment. I thought that it was exactly like a child's dream but I am not dreaming in such a way since I am 25 years old inside. It is just that if you were to take such an attitude, adults will look at you with a certain affection at least based on my own beliefs. I remember I used to practice magic every day, just like you, Vil. 
Eric. Eric Nissan talks about his memories from the past. And it seems Vul is something like an abbreviation to my name, huh? I will try practicing magic immediately. Wendlin, do your best. Eric. After I finished my talk with Eric Nissan, I quickly finished my meal and hurriedly went to the study room. The other family members took no notice of me and were either too absorbed in their sword practice or talking about the newly reclaimed land to pay me any particular attention. They gave minimum support to a useless child, but that doesn't mean I was forced to do hard labor, so it was not a cruel family. My only wish now was to quickly become independent. Chapter 07 Aspire to become a mage. All right. Let's start practicing magic. Wendlin. I return to the study room first, I pull out a book called Introduction to Beginners Class Magic and put it in front of me along with the magic crystal ball which was carelessly neglected, judging from the amount of dust on it. It seems that no one in this family can use magic judging from the way this crystal ball has been treated. There must be no one in our territory that can use it either. It is one person in several thousand after all. Let's see first. Hold up both hands and cover the crystal ball. Wendlin. As I follow what was written in the book, the crystal ball starts to give off a dim rainbow colored light. It'll give off a rainbow light but don't be surprised since everyone can do it next is to absorb the rainbow light into your palm and imagine it circulating inside your body. Wendlin. When I do it as was written in the book. The rainbow light disappears from the crystal ball and it feels like my body gradually becomes hotter. The fact that the rainbow light disappears from the crystal ball and the practitioner's body starts to feel hot indicates that the person has magical talent however, there are big differences in the level of talent so don't expect too much next is training to circulate the magic in your body and it would be preferable if you execute it while slowly counting to 100 every day. Wendlin, according to what was written in the book. Magic in the human body is circulated through one particular set of arteries known as the magic path and is stored in an organ called the magic bag. But it is a fact that these magical organs could not be found even if one were to dissect a human being. According to a theory, it is hypothesized that the arteries and the magic bag exist in the same positions as other organs but in a different dimension there is no proof of this but it was written as fact in the book. Circulate the magical power Magical powers would increase as you expand your magical pathways as you consciously feed magical power into the magic bag. The magic bag will expand and likewise increase your magical capacity. Dot. Wendlin. The magic bag feels like the internal organs that the monsters in Ultraman had, which I saw when I was a child it seems one's belly does not bulge out even if one practices expanding magic. In this kind of story, the next step by default would be to use magic in large quantities to increase one's magical capacity, after which, one is to train your accuracy and the power output of their magic which also helps to further increase one's magical capacity. However, there is a limit in every human it is almost certain that the growth limit of your magic capacity has been reached if you do not feel your magic increasing within three consecutive days after which, try harder to improve your magical power and accuracy, and learning several types of magic you can use. Wendlin. I see, given the research on this subject has advanced so far. The result was announced without any regret in the outcome. The method of learning has been thoroughly studied but the humans that can use magic are extremely few. But this is really convenient, there is still a shortage of talent even though the demand for it has increased. In other words, the road to independence becomes faster if one can use magic. Wendlin. The next thing to do is to learn beginner's class magic. Since it was just beginner's class. Such magic involved only lighting a fire on your fingertips which was as strong as a matchstick or light, filling a bucket worth of water, creating a small whirlwind on the palms of your hand, changing the soil outside into a sharp shard and hitting a board set up as a target. It was written in the book to keep repeating magic at this level. By now, I should be able to immediately conjure the image of beginner's level magic in my head. According to the book. It does not seem necessary to chant or write magic formations for small magical arts. Some people do mutter or shout out a word or cry what he or she thought about, or even add an action such as swinging the staff in a particular motion. It seems if such a method helps that person increase his accuracy or power, it deemed appropriate for that person though there seems to be people like me who can invoke magic without chanting by just imagining the spell. In a nutshell, 
people with talent can do it immediately but it was impossible for those with no talent no matter how much effort he or she puts into it. Wendlin, that is a pretty cruel description written in the book. Go for the intermediate edition of this book if you think that you did not have much difficulty learning this after a week. Wendlin, since it was written so, I try to flip through the intermediate book so as to prepare for my next lesson. The contents in the intermediate magic book include such things such as fire arrow, ice arrow, making a rock shard and skewering an enemy from far away killing an enemy a small wind blades and simple body enhancements. Since I was left alone in the house anyway, I will work hard practicing magic every day. Wendlin, after one week, I have trained my magic as written in the book but I never heard anyone in the house ask me if I could use magic. I think it is probably because having magical talent was the same as hitting the lottery. They may not have expected anything at all since I was considered to be just a useless kid. Chapter 08 the useless child working hard at magic training. I get up as the sun rises in the morning and swing my wooden sword right after breakfast to the limits of a five-year-old child's body later, I train on my marksmanship with the bow and read alone silently in the study room. After lunch is magic training and after dinner is continual magic practice until it gets too dark to read. Fortunately, the time I have to train has extended much later into the night since I learned to cast the magic light. My body is still that of a child through so the main drawback is that I become sleepy relatively fast. By the way, father hardly ever enters the study room. He can't read kanji at all he throws almost all his duty as a lord to the village chief and village headman. He also signs the finished documents in the dining room. I mean, what would he do if the tax money was being embezzled? However, it honestly doesn't matter since it is unrelated to me. Now for intermediate magic. Wendlin. I started my training in magic a week after being transferred to this world I want to begin my training in. Intermediate magic next the forest will be a good place since no one enters it. I can't cast the magic spell fire arrow indoors after all. And I can say that I went out to play though it seems that my family does not really care about what I do. They are busy and they didn't really care as I am just a five years old brat. That is why I am standing at the entrance of the fairly vast forest located behind our house. This forest is a so called ordinary forest. Monsters don't live in here at all but instead ordinary wildlife like rabbits. Rabbits and wild boars do it as my family's regular source of protein and the people within the Lord's territory use it to hunt wild animals, collect firewood and edible plants or nuts. It is our important life asset that we manage. The entrance is not that dangerous and no one would be angry if I practice magic here unless I burn the trees with fire magic, and if something does happen to me. It won't affect my home which leaves me alone completely. I am lucky that I can use magic freely. I should aim for advanced level magic. Wendlin. The book wrote that I need to patiently train in intermediate magic for a month. The manual is detailed and it is easy to follow as the measurements signifying progress are actually written down. I try the intermediate magic written in the book one by one. After that came the application of that basic magic casting an original magic spell that you thought up by yourself. After that is the so-called combat system, separate from basic magic training. As I thought, it is impossible to use advanced magic here. Wendlin. I don't mean my own inability to do so but there is no way I can fire a huge tornado and fire a fireball in rapid successions right here, in the important forest behind our house. And, this body is still that of a six-year-old's instead. I decide to patiently improve my magic techniques in intermediate magic to ensure a rise in my magic's accuracy and increase in my magic capacity. I may choose to train in advanced magic if it would not be noticeable. However for now, there are not many opportunities for that. Maybe a range of about one kilometer? Dot. Wendlin. For that reason. I'm practicing magic detection by making full use of advanced wind magic which I can use without attracting attention. This magic allows me to sense the presence of anyone besides myself within a specified range. It was written in the book that the users of this magic were very few. Though my accuracy was far from being the best, famous detection magic users could perceive movements of life within a range of 10 kilometers around them. There were also people who could sense living beings but were not able to determine exactly what living being it was and those who can sense how many humans, 
animals or monsters and even the size of them were in their vicinity. What's even more amazing is that they can remember the humans or monsters individually so long as that they have detected them at least once in the past. Just like a human radar which can identify anything that enters that individual's range, there also seems to be a person that has such dreadful precision at detection. I can only train myself to detect up to a kilometer radius from where I stand, though it is possible for me to grasp the size and number of detected life forms. A radar scope is the image that comes to my mind, via the range of the encirclement and the position of the light spot. I can grasp the object's size. You could say that I am now able to detect humans and wild animals such as rabbits, wild boards and bears. I have just come into this world for about a month so I never seen the figure of a monster before but even my new family with their non-interference policy would not want their six years old child to face a dangerous existence. I should work hard at training my magic. Wendlin. This detection magic really is convenient. Wild boars and bears should be a difficult opponents for a six years old child regardless of how well I can use magic however, with detection magic. I can explore the forest while avoiding danger. Since I started exploring the forest, I mean, actually yesterday evening, father, who had not spoken to me until yesterday, issued an order to me. Vul, I heard recently that you've been exploring the forest. Artur. Yes. Wendlin. There are many dangerous animals in the forest. Take care. Artur. The permission was easily given but the non-interference policy still stands. But even if by any chance I the eighth son, died, it would not influence the survival of the Bormister Knight territory, and try to collect anything that seems edible in the forest also, pick up as much firewood as you can. Artur, he has never asked me to help with the farm before but even I, as a six year old, can still help the family financially. So I sheath the wooden sword that I use for daily training onto my waist today. I honestly think that carrying the sword is better than nothing. I would have liked to have been gifted a sword made from iron or bronze but this territory's economy is not rich enough or it is just a waste to give a child a metal sword. Next is a backpack to put the firewood in, a small bow and ten arrows that were used for training. The small arrows don't have arrowheads but its tips were sharpened for my training. Maybe I can take down a small bird if I am lucky. It was definitely more preferable than having nothing but I should use the arrows before the animals manage to escape. I don't really expect anything with this weapon though. Wendlin. That reminds me, I should use the magic that I had thought of by myself. I produce a short arrow with some earth and shoot it via wind magic. I could just produce a crossbow with magic but magic itself in this world is quite easy to manipulate and improve on. Thus a physical representation isn't necessary. However because magic depends too much on the talent of the caster, I should entrust it to fate whether or not I can really do it. Luckily, I succeed in developing this magic. The power is sufficient I could even defeat the bear if it hits its weak points. Rapid fire is also possible but I need to improve on its firing rate for now. For control, it was not difficult at all due in part, my training with the bow. Let's see was this wild plant edible? Dot. Wendlin. Besides that, I also gather edible mushrooms and wild strawberries in reference to an illustrated book which I found at home, and next is to load the backpack with firewood. The load gradually becomes heavier but it was easy to carry with the lightweight spell from intermediate wind magic and enchanting my own strength using water magic. I put recovery magic from water magic onto my weary muscles. The lactic acid in the muscles disappears and I suddenly feel my body lightened. I can now use all the magic written in the book I wonder if I should aim for serving the royal court in the future. Wendlin. This will suffice as magic training with plenty of firewood and wild plants. I decided to go home for the day. I advance at a comfortable pace on the way back thanks to magic and I soon approach the exit. Suddenly, I see a bird coming into sights. A guinea fowl. Guinea fowl is a fat bird like a duck that lives across this continent. The meat is delicious and its feathers are also popular as material for making ornaments with. The only problem is that this bird is hard to capture. Unlike its appearance, it's sensitive to people's presence and it is also quick to flee. Our territory's best hunter holed up for an entire day in the forest can only capture one, if he was lucky. Of course it's rarely served on the table. I also was only able to eat a small piece of it this month. It was better than not getting anything but you can say that this is the sorrow of the sad, small eighth son. Even with just that small piece, 
It was deliciousness so compact for such a small piece of meat weight. What if I can hunt this guinea fowl? Maybe I can get brown bread and salt vegetable soup followed with roasted fowl meat every day. Our family's policy is non-interference but it is not really that cold. The achievement of hunting this guinea fowl would surely not be go unnoticed. I've decided wait for me meat. In this one month since I came to this world, it has been fun doing special training for magic but I need to be decisive about my own meals, for the sake of my nutrition. But I, as a former Japanese, was still concerned with my own food. I feel like my motives were somewhat less than noble but I don't care. I need to concentrate on hunting that guinea fowl for now. I need to approach to get it within the range of this short small bow before the guinea fowl runs away. Then I'll develop a new type magic for the crossbow. Dot. Wendlin. Initially after five shots, the guinea fowls were on the verge of escaping since I missed the mark greatly but my aim gradually became more accurate and I finally succeeded in killing two guinea fowl birds. I am back. Wendlin. Oh, Vuldas the firewood did you kill a guinea fowl? Dot. Artur. Two guinea birds were queued up magnificently on the table that night and I, as the contributor, succeeded in eating a delicious roasted fowl after such a long time. And I was praised for the first time by my entire family. Chapter 09, Every Day in the Forest. I'm going to the forest. Wendlin. Watch out for bears and wolves. Artur. Lately, a week after my first experience hunting guinea fowl, father looks to be in a good mood especially because of me who was going out to the forest as per usual, even though I am still an useless six-year-old child and am considered to be an immature child, I was contributing to the family's dinners by making it more lavish than usual. Everyone else originally thought that it was still impossible for me to help on the land but now, I go out hunting every day for guinea fowl that is deemed to be difficult to hunt even for professional hunters. I also forage for other foodstuffs like wild strawberries, wild edible plants and yam. Ever since I started collecting all these ingredients, my reputation with my family has improved. It seems that everyone was fed up with only eating brown bread and salted vegetable soup. However, that doesn't mean I will be living in this village indefinitely. Many villagers due to the increasing population brought about by the expansion of the farmlands, were allocated farm work this led to less people being actually capable of hunting and gathering in the forest. This was also due to wheat being the basic ingredient of bread, an essential food for the people. With that fact, father had reallocated the people from foraging and hunting to farm work. Sending a kid out might be dangerous but since I am only the eighth son, there is no real loss even if I died. Even for the other kids. They are all busy helping out on the farm or with other businesses. They are worried about their precious manpower dying in the forest as such. The only kid that is allowed to enter the forest is me. I wonder how a six-year-old kid of a noble family is expected to work. Does this world only consist of poor lower class noble families? Is that the reality of humans in this world? I plan to go to the city after I grow up. I only hope that it will be a much better there. Nonetheless. I will continue to hunt and gather at the very least, to improve my own diet. A guinea fowl is the main dish, with a side of wild edible plants I can also use the wild strawberries to make jam for the dull and tasteless bread. Besides all the foodstuff I can gather in the forest, I am also able to practice magic as I please. This magic is commonly known as, report. Wendlin. I can't really practice flashy magic attacks so I mainly stick to support magic like strengthening my body temporarily and recovery, healing magic. I advance into the depths of the forest while confirming that there are no large wild animals approaching through detection magic. Today, I decided to try a spell written on a new page of the magic book. That new magic is called, report which is a magic that informs the user of something within their vicinity. A dim and thin light came into my view in several places when I tried to use it. If I look closely, the light came from the vines of some wild yam that stretched from the tree's base to the ground. Some aconite grew naturally around that area as well. I see, the spell tells me the location of certain ingredients by dimly illuminating the whereabouts of that particular ingredient. Although wild yam is a valid food source, Aconites do not have much purpose in this world it is a poisonous plant and would often be used in assassinations. I felt like I've heard in my previous world about how poisons could be used to the benefit of a person depending on how you use it but let's leave it for now as it is still unclear as to how one could properly use it for that purpose. First, 
I begin digging up the wild yam by using digging magic of the earth magic system which I have improved on. It's just like in the previous world, but if a six years old kid was digging up wild yam without any help like this, it would be the end of the day by the time they finished digging it up. I dig it up using, dig, that was in the intermediate magic book to avoid damaging the wild yam. With that, a stunning wild yam with an overall length of about two meters is dug out. As I expected, not that many people come into the forest. It's a stunning wild yam but it would be inconvenient to carry it for too long. There is no point on selling it either, so I break it into halves and put it into my backpack. Next is to hunt for two guinea fowl birds as usual. The other task is to fill my backpack with edible wild plants and akebia. TL a flower plant which produces something similar to tapioca and native to Japan. But I can't understand the ecosystem and the vegetation in this forest. Wendlin. In fact, there wasn't actually any flora or fauna that I have not seen before in the forest of Japan in my previous life there. Pine, cedar and broadleaf tree, rabbit, wild boar, bears and wolves, wild yam, edible wild plants and akebia. The flora and fauna is all well known but the order is all mixed up. It's nature's grace, many people would say that. It just that mostly every villager has been allocated to farming so the only people that frequently go hunting and gathering are the professional hunters. And the basics are to enter the forest with two or more adult males to avoid bears and wolves. It can be said that it would be impossible for just one adult male to gather anything in the forest alone. Even professional hunters seem to hunt in a different forest near their home. Wendlin. So yeah, except for hunting groups that pass by, people rarely enter this part of the forest. It's quite a wasteful story but the yield from nature's blessings without any kind of stability and yields cannot become tax revenue farm products where the yields can be calculated to some extent should be given priority I guess it is a rational move as a lord. Because this place is a remote place where trade with other territories rarely occurs. We cannot afford not to be self-sufficient as it would be directly connected to starvation. Next is Wendlin. When I look for places that shine faintly, there are fresh fruits that look a lot like loquat in a tree over there. It certainly looks like it came from the loquat family. It should also be called loquat in this world. I peel the skin and try to bite into it after I use magic to detect if there is any poison inside the fruit. The taste of sweet fruit juice gradually spreads throughout my mouth. I also gathered fruits similar to akebi and persimmons. I had wanted to get an autumn fruit as it seems to be in season now but it does not seem to work like that. The season now seems to be between spring and summer but when I check in the book as to why the tree bears such fruit, it was written that the fruit seasons vary by the tree's species. In other words, trees bear fruit in the spring as well as in the summer. Moreover in here. Some trees wither up in winter without snow even falling and there are also species of trees that bear fruit in winter. As expected or rather it can be said for the climate in the southern part of the continent. I feel that the diet is unusually lacking though, but I can't do anything about it as I am just a kid right now. Using a lot of magic, I rushed home to ensure that my harvest is used for dinner tonight. Good work. Joanna. I hand over the harvest results to mother as I enjoy dinner. With two additional side dishes, father suddenly begins to say something to me. Hunter Evans seemed to have witnessed a talking corpse. Arthur. Is that really true father? Dot. Kurt. The eldest brother Kurt raised his voice in surprise. Yeah, it was a victim from five years ago. Arthur. Five years ago. Father wished to open up the demon forest that monster resided in even if it was just a small part of it the Brithhilda commander who dispatched out an army tempted by that concession, endured heavy casualties. You could say it was by luck that father did not go on the expedition himself as father was busy maintaining public order since approximately 2000 soldiers from another territory were placed in his territory so he did not have to go personally into the demon forest, but out of the 100 soldiers led by uncle who was father's vassal, only 23 returned. Of course, uncle also did not return, as the Bormister Knight territory's population increases in small increments every year, 
it can be easily estimated how serious a matter the death of 77 adult males was to the Bormister Night Territory. Allocation of personnel is being focused solely on farming right now and I who goes out hunting and gathering without a word in the dangerous forest. There were big implications following the sightings of a talking corpse. Brithhilda's army commander and about 1,925 people including the Brithhilda's previous family head did not return, by the public's view. They were beaten to near complete annihilation. Will that ghost type monster disturb us for a while after all that has happened? Dot. Wendlin. I can say that talking corpses are more preferable as zombies are a hassle to subjugate. Artur. It was a common sense that monster didn't leave their domain, but this ghost type monster was the only expectation. They were originally humans, so there are some individuals that try to return to their home instinctively even when they had become monsters, according to the picture book. Monsters like zombies that move only by instinct seems to be a troublesome existence that harms humans. They should be subjugated immediately. Their movements are usually slow and they are really weak to fire so you can just light them with oil and they'll be done for. However for a talking corpse, they need to be dealt with on a case by case basis. There's some cases where it becomes fiercer in fear of death so you can only burn it just like the zombies or it would speak to others like a normal human being and will die peacefully if their requests are granted. Those who can communicate to them on some basic level are priests and a number of clerics but even a common person can put them to rest if they are on the same wavelength. Should we call priests Sama? Kurt. Master Dono has bad hips from old age it's impossible to look for the talking corpse when we don't even know of its whereabouts. Artur. In such remote lands. The priest that was dispatched came from the church headquarters in the imperial city. But in fact it was just an old priest beyond 80 years of age and he came alone. There were no sisters that followed either so a few grandmothers in the territory have been helping the church carry out its miscellaneous duties. Moreover, there are very few religious people in the Bormister Night Territory I only participated in church assemblies unwillingly a few times, perhaps as long as this old priest is not called to heaven, a new priest from the imperial city would not come. That's why Vil, you need to be careful when you enter the forest. In the end, there is a possibility of them trying to get out from their domain. Artur, while listening to the story from my surprisingly irresponsible father, an interest in the talking corpse was sparked within me. Chapter 10, Encounter with my magic master. Finally, a human on the same wavelength what is your name? Dot. Alfred. The day after I heard the stories about the talking corpse from my father, I entered the forest as usual and a person around the age of 30 with pale skin started talking to me. My name is Alfred Reinford a magician retainer of Margrave Brithhilda when I was alive. Alfred. The person who suddenly started talking to me was apparently the talking corpse from the discussion last night I did not sense him with my detection magic and since he suddenly started talking to me while I was looking down in my gathering spot, I got a shock. I seem to have surprised you. I finally found a human with the same wavelength as me so I got impatient sorry. Alfred. He has a good figure speaks well and behaves gentlemanly this handsome Nissan apologetically bowed to the surprised me. Considering his good personality and handsomeness, if I was a woman, I would have likely fallen in love with him. He'd be perfect if not for the pale skin but that was after all one of the main characteristics of a talking corpse. You are quite skilled in detection magic considering your age, or you could say that a magician that can use detection magic like you is valuable are, ah, about me not being caught by your detection magic. That doesn't mean that all ghost type monsters are undetectable I just happen to be an expert in deceiving detection magic. Alfred. That's a frightful magic. Wendlin. You're right it is a magic that maybe only 10 people on this continent can use of course I am going to have you learn it too. Alfred. Huh? Dot. Wendlin. In response to what the talking corpse suddenly proposed. I unconsciously let out a strange voice. Did you hear about the possible method to make talking corpses pass peacefully? Dot. Alfred. Yes, fulfill their wish according to the story I heard. Wendlin. My wish is to meet a disciple and pass on the magic that I obtained in my 30 years of life. You excel in magic and have been successful in obtaining near first class abilities through self teaching. Your comprehension of magic is almost completely self taught, but you can learn the secrets of magic from me even if it is only for one week. Your proficiency would increase. Alfred. After the exchange, 
I became the disciple of Alfred Rienford the magician retainer of the former Margrave Brithhilda. In the mornings, after finishing some simple martial arts training, I go towards the depths of the forest where my master waits for me with a smile this is of course done after hunting animals and gathering materials needed for me to carry in order to deceive my family. The time that was once used for hunting and gathering was now being used for magic training as much as possible. But still, that was amazing. Wendlin, you won't need to worry about provisions when you can use magic. Alfred, as expected, Master also skillfully took down guinea fowls quickly by using magic he also learnt my crossbow magic very quickly by imitating it. Well then, let's begin. Alfred, what should we do first? Dot. Wendlin, alright, I'll teach you the training method for capacity adjustment. Alfred, I don't know much about this at all since I am a self-taught magician but there is this training method that increases the magic capacity of one in a short period of time. This is done by creating a circle while grasping both of the other person's hands and gradually circulating a lot of magic through both people's bodies. Eventually, the magic capacity of the magician with a lesser magic capacity will rise and match the magician with a greater magic capacity. But there is one issue since the maximum magic capacity of a person is determined at birth. If the magic capacity increase exceeds the maximum magic capacity of a person, their capacity will only increase until it reaches their maximum value. Alfred, put simply, when two people are matched, one with 10 and the other with 100 as their magic capacity, the magic capacity of the person with 10 should theoretically become 100. But if the limit is 10 then it won't increase, and if it is 30 it will only increase till 30. Even if it doesn't increase by more than 100 or 200, I can't really skip out on training if it's like that. I have 10 times more magic capacity than you, it should help you since you still have room to grow in terms of magic capacity. Alfred, is it safe for magic capacity to suddenly grow so quickly? Dot. Wendlin, ha ha ha. You won't explode when someone with a low maximum capacity receives a large amount of magic all at once. The person will become ill for two to three days because of magic sickness but there won't be any danger to the person's life. Alfred, while listening to the potential side effects of the magic, Master and I connect both our hands. Master's hand is a little cold, well he is dead after all. After I close my eyes, we both channel our magic power through our hands I visualize the imagination of magic flowing to my magic bag from my partner's magic path then. I visualize the imagination of vast magic power flowing gradually from master's hands. Oh, this is more than I expected. Alfred, after about 10 minutes of maintaining this state, the flow of magic power suddenly stopped all at once. Good, with this the capacity adjustment is done. Alfred, when master said the adjustment ritual was done, his eyes were shining. It's just as I suspected, your current magic capacity has become the same as mine. But you haven't reached your limit yet either you will become a great magician whose name will be recorded in history. Alfred, really? Dot. Wendlin, I guarantee it you have the potential to become a magician that exceeds me if you continue training diligently without becoming conceited you will certainly surpass me. Alfred, after one week of training attentively under master's instruction, as expected, I can't practice a wide range of high rank combat magic but that's not really a problem since I can go to uninhabited places and continue training in other difficult special magic. What is that Rodmaster? Dot. Wendlin. Something I made, it's a magic sword hilt. Alfred. So Master can also create magic tools. Wendlin. Just simple ones though. Alfred. It was written in a book that only those with special talent among magicians can produce magic tools. However, Master said that the description of this book seems to be inaccurate. There are two types of magic tools. Alfred, Master showed me one of his books while saying so. The book was titled, How to Make Magic Tools and Their Blueprints. If you can grasp the basics, you can make and use magic tools without any issues, even if they are a little sloppy. Alfred, that's true there are a lot of ordinary daily necessity purposed magic tools written in the book. The only difference is that a mana prism the size of a rice grain was put in there. A really small mana prism. Wendlin, yeah, the mana prism acts as the trigger. Alfred, so this magic tool can't be loaded with much magic. If anything, it looks like it's designed to draw magic from a magician to function. Eh, you mean, dot. 
Wendlin. This is a magic tool that can be used only by magicians. In fact, you can invoke it without using your own magic. So most magicians own two or more. There are many magicians who can make this kind of magic tool. Alfred. On the contrary, there are rarely any magicians who are unable to make that kind of magic tool. That kind of magic tool is made using a mana crystal so it can thereby function as a magic battery which can store a large amount of magic. There are many people who can't use magic that also use the versatile one. That doesn't mean people can easily use mana crystals with high capacity since the tool will explode if used poorly so that's why versatile magic tools are expensive. Alfred. Magic in mana crystals must be replenished when the magic in it runs out. Naturally, only magicians can replenish this magic power. That's why versatile magic tools can't spread easily. You can also easily make a magic tool for only magicians to use. Alfred. I see, so it's like that by the way, about that sword. Wendlin. I think it was called an anti-monster use magic tool. It's a magic tool that creates a blade out of magic attribute it is infused with. Alfred, after saying that, Master produced a thin flame about one meter and a half from the sword hilt. The temperature of blue flames is high even a sword made out of steel would a melt completely if it was used to block my attack. Alfred, the blade can also be produced from ice, wind, and earth magic. There are many monsters out there that are weak against certain attributes against those types of monsters. A fire blade can be used for monsters that are weak against fire. A water one can be used against monsters that are weak against ice. And as for the earth blade, the effect is enormous against monsters that are weak against it even if the blade's appearance looks like that. Alfred, after the explanation, I received a lecture about how to make mana crystals installed in magic tools that are only intended for magicians to use and how the magic works I successfully learnt it. The raw materials for mana crystals are the magic stones that come out from monsters bodies. This forest doesn't have any monsters so the material to create a mana crystal came from master's bag. It surprisingly didn't take that much time. Wendlin. This is just basic training you'll end up just like me if you're careless. Alfred. In this one week, I've become convinced that Master is an excellent magician. But even for Master who possessed so much ability, he would easily end up dead if he was reckless in this world. During my magic training, I got to hear various stories from Master. He was an orphan but since he had talent in magic, he earned money by becoming an adventurer. Margrave Brithhilda hired him due to his ability. His first major job was to march into the magic forest. That was the worst possible outcome. Wendlin. You know some difficult words even though you're still a kid you could say that though using extreme logic. Alfred. I wonder if Master is frustrated by the fact that he died soon after rising to fame. When that thought passed through my head, Master's words continued as if he could read my heart. I would be lying if I said I'm not mortified but it's not too bad I found a disciple to pass my own magic and story to before I passed on. Alfred. Do you mean me? Dot. Wendlin. Excellent magicians are sensitive to the signs of other magicians and can identify other excellent magicians as well. Although magic power in a magician's body can't be easily detected, when magic is used, being detected can be expected it's something like a sixth sense magicians can just perceive it somehow, but I. Wendlin. In your case you haven't noticed this since there are no magicians around here but you have learned of my existence gradually, you will also develop sensitivity to the signs of other excellent magicians. Alfred. Master kept protecting Margrave Brithhilda in the demon forest from the hordes of monsters he might have even killed several thousands of monsters with magic. But when his magic ran out, he promptly met his demise. After his death, since Master had a lot of regrets, he was reborn as a talking corpse. He then waited until a magician he could pass his magic on to appeared within his walking range. I've never felt as happy as when I noticed your existence but this happy time is almost over. Alfred. My secret training with Master has already gone on for two weeks longer than the one week that it was scheduled for. In order to stay by Master's side even for a second longer, I take my lunch with me as I head to the forest. My family might think that I enjoy hunting and gathering. Finally, I'll teach you the special magic, Holy. Alfred. There, Holy, 
magic that is written about in the book was closer to water attribute than holy. It was used by clerics to eliminate the undead clerics who underwent rigorous training can activate this magic even without any talent in magic. By praying to God, you can create holy water that behaves similar to sulfuric acid in regards to undead monsters their movements can also be stopped by praying to the cross while holding it up to one's chest. But it didn't have much effect if the cleric in question didn't train seriously the existence of clerics that underwent the harsh training seems to be very few in number. Many among those famous in the church, such as the many cardinals who only preoccupied themselves with how to get ahead of the competition, are hardly even able to produce consecrated water it has become an open secret in this world. And there are only a small number of clerics that can use magic. Clerics that can use magic normally use holy attributed light rays that treat people who get cursed and pure recovery magic to treat injuries they can also temporarily attach the holy attribute to weapons that belong to the church in order to defeat undead monsters. It's the so-called holy magic from RPGs in my previous life. You can definitely acquire it. As the training graduation test I want you to make me die peacefully. Alfred. Master asked that of me with an unusually serious expression. Chapter 11, Parting with Master. But that's... Wendlin. I'm reaching my limit soon. My consciousness and reason will disappear. I don't want to turn into a zombie that instinctively attack people. Alfred. For my graduation test. Master was asking me to assist him in passing on peacefully through the use of holy magic I hesitated a bit. But Master was begging me he wanted to rest in peace as soon as possible. I thought that I was truly an excellent magician so I retained my consciousness and reasoning while maintaining in my body for a long time. Alfred. Ordinary talking corpses can only retain their forms for about one year. Beyond that, their consciousness and reasoning gradually fade. Their flesh gradually rots and they become no different from zombies. Wendlin von Benno Bohr Mr. I don't have much time left as my disciple, won't you assist me in passing on peacefully? Dot. Alfred, Master I, I understand. Wendlin. I turn to the page on holy magic it was the last topic in there. Book Master gave me and read the contents. It only covered the basic concepts. In the end. It really just depends on my own aptitude to see if I'll be able to use this magic. Since it was a special magic, I wasn't even able to trigger a response as first. Gradually, pale light particularly at the holy magic began to pour out from both my hands as if it was overflowing. I'm sorry, I can't demonstrate it for you. Alfred. Although Master said that apologetically, since a talking corpse was an undead monster, it's only natural for Master to be unable to use holy magic. After about an hour of repeated practice, I finally succeeded in learning how to use the light magic that will assist Master in passing on peacefully. The time has finally come. Alfred. The time for Master to pass on peacefully has finally arrived while sniffling and shedding tears. Light accumulated at my fingertips I invoked the light magic. Master was a high-ranking mage during his lifetime, pretty much a monster at that as such. I had to accumulate a considerable amount of magic power in order for him to pass on peacefully. Master. Wendlin. I'm happy after wandering around as a talking corpse in the depths of the monster's domain in order to teach my skills to a disciple like this, whether it be to heaven or hell I can pass on peacefully. Alfred. Master. Wendlin. My tears didn't stop. It's certainly true that in order to master magic in this world, you have to rely on your own hard work to learn it. That's because the probability of someone else's training method suiting someone is abysmally low. But master's training method suited me miraculously. As a result of these two weeks of training, I have obtained power equivalent to many years of training by myself. I've even learned how to perform capacity adjustment and my magic capacity compared to before the training has increased by tens of times compared to what it was before. I want you to continue training diligently without becoming conceited exactly like you've been doing till now you will become a mage that will leave his name in history. Ah, one last thing. Alfred, Master didn't have a family, although he did once possess a mansion and a small sum of money in the Margrave Brithhilda territory as a retainer, it wasn't brought up since it has probably been repossessed by the Margrave Brithhilda's house. But there was the equipment that he had when he died, the robe and hat for when my body grows up, the magic sword that produces attribute magic, and the accessories like rings and necklaces he had on, as well as the most precious of all, the magic bag which held the majority of his things master passed all of these things to me. Magic bag, 
was a term often heard when it came to some RPGs. It was a magic item that could hold a large amount of goods that would normally exceed the capacity of a bag of the same size. In this world, magic bags are classified into several types. First it was classified the same way as other magic tools, either as a specialized item that can only be used by magicians or a general purpose item that can be used by everyone. Next was whether it was the type that can be registered in advance to the users as an exclusive item that can only be used by the registrants or the general purpose type that can be used by anyone. Few magicians are able to make ones that are usable by anyone and they're expensive they also tend to have capacity problems. Although there are some that have large capacities, the magic bag that I've entrusted to you can only be used by magicians and only if they have been registered, like you. In terms of capacity, it's proportional to the magic capacity of the user so the capacity will increase as the user's magic capacity increases. Alfred, as he said that, Master handed a magic bag the size of a drawstring bag with a mana crystal that looked like a bead attached to it. It's small but the mouth will grow when you put something big in it, so it's fine I'll be entrusting all of its contents to you after all, it's better for you to have them compared to letting them decay in the demon forest I'm counting on you. Alfred. Yes. Wendlin. When I finally shot the holy light that had been accumulating towards Master, my tears begin to speed up alongside my runny nose. Master was wrapped in a vortex of pale light in an instant. This is a good magic I don't feel pain but instead it's like I've been wrapped in a cozy warmth. Alfred. Contrary to Master's words, his body was becoming transparent. Master really is going to disappear soon. Master, thank you for everything till now. Wendlin. Thanks for letting me die pleasantly let's meet again in the other world, in about a hundred years from now. Alfred, I wondered about that last part but after he said that, the only things left were his equipment and the magic bag. His body had ascended to heaven along with a pale light. This is my memory of the short exchange with Alfred Rienford, the one whom I deemed my only true master. Chapter 12, Master Heritage. I'll stop feeling sad I am happy that in the end you got to pass on peacefully, Master. Wendlin. I resolved myself after Master passed on. I didn't make a grave for Master. He already said that he didn't need a grave he was satisfied so long as someone remembered him so I complied with his wish. But there was one problem. The magic bag specifically the contents which were left behind by Master as a memento. Master was an orphan with no relatives. Because of that, there's no problem with me inheriting his possessions. Even if there is. It would have just rotted away in the depths of the demon forest if I hadn't appeared. Thus even if Master has a formal heir, I doubt they would have gone to get it since it would mean risking their life. Master was an excellent magician as well as an excellent adventurer before he was hired by Margrave Brithhilda. Heading towards the demon forest in order to claim his possessions would only lead to death as such, even if the possessions were bountiful. It wasn't enticing enough for someone to personally risk their life for it. Although one could hire an adventurer to retrieve it, the odds of someone accepting the request were practically nil. Ordinary people would naturally give up. In fact, even Margrave Brithhilda who incurred major damage from sending troops didn't bother trying to search for the memento at all. Let's confirm the contents for now, I hope there's a good magic tool inside. Wendlin. I touch the little mana prism that's attached to the magic bag and transmit my magic into it. By doing so, a list of all the items that exist in the magic bag appears in my mind alongside a letter from Master. I take it out of the magic bag immediately and open it and the letter contains a carefully written list of all the items in the magic bag. Thanks to this I won't have to struggle with the long list of things that appeared in my mind. Wendlin. The contents of the letter were as follows. First. It states that he wanted our parting words to be simple so he prepared this letter in advance. Next, the fact that this letter was taken from the bag was proof that the ownership of the bag had been passed on to me. Even after your magic capacity was increased by the capacity adjustment, your magic capacity still further increased considerably in the short period of time that you trained with me until you reach your maximum magic capacity. Never neglect your training these are the contents of my heritage that I'm passing on to you. Alfred. First his equipment such as robes and accessories that Master had kept there was also the staff and magic sword that Master used as well as a bow that shot magic arrows. Finally, 
several knives made of orichalium and mithril. Master was indeed a master adventurer. All the accessories had magical effects and as such they were all expensive. Next was a kind of magic tools that were only usable by magicians that were used for daily life. The general purpose version of the item can be traded for a high price and occupies half the market. There was a magic tool that was meant to be used as a refrigerator as it was able to produce ice. Alfred, for the most part it's a general purpose item but it was written in here that he had picked it up in some ruins during his time as an adventurer. Adventuring is a job in which people invaded monster domains, obtained materials and meat from hunting said monsters and collected the plants and minerals that exists within the domains. Aside from that, it also entails exploring ruins or dungeons from old magic civilizations which for some reason, were always infested with monsters these explorations were in order to obtain ancient heritages. It's just that only a few adventurers could actually achieve this feat. Old magic civilizations which died out about a million years ago excelled in the manufacturing of magic tools. These magic tools were by a large margin superior to what's manufactured nowadays. It's a fact that exploring ruins, dungeons will yield expensive magic tools but it also comes with great danger. Due to the danger of exploring ruins, dungeons, not many people managed to survive Master though accomplished this feat several times during his time as an adventurer. It's a fact that entering monster domains with a party made up of a few elites has an overwhelmingly higher chance or success. I was going to explain this to Margrave Brithhilda but... Alfred. I instinctively let out a wry smile due to the fact that the tone of the letter made me feel as if Master was talking to me. The purpose of the expedition was to claim new land as such. A large army was necessary in order to exterminate all of the monsters in it. It's no mystery why we weren't able to survive for the first few days. We were successful in some large-scale monster extermination skirmishes but while we were in high spirits, we got separated and swarmed by monsters as a result. Only a few of our people survived as for the few that survived, not even half were able to go on as soldiers. Alfred. Come to think of it. From amongst those that survived from our Bormister Knight Territory's army, I remember seeing those that I had helped with farming and cultivating cowering as if they were frightened of something these survivors had been exempted from military drafting after returning, they must have been traumatized. Back to what I was saying, I tried to limit the amount of troops we sent as much as possible but, Margrave Brithhilda wouldn't compromise at all so. In order to maintain the soldiers' morale I decided to reward the soldiers based on their hunting results. Alfred, due to the amount of people that were hunting, the amount of materials and meat they obtained from the monsters was quite substantial. These materials were later sold and a reward was given proportionate to what that soldier had hunted, as long as the soldiers' purses were full. The soldiers wouldn't be reckless should danger present itself they would instead be in the mood to retreat since they wouldn't want to die after earning a significant sum of money. Margrave Brithhilda was also compensating them just for being deployed through money and honor through the revenue from the sale of these materials, the deficit created from maintaining the army was covered. Dot. Summary Pretty much a small to large reward that depended on the amount of monsters subjugated so that they'd be motivated to work and a periodic medium reward just for being deployed so that they don't try to rush it and endanger themselves. Master dispatched the troops believing that to be the case. What happened though was that the soldiers became greedy because of all the money they could earn and declared that they wouldn't withdraw until they exterminated every last the monster in the demon forest not long after that they were annihilated. And since the logistical difficulties would decrease if I was present, Alfred, the war potential would increase even if Master wasn't on the front lines. One such reason would be his magic bag. The ordinarily burden of transporting supplies for 2,000 of Margrave Brithhilda soldiers became easy. Compared to the nearby territories, the demon forest's high mountains were particularly tall in order to pass these mountains that were even taller than Mount Fuji they'd have to travel about 300 kilometers. Also, since the only nearby territory, Bormister Knight Territories, had a population of around 800 people, there was no way the territory could supply enough food for 2,000 soldiers. With the exception of the Bormister Knight Territories military, even if they were a joint army with the purpose of declaiming new lands, using the Bormister Knight Territories resources to help sustain the army to was out of the question. Transporting the resources necessary for an army of 2,000 would take several months ordinarily and to transport them up mountains that are taller than Mount Fuji. When Master wrote the letter, 
He lamented over the realization of how reckless the plan had been. I wonder why father never taught me about this. In order to make up for the losses from the expedition even if only by a small fraction, father had granduncle lead an army of 100 soldiers into the demon forest. This however only resulted in even more losses. I think you should understand the implications of this. All the food and resources in this magic bag were meant to be used by the joint army comprising of Margrave Brithhilda's army and Bormister's Knight Territory army. Alfred, the magic bag of a powerful magician I wonder how much it can store. For Margrave Brithhilda to be able to prepare enough resources for 2,000 soldiers was something in and of itself but for Master's magic power to be enough to store such a staggering amount resources, it seems Master's magic power was quite frightening. I guess you're wondering how much my magic power is? Dot. Alfred, he read my mind. The next line contained the exact tsukomi. It's enough to store food for 2,000 people over the course of three months, so. Alfred, the majority of it consists of hard-baked bread mixed with salt that can be preserved for a long time, cookies with no sugar, salted meat, and some sort of sauerkraut in barrels. I can't really understand how this magic bag works even after thinking about it carefully. Inside the magic bag. The laws of physics deviate due to the influence of magic not only can it store much more than a bag of its size should be able to hold, it also stops time for the things stored inside of it thanks to that, the contents of the magic bag haven't aged at all. It's thanks to magic bags like these that wealthy middle class citizens that live in the imperial city located at the heart of the continent can enjoy fresh fish from the sea for dinner. This was something I learned from a book honestly. I really want to grow up quickly and leave this inconvenient rural area. Next to the backup weapons and armor, they're mostly created from iron and bronze. Just like the spare tents, the equipment gives off a feeling like they belong to a medieval army. There was also a concern over the supply of drinkable water as such. Many leather bags filled with water were also transported for the sake of boosting the soldiers' morale. There are also a lot of alcohol products varying from those used for treating injuries to those used for recreational purposes. Examples of this alcohol would include Margrave Brithilda's territory produced wine and a vast amount of distilled liquors such as brandy. Adults that love wine apparently exist in every world. In my previous life I also used to drink it every evening I wasn't a heavy drinker though. Although in this world I had given up on drinking since I had no way of obtaining it now. Next, there's the large amount of monster meat and materials was the loot collected in the demon forest. Alfred, the bag was filled tons of loot and a lot of precious items. But even if I have all this loot, the current me can't make use of it. I should just leave it alone for now after all, so long as it stays in the magic bag it won't deteriorate. Lastly, a large amount of jewels, ornaments, silver coins, and gold coins. Alfred, during the expedition, Margrave Brithhilda had intended to appear as a big shot noble by offering a large reward to the soldiers involved as such. Master was carrying the reward in his magic bag. The magic bag contains enough money to make a person feel dizzy. The current me can't use it at the moment though. Wendlin, there are no stores in this village where I could just casually go shopping. Even if there were, I can't let people know about the existence of this bag. No matter how much they care about me, being the eighth son and all, what would my family do if they found out I had this much money? In the worst case scenario it might even pose a threat to my life. So the contents are off limits until I've grown up. Wendlin, I really want to wear master's robe and accessories that have been infused with powerful magic but my body is still only six years old. The problem is one of size I have no choice but to wait for my body to grow. Phew I should head back. Wendlin, I stored master's equipment in the magic bag and headed home with it. Chapter 13, Heirs Marriage On the frontier of the Helmut Kingdom located on the southern part of the Lingaya continent, the current head of the Bormister house is Artur von Benno Bormister. Three months after I took over the body of the eighth son Wendlin von Benno Bormister, a lot of events took place in the space of that time. It was as if I had been tossed into a flood. Personally I've enjoyed this situation though. Since I'm just the useless eighth son and plays no part in the family's social standing nor its control over my house's territory as such, I could be seen as being a noble in name only my actions aren't restricted though. I'm allowed to go outside and practice magic I've apparently been gifted with talent in magic which is something rare in this world given that only a few people in this world possess it. Honestly, 
They're probably just too busy to be bothered dealing with a six six-year-old kid. Recently, I've succeeded in significantly improving my magical power by employing a special training method known as capacity adjustment taught by my master, the famous mage, Alfred Reinford. The truth is, I wanted him to teach me a lot more things but he was already dead by the time I met him he became a talking corpse at the risk of becoming a zombie. In order to look for someone with high enough magic powers to pass on his magic. In the end, he taught me how to use holy magic and had me use it on him this was done in order to help him pass on peacefully I inherited his inheritance as proof of my graduation. The inheritance I obtained included various resources as well a sizable amount of money that was enough for you to go through life without ever having to work. Although I am still a six-year-old kid, I'm still under the protection of my parents. It can be said that the fact that I have to wait to become independent is unfair since I am 25 years old. On the inside I will work hard in order to become independent as soon as possible and leave this house. In preparation for when I become independent and gain my freedom, I'm investing all my time into studying, practicing martial arts, and magic. And what's more, it seems I turned seven years old a few days ago. Based on social status, there is a custom of celebrating the birthdays of children in the royal family and of richer nobles. Low-ranking nobles like us only celebrate the birthdays of the eldest son. Since I am already an adult on the inside, I didn't really care about having a birthday party. The only brother from the noble side of the family that congratulated me on turning seven years old was Eric. It feels weird saying that he's from the noble side of my family but I guess with this, it's understood that the older brother is whom the mistress gave birth to was not included in my earlier statement. The sixth and seventh son that the mistress gave birth to can't be referred to as brothers at least that's what mother told me. This is because nobles tend to be strict when it comes to differences in social status. My brother Eric is the fifth son and he turns 17 years old this year. He has a slender body and lacks physical strength but he's a handsome and gentle brother. He's always the first one to talk and care for me who's still just an immigrant mature kid. He's popular among the ladies in this territory whether it be the young Oju Chans, the slightly older Oju Sans, or the noble Oju Sans. Actually, the faces of the people from the Bormister house aren't all that good. Though not ugly, most of them are average. The Bormister house is also rather lacking when it comes to talent. Nobles that establish their territories through migrating, claiming new land and taking poor people especially those from the imperial city tend to be smart and skillful there aren't any inferior or foolish family heads after all. For example, Arthur personally helps clear land for cultivation day after day alongside his sons he does so in order to help make up for the many adult male workers lost when our house sent troops to the demon forest five years ago, as a matter of fact. The people of this territory can't use magic even the swordsmanship of the knights seems doubtful. Instead, thanks to use of joint hunting tactics to obtain meat carried out a few times a year, the bow has become the main weapon of those who live in this territory as well as one of their strong points. All children in the Bormister house inherited this talent for the bow. Although our territory is right next to the demon forest, there's no worry of monster attacks since monsters don't leave their domain that's also why the bow has become very useful way for securing meat. Though it does take hundreds of kilometers of marching to reach the demon forest. This is the reason for Eric Nissan's and my sword practice being rather short. There are only a few chances if any, to use a sword despite being a knight as such. There wasn't much of an incentive to focus on sword training. Although I do train every day. Almost always with Eric Nissan, I am no good with the sword so this saves me some trouble. Eric Nissan is the best bow user in this territory he's just like me when it comes to reading I often read in my father's study room since I'm not limited to reading only hiragana and katakana like the other members of families. In the near future I intend to take the test to become a petty officer in the imperial city. Eric, I see, since he didn't have any talent in magic unlike me. He decided to embark on the path of becoming a petty officer. You could say our family's always been the like that but in fact, a big change is about to occur. Word of our eldest brother's marriage has finally arrived via father. Kurt's bride is going to be the second daughter of the Maybach family. Emily the marriage is scheduled to be held next week as soon as she arrives in our territory. Artur, dinner today has become somewhat luxurious thanks to me it consists of brown bread as usual, soup with vegetables and meat as well as roasted guinea fowl. Today during dinner, 
father announced to the whole family that our eldest brother, Kurt, is getting married. So, the time has finally arrived. Eric. After dinner, my three brothers with whom I share a room with, all went back to our room and started packing. My third and fourth oldest brothers didn't own many things so they finished their packing in no time at all. Eric Nissan. Why are you, Paul Nissan, and Helmut Nissan packing? Dot. Wendlin. This is because Kurt Nissan, the heir of this house is getting married when the ceremony ends, will have to leave. Eric. Eric gives me a detailed explanation. At times like this, Eric Nissan willingly explains things in details without looking down on me for being a kid. In this world, people are considered adults once they are somewhere between the ages of 15 and 17 year old. There is some deviation as to when people become adults within that age group but in the end it all comes down to the parents discretion still. It's a bit overdue for the third brother Paul and the fourth brother Helmut. The truth is, they were supposed to have left a long time ago but due to the loss of manpower five years ago, my three brothers stayed back in order to help the family after all, even the children who aren't heirs are supposed to at least help the family sometimes. Thanks to the fact that the marriage of our oldest brother, Kurt, was postponed in order to keep my three older brothers at home to help, my three older brothers had time to save some money Kurt wasn't very happy over having his marriage postponed though. Honestly, due to the issue of dowry, people have no interest in marrying us. Eric. True. I suppose there aren't many nobles daughters that are willing to get married and live their new lives in a poor village that's separated from the nearest territory by mountains, with the birth of a child comes issues with the bride's nepotism that could, in the worst case scenario, cause the Bormister family to sink deep into debt. Well, I wonder if it would have been better to marry like Kurt Nissan. Wendlin. I feel sorry for Herman. My second eldest brother he's simply being kept around in case something ever happened and Kurt, my oldest brother, ends up passing away. It'll be a good thing for Kurt Nissan and his bride to have a child but I can't help but feel bitter over the fact that I'll have to stay at home and help with the farm until I gain my freedom. Honestly, I envy my departing brothers a little. I'll be heading to the Imperial City like our other brothers after the ceremony I know you'll be lonely here without me will but live energetically. Eric. I will thank you. Wendlin. I'll send you letter later. Eric. I'll be sure to reply. Wendlin. How nice although there are few people in this house that can write letters, Vil's able to write properly. Eric. Two weeks later, I lost the person who understood me most that left me with the bitter taste of loneliness I was seven years old at the time. Chapter 14. Eric Nissan. So the heir is finally getting married at Thera many things that will happen to us too. The next day father reports that Kurt Nissan, who had turned 26 this year, is finally getting married Eric Nissan and I, as usual, head to the forest with the aim of hunting and gathering. If you were to ask why, it is because the bride will arrive at the Bormister Night Territory within a few days at which time, the wedding will be held. Though a bit small, it's still pretty much a wedding for a noble ceremonies in a countryside village located in a remote area with nothing in it, allows its inhabitants whom are usually hungry for entertainment, to celebrate together. Actually, I think our Bormister family in the end, will bear the cost of the dishes and liquor served at the wedding. Well, leaving aside the stories about the real intention and theory behind it, there must be hundreds of people who will come to the wedding party to eat and drink that means a huge amount of food and liquor is needed. On the other hand, it will become a problem if the lord that governs this land is stingy with a wedding party for nobles that govern territory. People think poorly of the territory's noble for being stingy this can become the source of many problems later on. Although we usually enjoy tasteless brown bread and very bland vegetable soup, we can't eat them now we must prepare food for the feast and provide enough liquor to the extent that the wedding guests become unable to gulp any more down. For the dowry that is paid by the bride's parents' family, even if the bride's clothes and accessories were prepared by her parents' family, the husband's clothes must be newly made and then there is also the matter of the feast and liquor to be served at the party that I just explained. We are just poor nobles anyway, the material and monetary loss from recklessly sending troops to the demon forest can't be ignored. Rebuilding the territory's structure while finding a wife for Kurt Nissan who is the heir only by saving can the family hold this ceremony. Normally, 
Male nobles usually get married before the age of 20 Why was Kurt Nissan single until the age of 25? That is the present harsh reality that can't be mentioned without tears. It's good that Kurt Nissan is getting married, honestly, a territory with only a poor village. In such a rural area I can't inherit it from the start as I am the eighth son though I've never thought that I'd want to inherit it either. To become independent quickly and live as an adventurer that has been my only dream. But isn't it too fast for the other brothers to be driven out? After the wedding, as it was uncommon for adults like my brothers to remain in the house together each of them must leave the house to become independent. According to noble customs, the children after the second son must leave the house since they can't take over the territory and the family name. It is common knowledge that handing over money for the outfitting cost is implied as an apology to those that cannot succeed the territory. The sum of money is not really a big deal but since I have many brothers on top of being poor, this apparently takes time to prepare. Except for me, who is still seven years old and the second son, Herman. The three people from the third son to fifth son, will leave the house to become independent Herman Nissan who is yet to marry. As a backup for Kurt Nissan who is unlikely to suddenly die, will also become a bridegroom, but for the Vassal's family that belongs to the relative's lineage several months later. The Vassal family is my father's uncle's parents' family who previously led our Bormister Knight Territory Army that was sent to the Demon Forest of course at the time. He was killed in battle and father's male cousin who was the heir and son was also killed in battle elsewhere. The remaining male heirs also suffered from one misfortune after another. The person who's related to Granduncle's granddaughter is now barely maintaining the house. Herman Nissan is engaged to that granddaughter to succeed the house. I mean, the story looks like the drama in NHK though the place is pitifully small. Back to the topic with our Bormister family deciding many plans like that. We will be busy preparing for the wedding which is the reason why Eric Nissan and I are in the forest. Though the reason can be imagined easily, father ordered me to gather ingredients for the dishes that will be served at the wedding. And I ended up partnering with Eric Nissan for some reason I don't want to show magic in the presence of others and now I have a companion for some reason as I said earlier, that partner is Eric Nissan. He is the closest to me so I can't be deceitful to him it is impossible for a seven year old like me though to harvest without magic. When I'm wondering what to do, Eric Nissan comes to talk to me. Do not hold back, you may use magic. Eric, um, Wendlin. Eric Nissan's sudden remark you may use magic makes me speechless but in fact I didn't believe I could conceal it from the others that I can use magic. Thinking about it normally, a child that's still seven years old has entered a forest where wolves and bears are known to appear, alone furthermore, he had obtained results from hunting and gathering that would put an adult to shame. Magic that is used to strengthen the muscle strength and speed of powerless people is a relatively popular magic, though this magic has a difference in grade. One of the reasons that I was not worried about entering the forest alone was because I had imagined that my family had laid out a gag order or tacit consent of minimal use of magic. Vl is smart enough so much so that you wouldn't think that you were only seven years old. Eric. The day I incarnated into the Bormester house as Wendlin, the eighth son, it was possible to know Wendlin's time from before his sixth year through a dream. Before I was reincarnated as Wendlin. He didn't show any talent as a mage, but he always read books and stayed in father's study room apparently he had shown behavior unsuitable for his age. He seems to have performed many things in common with the current me. Right father, mother, and our brothers, the whole family knew except Vol, about Vol's talent in magic. Eric. I had such a premonition, but one question appears why can't I make the best use of my magic to develop the territory? And as if Eric Nissan notices my question. He immediately answered me. If the young Vil decides to demonstrate his talent in magic to the people of the territory, it will be the start of a family feud. Eric. For family succession of nobles in this world, the eldest son is basically given priority. This goes for royalty as well as nobles. Additionally, the social position of the wife who gives birth to the child is an important factor. The village headman is not a noble. The children of Layla, who is father's mistress, basically have no rights for inheritance they would only inherit the house when no male children are born to the legal wife, if that ever happens. In the case where the legal wife's children are only girls, the judgment depends on the noble in some cases a bridegroom is married to the eldest daughter to make him inherit, and in other cases, 
the eldest son from the mistress inherits. In short, the legal wife's children are given priority there is also the custom of the eldest son having priority but in the end, the father's decision as the family head takes precedence. Because of these customs, family feuds often occur resulting in bloodshed on both sides when noticed by the royal family, their territory is reduced as punishment if they can't get the uproar under control on their own and in the end they receive punishments like a change in rank. Vla wants to leave the house just like us right? Dot. Eric. Yes, I want to make my way up as an adventurer during my youth. Wendlin. Don't bother then father also understands that. Eric. Really? Dot. Wendlin. He can't read kanji, but he is pretty much the head of a noble family. Eric. Father expected that in the event that I were to grandly demonstrate magic for the people of our territory, more than just benefiting the territory, the vassals and people of the territory will make a commotion by irresponsibly saying since Wendlin is able to use magic, isn't he more suitable as the future Bormister family head? And it would likely become unbearable once they create a suspicious faction. Even if that doesn't happen, the failure of sending troops five years ago will pull the strings. For this, forget land clearing to expand the agricultural land, there won't even be enough manpower to manage the normal agricultural work even in the name of temporarily raising the tax slightly until the damage from such an incident is recovered that can become the reason for the territory people's dissatisfaction. Above all, there were no victims not even one person from the Bormister head family that had sent troops perhaps due to the family not sending any members, there is a certain portion of territory people who are dissatisfied. In fact, there's also the grand uncle of the vassal lineage and the three sons in the branch family who were killed in battle. Eric, due to the eldest son being killed in battle, in grand uncle's family only the girls are left it's because of this that the second son Herman will take over the house as bridegroom a few months later. It would be a lie to say that there is no dissatisfaction from grand uncle's family because of this. Sofal's magic doesn't need to be openly advertised. Eric, there are definitely people who will come out to make a fuss, stating that I am the only one suitable as poor Mr. House's next family head. Though there might be people who have noticed it indirectly. That doesn't mean they have any evidence unless Vil publicly displays his magical prowess. Eric, got it, I'll stay tacitly in the forest for that. Wendlin, you can leave the house without hesitation when you turn 15 inches. Eric, personally, I want to leave home earlier. Wendlin, I know from Eric Nissan that there is a budding risk of a small scale family feud. I am seriously thinking about growing up faster to leave this territory. Chapter 15 separation with Eric Nissan. Since this forest is dedicated to our family, feel free to catch the prey in here by magic. I only need to gather the resources from hunting by accompanying you. Eric, ah so that's why no other hunter has entered until now. Wendlin, there would be no complaint from the territory people if we use it exclusively since there's so much wasted land in our territory there's also several other forests available that can be used for hunting and gathering we can just focus on developing the common, uninhabited ground even if emigrants from other lands rise exponentially rather than doing something like reclaiming the land the demon forest is situated on. Eric, you are right. Wendlin, for the story that my magic was consented tacitly by my family, they must not have even wanted me to participate in a succession fight based on the story just told to me. I have thought to leave the house earlier but there is no way I can be independent as I am not even 15 years of ages. It's said that I have hunted guinea fowl every day so the side dish for dinner would decrease later if I am gone. Was that a joke? Are they serious? Even if I am not really sure about the reason. I was tacitly given consent to go to the forest every day. From dinner being only brown bread and vegetable soup, we can now have meat, yam, mushroom and fruit thanks to Vil I've never felt this happy. Eric, what about father and the other brothers doing the hunting? Dot prosody. Rate equals slow greater than Wendlin. Since many adult males were killed in battle five years ago, even our father is forced to plow the field by himself to fill their vacancies of course. It goes without saying that his sons do the very same thing. Eric, is that so? Wendlin, that said, we can't have only brown bread and vegetable soup in Kurt Nissan's upcoming wedding reception we'll be expecting Vl here to come through. Eric, he's right it would be the end for that noble if such a menu was put at the wedding party. If Eric Nissan holds a bow then. Wendlin, it would be easier if I don't need to look for it by myself. 
Eric, after about half a day, I searched and approached the big animals that I have always avoided using detection magic and reinforced the arrows that Eric Nissan shot with magic it's worthwhile noting that Eric Nissan has the best archery skills in Bormister family. It apparently true that Eric Nissan archery skill is excellent. There is no need to correct the arrows direction at all the arrows which are powered by magic mercilessly hits the vitals of the wild boar, deer badger and guinea fowl. Eric Nissan and me hastily removed the blood from our spoils that died in one hit from taking the arrow to the heart or head the skin would be smeared with salt afterwards. Honestly, it was a lot of hard work for a seven years old child but I can strengthen my body with magic. We finished dealing with the spoils without any problems. So you have been holding back after all. Eric, would be strange for a seven years old child to hunt wild boar alone right? Dot. Wendlin, frankly. It would not be strange if you are an excellent mage. Eric According to Eric Nissan's story, there are some mages born with a large amount of magic power. These mages could hunt monsters even if they were younger than me. There are apparently many such warriors as well. They can shoot fireballs at least as big as softballs. Large animals and the likes of goblins and slow-moving zombies can be killed easily with these fireballs. And there are also those that fight with bow and spear just like my strength in physical strength. The children here are really active unlike Earth. Magic looks really amazing to be able to strengthen my arrow's power that I can shot this far. Eric For Eric Nissan, it was easy as I just need to adjust the power since your aim is perfect. Wendlin I'll take that praise as honor. Eric I first made arrows specially from Earth magic by myself I then hunt the prey with magic that flew to them. But Eric Nissan asked me why I bothered to do something troublesome like that. Indeed. I had my own bow and arrow even as a kid. After shooting the arrow normally, it was better to modify the trajectory and power without using magic uselessly. Maybe I was using magic deliberately to waste it to increase my magic capacity. It was a habit to analyze it myself before I met Master. Alright, I guess this amount is enough for today. Eric. Okay. Wendlin. In front of us was all the animals we caught in large quantities that have already been bled dry. Only I usually have access to the forest anyway. If I think that way then this forest which isn't damaged no matter what is still giving spoils. Moreover, there's still a lot of plains and forests that exists in the territory. No monsters live here but since there are ferocious wild animals such as bears and wolves, Women and children and even a men with fighting power can't go hunting and gathering alone. But it should be not so difficult to develop farmland and settlements if further gathers people and lead it. He has in fact already done it. The troops that he sent five years ago he was apparently not tempted by Margrave Brithhilda but he taking part in it would be a more correct way of looking at it. Eric, land development was secondary the primary purpose was to gather monster materials and meat to get rich quickly the purpose must be to obtain materials for things such as magic medicine and elixir only obtained in area inhabited by monsters. Eric Nissan explains that the demand is high for the raw materials of magic potions that can cure injuries and illness and there is also material such as medical herbs plants and animals. Medical herbs that can be gathered from monster domains. They are basically raw materials for herbal medicine that's no different from my previous life. Some, only typical to fantasy, are used to block wounds immediately, cure illnesses and finally there's even medicine that can revive the dead. What would they use the medical herbs for that have been taken from the monster domain? Some mages that are talented in pharmacology are able to manufacture the raw materials with magic power either that or it can be used for healing magic. For something that convenient, it currently has a high price set on it on top of the wage was added for its manufacture costs. Anyone hardly enters our demon forest even precious medical herbs and materials collected come from near the entrance of the demon forest. Eric In return, there's no monster domain near Margrave Brithhilda's territory so those materials might not be obtained if didn't go further inside. Even if they are careful about indiscriminate hunting, it will take more time to gather such materials compared to letting normal medical herbs to grow and become material. And no matter how much Margrave Brithhilda prohibits indiscriminate hunting, there's no way to actually confirm that the adventurers are completely following the rule given that they venture deep into the monster's domain. You don't say. You don't want to tell me that father did such a thing only for the sake of getting raw materials. I hope although they prepared a just cause for the sake of raising a large army, they ended up provoking the monsters because of that we can't do anything but laugh about that.
Eric, so Eric Nissan in his heart wants to complain to the previous Margrave Brithhild ahead. As a result of their egoism, Eric Nissan from the Bormister family was also distressed because his departure time from this house was delayed. The other brothers who are hunting elsewhere must also feel the same way. And that's the reason we hunt for materials like this is for the feast of the wedding party. I guess this would be enough for today we can still go out and hunt for another three days no need to try and complete everything by today. Eric. I also agree with Eric Nissan opinion we return to the mansion in a hurry while pulling a bicycle drawn cart with our catch in it. It should be noted that Eric Nissan with me has captured a lot of prey compared to the hunter in the village and our other brothers. Even after three days, the outstanding hunting outcome can be anticipated in some way. And in five days, Kurt, the eldest son's wife, with her escort group. At last arrive after a long journey their wedding was held with the church old priest manages by himself. Like Christianity in my previous world, the wedding take place in a church. Emily the bride was 18 years old this year. The some distant in their age but people in this world are not really worried about it. This also includes high royalty, nobility and successful, wealthy merchants. They can be remarried to daughters from a lower class like this and often increases their mistresses. And to Emily? Getting married at her age is something normal in this world. There's some that tend to marry late like successful women adventurers that put man to shame but common and noble women usually married before they're 20 years old. It was varies between individuals so no one would bad mouth her needlessly until about her early 20s. But people will treat her as a middle-aged woman when she passes the age of 25. The main buck family which is Emily's family is in better financial condition compared to a knight peerage family like us as such, she received an expensive dress that was ordered for the big moment which happened only once in her whole life. Besides, even the gift quality like the pieces of furniture sent with her looks good that just goes to show how important a noble needs to maintain their appearance at a time like this. I will not be a noble so there is no way I will put on such display. Another week. Eric. Eric Nissan suddenly let out a sigh during the ceremonies. In one week, the second son Helman will be officially adopted into the village headman's family which is his wife's family. After making sure of that, the third son Paul, fourth son Helmut and fifth son Eric will receive money from father to finally leave the house. Everyone seems to plan to take the exam for soldiers and petty officials in the imperial city. They can live independently if they pass it so everyone desperately trains in swordmanship and studies in their spare time. Wendlin. It's still impossible for Vul to become independent. Eric. I can do it if I want to but there's nothing I can do now as my appearance still that of seven years old brat. If I leave home in this state, father and mother at worst could blamed for throwing away an unnecessary child despite a noble. I had no choice but endure it for eight years at most. I hardly talked with Kurt Nissan and Helman Nissan though. Wendlin. Our ages are far apart like a parent and child and I have talent in magic there might be a problem which can become a landmine about Bormister family succession later on, as a result, I'm not sure how to talk with them. I am not hated but it can be understood easily that there's some distance between us. Sigh is this the start of my lone life? A week later, the second son, Helman. Wedding ends safely. Eric Nissan and the other brothers made sure of that take the money no matter how much the Bormister family can give them for remuneration in abandoning the airship and went out traveling by accompanying caravans who do business with our territory return to Imperial City. Visit the Imperial City. When you grow up I'll greet you the Eric. The gentle Eric Nissan talks with some anxiety about me but I didn't really talk with the other brothers either. Siamese lone life seriously begins now. I should at least continue to find a way to kill time. While I look at Eric Nissan figure that gradually fades away, I kept thinking about my future. After this, Chapter 16, Determined to be alone. Hey, that kid must be. Villager. Our lord's eighth son it must be Wendlin Sama. Villager. I wonder what he's doing? Dot. Villager. Who knows a kid is precious manpower for us though he's not that hard working according to the rumors. Villager. Since he was the Lord's kid. He can do what he wants as long he doesn't become a nuisance. Villager. The eldest son, Kurt, and the second son, Herman have gotten married a month has passed since my other brothers left the house I'm running through a prairie in the territory which isn't sighted for cleaning yet. As I pass by. 
I hear farmers on the way to the farming section talking about me. The contents of their conversation are a selfish child who's not even helping his family which I know already. Well, further and eldest brother Kurt would not dare to say that. They might think that I'm just a seven years old kid but the development of the irrigation canals and land reclamation for agricultural uses would be much more faster if I used magic freely. Actually, for me who's already almost mastered even advanced magic, the likes of farmland and digging up irrigation canal would merely be a simple task. Only few humans can do that though only a high ranking mage can demonstrate impressive feats such as that. That said, it would be hard for further or others to grasp my ability as a mage so they were currently in a state of deciding whether or not to ask for my help. Father and the others would recognize me as a magic user that reinforces his body's ability to hunt guinea fowls in the forest alone. I finally obtained the permission to freely go outside during daytime. There would be no problem even if I were to go outside freely since this boar Mr. Night territory is wide anyway. In an area that father and the others recognize, Three villages with a total population of 800 people live on the foot of the mountains to the north and west there's farmland and forests in both areas which population uses to feed themselves. The eastern and southern parts are currently undeveloped areas the demon forest stretches off to the coast and sea remains beyond that. The territory and rights of the Bormister Knight territory has the potential to become the greatest noble in the south if developed. There currently exists a big gap in actually being able to bring out the potential of the land though. Father said that the sea is really valuable. A path cannot be trailed through the demon forest since it is difficult to develop and maintain but since no noble would start a fight over the land. It would be a dream to monopolize the fish product A port could also be created to facilitate trade and marine transportation. It was also something wonderful to obtain salt with one's own effort. Bormas tonight's territory actually faces the sea but we normally buy salt from the caravan that comes over the mountain. The price also fair given that the merchant has to cross over the mountains to get to us but it's still expensive for that very reason. This is the reason why our soup tastes slightly salty. Oh well. That's the Bormister Knight territory for you but for now I have moved to broaden my field of activities. In the morning, I start with light training such as sword practice which is my daily routine I then receive two small brown pieces of bread after breakfast that acts as my lunch before leaving the house. By the way, currently, permission is no longer needed for people to go hunting and gathering. The first stages of the farmland and construction of an irrigation canal to meet the needs of the population has been completed so it was possible for people to go hunting given the free time now available. Our family, particularly further and eldest brother Kurt alternatively go to the forest to hunt and gather. Indeed, Having a guinea fowl being the main dish at dinner and it being caught by a seven-year-old kid has hurt the pride of the guys as the men of the house to a certain extent. That said, guinea fowls are pretty difficult birds to catch even for professional hunters. There are more days when it cannot be captured and so, I take two to three grassland rabbits as a souvenir on my return. Anyway, Boar Mr. Knight Territory's southern part has many savage forests and meadows. Rather it was nothing but that so there were many things I could capture in my way back. Well then, I will visit the demon forest today. Flight, and, teleportation, are the two magics that I currently train intensively. Flying is magic commonly found in the world of manga and games it also exists in some RPGs and the manga then there. Also magic in some anime, either way magic in one's body can be used all at once. I remembered quite well that my breath was pressed back into my mouth and as a result of that, I considered that it would not be a good idea to raise my flight speed to begin with that was due to the fact that I didn't generate a protective membrane of air around my body. I have no problems with the speed either as I was moving as fast as an average car on a highway. Besides, it was possible to instantaneously travel to a certain point once I remember its location with teleportation magic. Based on that chain of thought, the idea that I can reach the sea instantly comes into my head but I have not actually arrived at the demon forest yet. At the moment, I have no recorded maps for other regions except for the place I live and moreover, in order to move at will in the Bormister Knight territory which size is comparable to Hokkaido. I have spent this week creating a map for the savage lands. As a result of this after three weeks of effort, almost the entire area of the savage land has been covered again. 
The demon forest occupies about one quarter the size of Hokkaido so I have succeeded in placing a sort of distance point in a thousand places for the remaining three quarters. That does not mean that I set up a physical sign when I said point I recorded it in my own detailed maps listing them as potential locations to land safely in case of teleportation and to safely arrive at that point using teleportation magic. I imagine in my head the number recorded and the rough location of where I want to teleport to. There was also the matter of location shift but flying is enough so other careful movement can be done later. But what I found in these three weeks is that the savage land is a gold mine. Many possible plots of land exists for cultivation flood control would be essential but the many rivers on the land it should not be too much trouble to handle. The scattered woods and forests are a treasure trove of various products including iron, copper, gold, silver, various types of gems, mithril and the more than one mine that produces or I more. If it could be developed, the Bormisternite territory being promoted to Marquis status would be least that would happen it's even possible to establish an independent small kingdom from the wealth of the savage land. But it was a pipe dream for now. The kingdom itself has yet to finish developing half of its central region nobles were arranged accordingly in the southern frontier but these nobles also have many portions of savage lands to develop in their own territory. To sum it up, the people and funds needed to develop the savage lands in the Bormister Knight territory was insufficient. Development on this land perhaps would begin hundreds of years later. Therefore, I can hunt two rabbits freely the second I arrive I can also grill and eat the caught fish, and utilize the field to practice new magic. More specifically, to practice the haranking attack magic with high power this uninhabited land is a suitable location to practice such magic. I might even practice special earth magic later. In a gold mine I found, I could extract only the pure gold ingredients from the collected ores and gold dust to make gold ingots. Master called this extraction and recombination it is the basic magic taught to a person wanting to be an alchemist. As for advanced magic. Magic can be added into silver to form mithril. You would need a lot of magic just to create a small amount of mithril though as such, it would serve as good practice for raising a person's mana capacity. Furthermore, I am the second one to arrive here the first ones here, for the time being, the army led by Margrave Brithilda with half of the Bormister territorial troops. It would be nice if at least one mine could have been found but it would be difficult to send people to such a remote place. In the savage lands upon careful consideration so the Margrave's greed was put to one side in favor of material of the closer demon forest. A dark forest what would be inside. I have finally succeeded in obtaining a view of the demon forest today. The forest seriness and gloominess can be seen from the outside despite it being daytime ominous bird cries in the air or monster cries and screams also can't be heard. I doubt it was a good place for a seven-year-old child to enter alone. Well, I won't go inside till I have grown up though. No matter how good I can use magic and enhance my physical strength, there's a chance that I would die after carelessly entering this forest. It might be okay but I have no plan of risking my own life this world is not a game. There is no continue button once I die. Once I get a little bit older, I will start training my swordmanship and other martial arts earnestly I will shape those up to a certain extent once I grow up. To that end, I'll surely come here with teleportation. Even master couldn't win and lost his life from the swarming of monsters in the demon forest. I am not sure I can pass it through no matter how careful I am. But that does not mean I am giving up going to the sea. For one week after that, I explored the demon forest from the sky making full use of flying and detection magic. Firstly, the demon forest is the closest point to search for the sea I am exploring it as there are no tough monsters that can fly on that route. I am out of there if there's a dragon but if there is none then it might be possible to reach the sea with flying magic in full force. As a result of one week of searching. I somehow succeeded in finding a small spot that allows me to fly over to the demon forest and reach the sea. It was a fortune that monsters don't take even a step from the demon forest. I can fly a little faster than a dragon if I got it full speed with my flight magic. There's delicious fish in the sea. And I can create my own my own salt. I've gotten tired with my thin salty meals. Even if I can't get my hands on soy sauce and miso. I want to at least have a meal that tastes a little more strongly. If jump over this demon forest, there's a lot of unexploited salt here. Rather, I want to say this, flying at max speed. Now to the sea. Dot.
Wendlin, I got fired up after a long time burning a lot of magic power by jumping over the demon forest at high altitudes and high speed with flight magic after a few minutes, I arrived at the sea, I did it, it's the sea, dot. Wendlin, there's a sea that's composed of only a beautiful sandy beach without human presence and highly transparent sea water. Moreover, this coast and sea are separate from the monster's domain so I could not perceive any dangerous existences even using detection. There's a response that appears to be large fish in the sea maybe this is something like a shark. But as long I am enjoying myself in the shallows, it was not a presence that will do any harm to me. First is the meal. I create my own fishing equipment in a hurry I start fishing on the rock near the sandy beach with bread as my bait. The fish in this place are not easy to tempt I caught it easily though even with my comparatively low amount of fishing experience. I was a self-cooking person in my previous life so I can pretty much cook the fish I also use judge magic to make sure that I can eat the fish I caught that looks like mackerel I use antidote just in case and decide to cook it with fire before eating it. The seasoning is only seawater but I enjoyed the grilled fish from the sea after a long time. When I was in the Bormister family, Pseudocrucian carp and koi carp sometimes get caught in the irrigation canal but it smells of mud and is unappetizing. After eating one more, it feels like I won't stop eating it. Next is shellfish or crab and lobster. On another other rock, shellfish that looks like oyster. Tobin shell and abalone and eating large lobsters and crabs that have been caught easily. After skewering them and cooking them with fire, a waft of nostalgic and delicious smell surrounds me. Delicious. While filling my mouth, I sincerely enjoy the happiness from the sea after a long time. Chapter 17 The sea is filled with dreams, but still, I can't just give up now. Wendlin, after a few days, I started anew exploring the beach. It does not need to be all the way into the sea. But there is no one watching me here, and I can eat seafood as I please. Since there also is a lot of salt in here. Wendlin. What I'm trying to do now is the application of original magic to earth magic. Now, as I have a large amount of seawater as material, I can use as much as I like. I am conducting an experiment to make salt with magic. It just that this magic technique was also written in the book that Master left behind. When adventurers run out of salt, soil, or a mass of rock, Flora, fauna, and even monster corpses can be used to create salt. They contain a small amount of salt and in many cases it can be refined by magic. Humans are odd ones even with sufficient food. There are some cases of a person losing appetite and dying just because the food was not salty enough. Salt is really important for humans. Back to the topic. I succeeded in obtaining salt without a problem it was much faster and in a larger amount with the magic written in book made by master. Even if it's not 999% sodium chloride, I can make a clear distinction between white, silky salt salt that looks a bit yellow and rock salt. I mean, I can even make a living by selling salt. Wendlin. While thinking of such a thing. I am not satisfied with just this. I am planning in reviving several seasonings with this salt as material. From miso first. Wendlin. Let alone our territory, soybeans also a popular crop in this world. Feeding livestock, cooking it together in soup, and you can eat it with wheat rice porridge as cereal. Since the price is also cheap, I managed to get one sackful worth from the people within the territory who cultivated it in the field near their residence. The price is the rabbit's fur and meat I captured by myself. Now I can make miso using soybean and salt as the ingredients. There is no miso in this world so I need to perfect it by myself. Luckily, magic exists which could be helpful. There are also some veteran magicians that are able to brew wine instantly using grapes they prepared by themselves. The others like using wheat for ale, sugar for rum and also honey for mead. This world knows the method for changing carbohydrates into alcohol. There exists a magician that brewed alcohol using various materials. The process of brewing that normally takes long time can be preformed instantly by magic. If you honestly think that it is quite absurd to use such brewing sources to brew alcohol, then you are not wrong. Why? Because the taste of a professional's wine cellar is after all the best. There are some magicians who sometimes makes alcohol that can put professionals to shame, but at the same time, the alcohol produced can't match the sheer quantity some professionals can make. These magicians though mostly do self-made brewing as hobbies or to enjoy it with their family. That said, it was common for drinkable brewed alcohol to be done in such a short time. As such, 
it should be possible for miso to be brewed. First is miso then progressing to fermenting tamari and finally brewing soy sauce with magic my dreams will come true. Wendlin, I began making miso at once. Ha 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 I can't believe it was this hard. Wendlin, before I finally completed miso and soy sauce, I recalled the amount of hardships I went though in this one year alone. It should have been easy to make it with magic. I don't need that much, I just want enough for myself. If I can return to the past, I would like to warn myself with such a remark. I knew how to make miso thanks to my grandma who lived in a rural area who self-made it a long time ago. I actually helped her several times. In practice, it was usual in trusting boiling the soybean to magic otherwise, it was easy to convert it into boiled beans with magic. And it was okay until mixing the following materials, but I failed in the following fermentation. Materials will rot no matter how much magic you put into it. In the past, a biology teacher during my high school years once asked us while having a chat during class, what the difference was between fermentation and rotting. Everyone gave various answers but the correct answer is like this. 1. Fermentation and rotting is the same phenomenon. 2. Fermentation is useful but spoilage does harm to humans. Thus, I wasted a lot of spoiled soybeans all the while. I kept exchanging soybeans with rabbits I hunted every day it reached a point where I was being given strange looks. Still, after thousands of failures, I had somehow succeeded in producing miso, and repeated the same failure with soy sauce. I mean, I'm a person that's able to successfully cast a spell after several times. This occurred for me regardless of how difficult the advanced level spell from Master's book was. I was also able to successfully develop various original magic techniques myself. I can't believe that I kept failing to produce miso and soy sauce. It's just that for soy sauce, it was a kind of failure that bore no progress, just like tamari. Since I still exchange soybeans till this day, I was met with strange looks I did finally manage to produce soy sauce though. Because I exchanged too much soybeans, the territory's people stopped choosing soybeans for meals. Instead, they might have noticed that they can eat meat every day by exchanging soybeans for rabbits and wild boars meat with me. They may have questions on what I use it for but I was still pretty much the Lord's son. I am not really exploiting them since this is an equal exchange so I usually exchange depending on my mood. I was lucky that my family didn't say anything the treatment I get is kind of awkward though, but still, producing alcohol with magic is going smoothly. And again with the territories people who cultivated fields near their house. I used guinea fowls that I hunted and exchanged it for wheat I used the wheat to create wheat shot you and ale. Besides that, I use wild fruits as materials such as mountain grapes and wild strawberries collected in the wilderness since then, I have succeeded in producing alcohol like wine, I can only sample it as I am still in a child's body, but it was quite tasty so I created sturdy jars from earth magic for this I sealed the alcohol tightly in there and kept it in my magic bag. Soil is the best raw material for earthen whereby magic soil rich in compounds like silicon dioxide. Aluminum oxide was the best for creating clay I then removed the water in the clay and shaped the jar form after that, I baked the jar with a boiler at high temperatures the material can be changed for a later state. The idea of baking the jars with fire magic appeared in my mind for an instant, but after imagining that it would be impossible to put out the fire magic with high temperature for about one week, I dismissed it immediately. At first, the jars I created were fragile and crumbled at once there were severe water leaks from jars that were just baked I ended up wasting a lot of clay because of this after a lot of trial and error, a suitable jar for the preservation of alcohol, miso and soy sauce was created. With regards to the beauty of my molded jars, it will not be sold since my artistic sense is lacking. In short, I just use it to preserve the fermented foods that I made. If it's not leaking out and the quality does not deteriorate. I can put it in the magic bag. For those reasons, it feels like in this one year one put all my mind into manufacturing pots, miso and soy sauce. In addition, I can purify salt with magic. I also suddenly discovered sugar cane on an island in the southern part. One tried to refine sugar from sugar canes that grows in nature with magic. Sugar seems to be grown on islands found on the southern end of the region and the southern sea of Lingaya continent. Of course. The royal capital and northern areas exported it to the Urquhart Holy Empire as exports but I have never seen it even once in the Bormister Knight territory. By all means, 
Since there is less production compared to the demand, its price is overwhelmingly higher than salt. For our Bormister family who is financially lacking, sugar is a luxury good where compared to salt, is dozens of times more valuable. The rest is honey and fruit that can be harvested in the forest. Such products are usually used as a supplement for the sweet taste. For example, vines when boiled in soup it can be slightly sweet like honey. This talk could continue but with this. I am able to make boiled mackerels miso, spilling soy sauce on the top of fried turban shells in the river connected to the sea, despite the Bormister Night Territory being in the southern region, fishes that look like salmon are going upstream for some reason I should be able to make soy sauce pickles with fried salmon with this too. But that was needed all the more if it was like this. Wendlin Indispensable staple food for the Japanese the existence of rice. I had thought that it would be cultivated since this is the southern region but I have not seen any signs of it being cultivated at least not in our territory. However, it must exist somewhere as checking it in a book, I found a plant with a similar description the book stated that it has been produced in other southern regions. When I learned of this fact, I had the thought that maybe my father was an idiot. It's not like water was inadequate for rice fields. Rice could be cultivated on this land which can be harvested more efficiently than wheat. I'm sure I'll have a hard time making my first rice field but trouble should not arise from repeated cultivation in case of a rice field. In any case, because of trouble in reclamation, I thought that I should make a rice field. Actually, the statements of being prodigals son are just empty words as I also hardly helped my family. I had expected that they would not listen to me even if I made such a proposal. If I cultivate it in the south, I'd get to keep it all for myself. I could buy it normally in the market but I need to create a teleport point outside the territory first for that to be possible. That means, I should be able to move to a point which I made once. My first target is Margrave Brita Hilda's mansion located in the southern's largest merchant city, Britburg. Wendlin, Britburg is the largest merchant city in the southern border region despite struggling to recover from the damage left behind by the predecessor's big failure. The higher anchor in the Margrave Brithilda's headquarters won't be shaken with just that. Nobles who have territories in the south are definitely allowed to reside and establish their branch offices as merchants in the city. A lot of people also visit the city to go sightseeing and shopping. Above all, not only the adventurers who control the southern part frontier region reside in the city, the southern headquarters of various guilds have been established in that city as well. The next target would be to move with teleport to Britburg. Wendlin, for buying rice, there are plenty goods that are sellable in the magic bag. This includes anything from master's property to Margrave Brithilda's army munition resources. There are also many materials that have been obtained from wiping out a lot of monsters. Besides, I also produced a large amount of fermented food, salt and sugar in this past one year. Together with the preserved jar, which is the result of my desperate efforts after several days, the jars that number tens of thousands of pieces have been already stored in the magic bag. The numbers feel like abnormally large but the creation of these jars also served as a way to increase my magic capacity. Getting used to reducing the amount of magic consumed after all is more efficient when one uses one's magic to the limit for the sake of increasing a person's magic capacity in exchange. The amount of work that can be completed gradually increases as well. I would be able to achieve the same result using attack magic but to fire off a fire spell or use tornado magic in consecutive sequences is bad for the environment even if my practice field is an uninhabited plane so I often use earth support magic when training to increase my magic capacity. I need to travel through the mountain path tomorrow gotta go early home and sleep. Wendlin. I cast teleport magic to return home quickly. Chapter 18, Metropolis, Britburg. This is amazing, a big town I saw after a long time. Dot. Wendlin. Looking down from high ground at Britburg the biggest merchant town in the southern part governed by Brithilda Margrave, I'm thrilled by seeing a big town after a long time. I heard that the population's about 200,000s. It was not that great compared with town in Japan Heisera but from living with many people in poor village for this past years, it looks like a really big town to me. And I had spent a week to reach here. The mountains that lie between Bormister Night Territory, 
The caravan brings cargo once in several months so Mountain Path exists for now, though it apparently take one month for a round trip via there. I had the thought that they came to do business with us even without specialty products but it seems to be half public service with almost no profit. Brithilda Margrave, the South's greatest noble that unified the noble in this southern region seems to make an active effort regularly for the vassal Bormister House and its territory people until in deficit. I heard this story before from Eric Nissan, Bormister House received considerable damage in personnel and financial from unreasonably dispatching troops. And this dispatching troops requests came from Brithilda Margrave's side. Further's greed might also have been substantial but if vassals could not decline request the lord they served. They come only twice a year so far after that incident when the caravan comes three times a year, this also to prevent criticism rather than apology. Eric Nissan told me all about that circumstances. The road in the mountain range exists for now because of that. I strengthen my body and go through the way while detecting people. Monster in this mountain range seems to comes out accordingly this place treated as monster territory but it's rarely appear along the mountain road. That does not mean nothing appear as normal bear and wolf appears frequently so precaution was needed, and the reason why I do not use flight magic. I don't want my family and territory people who look at the mountain to see me flying. The other reason is that I want to exercise a little for my physical fitness. I return home with teleportation after I make progress as far as advancing about one day. The next day I starts to move back into teleportation advanced point from yesterday. It take extra time because of that but thanks to magic I succeeded in going over the mountain half the caravan time. What's wrong boy? Dot. Guard. I'm shopping in the town as errand. Wendlin. I moved into Britburg Gate after the excitement. Britburg Great Forest's monster territory that close by which adventurers seclude themselves, that's why this Britburg is surrounded with three meters wall. Monster never invaded to the outside even once though, maybe this is to fight against human. Helmut Kingdom not in war for a long time but that does not mean nothing happen. Small scale skirmishes between nobles because of territory and water rights always occur once in a few years. Noble with territory in particular have many conflict like this. Brithilda Margrave also actually not in good relationship with some nobles house in its vicinity. By the way, the rights dispute with other nobles never happened to Bormister House. Because it is physically isolated by mountains. Do you have a warrant card boy? Dot. Guard. I've none I'll make a members card in commercial guild later. Wendlin, is that so? Can you pay one copper coin for entrance town tax? Dot. Guard. Yes, I can. Wendlin, I actually have a warrant card but it had became serious problem if anyone know that the eight ages of Bormister eight sons in Britburg. So I tried to enter the town as a boy from the nearby farm village. Almost everyone that live in a town have warrant card but only a few people in farm village has it as the no place to issue it there because you need to go to Britburg to issue it. Then what a county bump can do to enter town for shopping? The answer is to join a Guild. Adventurer Guild is the most appropriate but it need at least 15 ages to enter. I can cheat my age a little since there no family register in this world but it would be useless for me today. So that left artisan guild or merchant guild. The many kid like me became apprentice of renowned artisan and merchant and the many case that they go to. Brutberg as errand by the instruction of their master or boss. I see so you want to sell that rabbit? Dot. Guard. The gatekeeper guard confirmed several rabbit skins that hanging on my waist. This is something I had obtained in the middle of Mountain Road. Yes, I'd sold it as I heard that it was needed for members card in commercial guild. Wendlin. To be exact, it was needed for warrant card. The town resident so in the warrant card from the beginning. The members card that belong to various kinds of guilds will serves as substitution. You had the obligation to show this in trading goods for crime prevention. It was surprisingly strict but there also shop in the slums that do business without warrant card, and guild members card originally a trap for outsider to establish whatever they want I can make a members card easily also thanks to that. I sets foot into Britburg after paid one copper coin for the tax to the guard. It seems we must pay the tax when entering the town though one copper coin not really that many. Coincidentally, the monetary system was unified in all Lingaya continent, although money design was different in Helmut Kingdom and Urquhart Holy Empire, the convention of gold silver and copper used has been unified, 
so no problem in using it anywhere. There are also money type and value per cents has been adopted for money unit. I had only the opportunity to feel the monetary economy from trading with caravan that comes once a few months. I usually done it with barter as our boar Mr. Knight territory rarely hear the word of it. One copper island one cent, ten copper or one copper plate is ten cents, tens copper plate or one silver is hundred cents, ten silver or one silver plate is thousand cents, ten silver plate or one gold is ten thousand cents, ten gold coin or one gold plate is hundred thousand cents, ten gold plate or one platinum is one million cents. 10 platinum or 1 platinum plate is 10 million cents. You can buy 1 apple for 1 copper which the same amount of tax frequently paid for entering town so about 100 yen for 1 cent when converted into yen. Welcome to commercial guild issuing members card isn't it? Write the necessary item to this document. Guild Nain. I entered the large building which is the commercial guild told by Garzan Nesan. It was crowded with people who came for various business. When I talked to young Onis and that sits at the counter that written as members card issuance counter, she in polite tone made me to write in the document. This document listed about name, birthplace and age. I wrote my age normally, address with the appropriate name of poor village that was a little away from here, and I decided to pretend to be a commoner kid that have only Wendlin as last name. There was only misstatement but a lie like this won't became a problem. There are also some people who lie about their name unabashedly. Members card issued for first time is free note that it will take one silver for reissue fee if you lose it and be sure to pay 10% of sales when the goods were sold to the station supervisor in the specified position given understand that harsh treatment is waiting for violating the rule. Guild Nain. I take my leave from receptionist Anisan and start to move to where bazaar take place. Just like receptionist Anisan description, when enters town main street through little narrow alley, there are many young, old men and women selling various things by expanding mat on the roadside. There are also kid like me here, that is why the receptionist Anisan would not be surprised even if I request for commercial guild members card. Are you helping your father boy? Dot. Guild staff. When I'm talking with a middle-aged man of guild staff that partitioning the bazaar, he greet me kindly thinking that I'm a dutiful son that came to sell the prey my parent had hunted. I catch it with my own traps. Wendlin. There is no need for me to claim that I can use magic, I had decided to say that I captured the rabbit with my own trap near the village I live. When I look around, there also another kid that sells rabbit captured with trap just like me. Well. You are quite skilled for a kid you can sell it in the vacant place over there it will sell quickly as the stock for rabbit fur and meat is always lacking I guess the current market for one meat and fur is about 5 coppers plate. Guild staff. It's around 5000 yen. I can see why as on my way to the specified place, I saw people selling rabbit fur and meat with all the price tag is 5 coppers plate. So it's around 4500 to 5000 yen. I do not want to spend extra time for small profit so I set it to 5 copper plate is the normal price. I arrange the four rabbits on the mat that I brought and a man voice call out to me immediately a man around 40 age with appearance like merchant. Are you helping your father? Dot. Merchant. No, this is something I have captured with my own trap. Wendlin. Oh, you're quite skilled for a youngster and also your way of tanning the fur is quite good as the meat's still fresh. Merchant. Draining the blood from the meat, dismantling and tanning the skin. It simply can be done with magic. It's inferior to professional top quality goods but that can be expected as it was done with decent quality. The effort to learn that magic and it was a challenge at first from antipathy in dismantling the prey. The meat that I bought from supermarkets in my previous life is nothing but a product that bundled in pack. I had difficulty especially the process of drawing out the blood and internal organs let just say that it was something a former modern people like me can't get used so easily. I'll take everything I'd be happy if you come to sold it again. Merchant. Thanks for buying. Wendlin. Rabbits sold by two silver in total. I paid two coppers plate for the 10% sales to the guild staff. What would you do now? Dot. Merchant. I had been asked by father to buy rice. Wendlin. I guess it's about five coppers plate for 10 kilos though it differs fairly with its producing area and varieties. Merchant. I express thanks to guild staff. I return home with teleport after buying 10 kg rice for 5 copper plate from nearby rice shop. The purpose is of course to cook the rice I bought earlier. Chapter 19, 
Alona also out on the crowd. Hey, isn't it the boy? Did you come to sell your catch today too? Dot. Merchant. Yes. Wendlin. You're working hard to earn money. Merchant. It has been three years that I go frequent to Merchant Town Britburg in Brithhilda Margrave Territory. I finally turn eleven years old but nothing big happened for the last three years. Since my treatment at home get complicated because of magic, I wake up early morning every day and after finished breakfast and practice sword, enter the depth of the forest at once and depart with teleportation magic. The destination is somewhere in the southern part of the undeveloped land. I can do special training in magic accordingly. I can try alchemy in various ways with material like ore taken from the mine, I can try out in creating various food and dish from hunting, gathering and fishing. Thanks to my magic bag, a large amount of food, foodstuff, material, metal, and goods that successful in alchemy were stored in it, making it quite in large quantities because of magic training. I make a lot of food because it won't get worse when putting it into magic bag, thus I repeat putting everything in the magic bag as results. But what would I plan to do with hundred thousands of self-made jar with 10 kilos salt purified by magic in it? But magic power still need to be consumed a lot if I want to raise my magic power that has become huge but still growing because of special training. It would be very stupid of me for invoking high rank attack magic that look brutal. I may had no choice but comparatively using magical power by firing many special magic in barrage. The same with sugar, miso and soy sauce in pot that can exceed 50,000 pieces easily. I had calculated that it was enough for a lifetime supply. The most commons would be sugar purified by magic from sugar cane that grows naturally in uninhabited island in south. I can also make miso and soy sauce in my free time since soybean material is available for purchase even at Britburg. Since the quality improved when making it a lot, I had been immersed in production without even thinking about the necessary amount. And there are also a lot of iron, copper, gold, silver and platinum ingot as well. Development will begin after a few hundred years, anyway, so I can use it a little till that time, there are also many abandoned mine with every metal taken. Rather it's just me that aware about the mine existence so no one will know that the mine already become abandoned mine. And I don't have the talent as craftsman in alchemist and magic tool. I just store everything in magic bag even the unrefined ingot. Though with the purity method, all of it were top quality products as my magical accuracy have rose. I spent my time in such savage land about three days with such feeling and head to Britburg another time. With rabbit, weasel, badger, mink and guinea fowl I've killed in hunting, I join the bazaar as dutiful son that comes to sales the catch for the household by himself and buy rice, soybeans, and other household goods from selling it. The rice in particular is an essential item I am originally a Japanese so I really want to eat it every day at any cost. There are many kind of rice even in this world. The red rice, black rice is the kind that called as ancient rice. The long grain, half length grain and medium grain seed that mainstream in Southeast Asia in my previous life. And the short grain species is mainstream in Japan. All of it from ancient magic in civilization era and seems to be the result after diligently do selective breeding. But the breeding is not making any progress recently. The ancient magic in civilization era, the people who used magic growth stimulation in order to improve the efficiency and breeding the plant which is rare now. So that's how it is. I can't use it either, and the humans that can use it with its effect can be seen is a weak magic that released every day from morning till night which reducing about half the harvested time. They could not improve the breed so easily since they had not developed a place like agricultural experiment station in my previous life. I have mainly purchased the short grain species though it was the most pricey. I also had bought the long grain species for fried rice and pilaf as it was quite unusual for someone to buy the ancient rice. And I also bought glutinous rice I can make steamed rice cake with it. Soybean flour can be made from soybean that I have purchased as material for miso, I can make a bin jam if they're also a red bin. Since they're also sugar. I can make ginocco and oargai regularly. I can self cooking like in my previous life if that happens. It was impossible every day but I take it as hobby cooking. In my day off for the sweets, thanks to grandmother who taught me in making miso. That remind me, 
how is she now, that make me feel uneasy, after working in charge of foodstuff purchase for domestic and foreign in second-rate trading company, it is somewhat useful as experience, if I do not know to some extent the type and amount of spice used as material for curry that I've succeed in reproducing the other day, it would take more time for that mixture, it's unquestionable even if it take time as I am just alone, beside I can spend my own money for lunch and dessert in town, and there also library in this town I can be there all day with just one copper plate as admission fees, I am reading book as much time permits, I've already read all the book in the study room in my house, there are a lot of more valuable books stored in here, I still don't have that much involvement with the others but I can only be a loner as I can't afford to reveal my identity, magic training including food to greatly improve my life, I'm busy which is the big reason I feel not that much, inconvenience but I still write to reply regularly to the letter that only comes from Eric Nissan once in a few months, it said that after Eric Nissan passes the test for petty official in Imperial City, he seems to be favored now by his boss, he is introduced to his boss daughter as that evidence and apparently dating her with prospects of marriage, that intellectual and good looking Eric Nissan for you he seems to walking without a hitch, on the road of fulfilled life it's a large difference with his loner younger brother that get addicted into magic and that boss girl's only daughter of lower class vestment noble, which means he will take over that boss house as the future spouse that can be called as the winners already, anyway. Even if one's born to noble house in this world, there are more some that eventually lose their social status. And it was said that the other two brothers also becomes a member of Imperial City Security Force. Marriage still not come yet but my belief is that Eric Nis naming is just like the one adopted into wife's family of Knight Peerage House with only daughter. Why I known this because it was written in the book that it is not uncommon for second son of noble house onwards finding a job in royal family as a petty officials or soldiers aiming to be adopted into one's wife's family to succeed there, title, second son of noble house onwards living for some time as noble house member but they're not treated as noble unless succeed the title and must pay their own food cost, own territory but without role, they're also pension for inherit title even without territory but they must turn their own living cost, this is the same like the samurai and noble long time ago in my previous life, I originally have no regret like noble but it's a good story for me who plan to live as adventurer in the future, I need to pass one more year. Wendlin, I will be 12 years old at another year, I'm still not treated as an adult but I had found a way to speed up my independence, it's to enter adventurer prep school that adventurer guild of this town manages, adventurer prep school is a place to become an adventurer from 15 ages, it was a school made with the purpose to teach a must techniques before that, admission conditions is at least from 12 ages, anyone below 20 years old can enter with at least one year to learn the necessary techniques as adventurer. The training basically is not performed to live in monster territory, but once in a few months after entering the school for more than one year, only for outstanding students with a professional adventurer as escort can participate in training in monster habitat with lower difficulty. That sound nice I'm gonna participate in this. Wendlin. And in this prep school, ones will be exempt from all tuition when deemed perform excellent in entrance exam. I can pay the money needed but since I keeps silent about magic bag contents so I'm going to persuade them by saying, I'll strive for the tuition to be exempted so I can manage to cover the tuition and living expenses by hunting. After all, my family does not want to expose me into territory people as possible, so they will not object if I'll cover school expenses and living cost in some way by myself. In fact, Father didn't object to this after I return home and talk to him. Though the conditions were I need to manage the tuition and living expenses by myself, I can manage that so I want for one year to pass quickly. But there is nothing I can do before prep school enrollment. I'm going to keep training in martial arts and magic instead, like usual. So with my future career path has been settled without problems, I go into forest like usual and tries to teleport from there. But today is the first time I end up interrupted. I had put detection magic for caution so my teleport magic would not to be seen but today is the first time there is a reaction to it. Six people in southwest direction. Dot. Wendlin. I never felt this human's response before. It is highly unlikely that other humans enter this forest which bore Mr. House exclusive rights, and the many other forests like other villagers that can be used for hunting and gathering. It can be said as undeveloped land with just that, other than this forest, 
Bo Mr. House has issued a permission to freely enter the forest as long taxes is paid. So territory people did not even once complain in this matter. So for what they're here for? They already come into my sight. I had no reason to run away by magic since they have come closer. I decided to intimidate my opponents ahead. I did not like their attitude for sneaking around. Who are you guys? Dot. Wendlin. When I raised my voice at the direction I felt people, six people show up from the shadows of a large tree. I knew them when I look at them. My father's mistress Layla, her father Klaus who is the village headman of the near village, followed with her children, my half-older brothers and elder sisters, sixth son Wall they're 18 years old, seventh son Curl 17 ages, eldest daughter Agnes 15 years old and second daughter Corona 14 years old. They're pretty much my acquaintance. But to actually exchanged conversation for the first time is at the eldest son Kurt and second son Helman wedding or only seating in the party afterwards. They are my siblings even if half-blooded but as my mother is a noble born, they are commoner's child even if they're from village headman, the treatment change significantly in this world. First, child have no inheritance rights if not from legal wife. Even the girl won't become a tool for political marriage unless recognized by the father. The majority of illegitimate children entered the house of vassal lineage. As an adopted son or as son-in-law, it's a custom to take over village headman or village head house. With such circumstances, other than my father which they are his children, even eldest son Kurt and second son Helman Hardy speak with them. It was obvious that they keep their distance from legal wife who also my mother. In fact my mother also didn't speak with them maybe because of difference in social status. I on the other hand does not have that much conversation even with my real family. I live as usual, naturally I hardly talk with these people who I only meet for two times and yet, they clearly have business with me now thus I had appeared in front of them like this. I'm sorry for our sudden rudeness Wendlin Sama. Klaus. Klaus as the village headman greets me on behalf of six people. His age is near sixty ages which in this world treated as elderly people. But he looked ten years younger. For generations, born into village headman house that manages the near village, even the farmers. His predecessor's grandfather and father is a trusted man with their reputation all around. And despite the knights cannot read kanji, unlike people in Bormister House that barely can calculate the tax, he can do reading and writing, and do maths normally, collecting tax from territory people, bookkeeping and accounting, everything including financial side. Though he is retired now, as Bormister House retainer in his younger day, Proceed the reinforcements in response to Brithhilda Margrave request with inevitable future several years ago. He also have participated in a skirmish over the territory boundary between Brithhilda Margrave and Ainsbach Viscount. I can see why he's now also have countenance of alertness. I am just the eighth son boy of eleven years old and he didn't have any chance to talk to me who is the legal wife son. To this idiot and uneducated me with only lineage and have no power to speak so impolite it does not matter to me but there is a big distinction in status between commoner and noble in this world. I am still a noble so this tone in front of Klaus is the correct one. Actually, Layla in the back as well the other brother and sisters have been quiet. Apart from not being born from Layla, the other four people who are my older brother and sisters didn't talk to me so familiarly, that alone is the proof of this world big distinctions in status. Especially the central part near Imperial City, there a case that commoner was cut down by noble for just talking impolitely. This does not mean all that noble is arrogant. This class system not just Helmut Kingdom, it's also serve as stability for the nearby Urquhart Holy Large Country but there are only a few commoner killed by that, mostly only end up whiplash instead. That does not matter, what do you want? I wanna go hunting now. Wendlin. I'm sorry for appearing in this place so suddenly I come here with request to Wendlin Sama. Klaus, request to me, dot. Wendlin, let me put it bluntly I'd like for Wendlin Sama to succeed Bo Mr. House. Klaus, huh, dot. Wendlin, my eyes bulging out from the sudden request. Chapter 20, Small Family Feud. The villagers unrest is increasing, slowly but surely, here in the Bo Mr. Knight territory. Klaus, I heard their business but the words that came from the village headman, Klaus, felt like a bombshell. I've never heard that before. Wendlin. I couldn't say anything else. Father is alive and well, and he has already announced Kurt as the successor to the Bormister household plus. Kurt married four years ago and has a child, which is a boy. It was clear to all that Kurt, 
the eldest son, would inherit Vormister Knight territory. There is no reason to discuss this any further. Wendlin, I'm troubled to suddenly have a talk like this. It feels like they want to instigate the useless eighth son, who is still eleven years old. Honestly, what do they expect me to do? Be but Wendlin's armor. Klaus, further is the current family head and has already announced my eldest brother Kurt as the successor also, there are three people above me for the succession, what could I possibly say about this absurd talk? Dot. Wendlin, the line of succession in Bormister Knight territory right now is eldest brother Kurt, Kurt's son Cal, Paul. Third son, Helmut. Fourth son, Eric. Fifth son, and myself in last place, Herman, the second son is the current family head of the Vassal branch family, so he has abandoned the rights to inherit. Eric Nissan is currently a petty official in the Imperial City and has already decided to enter his boss's family as their son-in-law, so he also plans on giving up the inheritance rights immediately. It would be too unnatural for me to become the next family head of Bormister since my place in succession is the fifth and last place however, the biggest challenge would be to convince father to make me the family head. Plus. There is a chance Klaus might get rid of me by making me the scapegoat for being the main culprit of a family feud, such a conspiracy theory also came to mind. Maybe I am an eyesore for Klaus' superior judgment. Dot. Wendlin. Why you little? Dot. Wall there. Back off wall there. Dot. Klaus. But grandfather. Dot. Wall there. Wendlin's armor is your brother and your social standing is different back away, now. Dot. Klaus. Wall there father's sixth son, though through a mistress, rages at my remarks but was suppressed at once by Klaus. Though Walther is eight years older than me, he can't become my big brother. I didn't think much about it in my previous life, but the status distinction between a legal wife and mistress is indeed troublesome. I am aware that I said something foolish, but I am absolutely sure Bormister Knight territory will decline in the future if we don't take action. Klaus. Decline? How? Dot. Wendlin. I could not understand why Bormister Knight territory is weakening. There is unused land that may produce enormous wealth, if greatly developed and the territory can reach the sea, if we successfully cleared certain parts of Demon Forest. Wendlin. Yes, our future is bright if development is possible, but it is not currently possible as of now. The population of the territory is gradually, yet steadily, decreasing. Klaus. Klaus begins to explain to me about his opinion on the future of the Bormister Knight territory, first explaining how it started with the incident that occurred eleven years ago in Demon Forest. Sending troops eleven years ago is our biggest blunder in history. Klaus. I already knew that what I don't understand is the need to rush the clearing of the Demon Forest for cultivation when we already had lot of undeveloped land to use I suppose access to the sea was greatly desired by the Brithhilda Margrave, which might explain what they had hoped for in rushing forward with developing the land of Demon Forest. Wendlin. With the current noble Sama participation in the incident. A solider was elected as a guide please carefully consider this other territories don't have the same geography with how vast our lands are, nor do they have demon forest and its untold resources obviously it can be counted as military might with how large our territory is. Klaus. Brithhilda Margrave is able to mobilize military forces of more than 30,000. Yet maintaining the security in the region and disputes with a few nobles near the territory boundary will drain the budget and logistics will become a problem to even move them. Even with the logistics relying heavily upon Master's magic bag, it was reckless for 10,000 soldiers to march toward a mountain with almost the same altitude as MT Fuji. Even for a vassal territory, people in Bormister Knight territory feel overwhelmed by the superior forces of other territories, and even more uneasy if there were lots of soldiers around. It still sounded like a half-baked plan to just use 2,000 people. Wendlin. I'm glad that Noble Sama was wise enough to just send a hundred people to help besides. The true purpose of Brithhilda Margrave's intent for Demon Forest was simple. Klaus. The late Brithhilda Margrave had two sons the eldest son Daniel and second son Amadeus. Furthermore, the late Brithhilda Margrave doted on the eldest son Daniel the most because he would become the successor to the Brithhilda household, but Daniel ended up being slowly wasted by an incurable disease. Klaus, Brithhilda Margrave had done what he could to help his dying son, 
However his son's time was approaching closer and closer. A slight hope at best, according to legend a powerful elixir can be made from ancient dragon blood, which just might restore Daniel. The late Brith Hilda Margave thought that an ancient dragon might possibly be living in Demon Forest. Klaus, none were known to exist at the other monster territories that adventurers have previously entered, thus the expectation that it was in the Demon Forest which had not yet been fully explored sounds reckless. They ought to have asked for adventurers to help. Wendlin, with all due respect, they won't be able to. Klaus, to start with, any adventurer would have a hard time during the long journey to Bormister Knight Territory, a journey which traverses hundreds of kilometers through rough terrain after going that far they would just finally reach Demon Forest, but they would then be too exhausted to defeat the dragon. I'd hate such a request even with all the gold in the world to compensate me. The end result is history the army of the late Brithhilda Margrave was annihilated with only a hundred people returned safely from the Brithhilda army similarly. Our Bormister Knight Territory troops only had 23 that survived the ordeal. Klaus, having lost the family head, the sickly, eldest son Daniel immediately died after hearing the news about his further the second son, Amidus, then became the head of Brithhilda household. Not much was expected from him as the new heir to Brithhilda Margrave family to begin with. Only a twentieth of the military force remained from the Demon Forest incident and a powerful mage was lost as well. That must have felt like a punishment game to Amadeus. The great noble's military campaign failure added more royal to the disputes by other, opposing nobles. It is not hard to imagine that the current Brithhilda Margrave has several issues that may still be causing trouble. That may be the reason that the current Brithhilda Margrave is paying a lot more Salatium to Bormister Knight territory in recompense for the soldiers that were killed in battle, although it's too bad Noble's armor has spent most of that Salatium already. Klaus, it was a revelation I didn't want to hear from the man who dealt with Bormister House's financial affairs Salatium alone could not make the surviving family's life easier, but it would have added some comfort to their daily lives, even though further was begged by the previous Brithhilda Margrave to give troops to develop the Demon Forest. He made it look like he accepted the request unwillingly after all, a vassal can't refuse the request of a lord. I don't think the situation will get any better, this kind of thing is likely to take a turn for the worse. Rebuilding the lost army and planning new ways to cultivate the land is too burdensome to noble Sama, especially if the population increases that would result in noble Sama having to make new plans with regards to how to use the land simply put, noble Sama is in need of the funds. Klaus. Gold and resources were not the only things lost in the Demon Forest incident, but valuable workers were also lost as well since the workers were lost, he now has to forcibly select workers for clearing new land and constructing irrigation canals. There is also need for manpower to work the fields and people to hunt, but he doesn't have the necessary funds to do everything. The farm village in the rural area is not in the best condition but resilient that said, the villagers are on the brink of exploding which is not something we can let happen. Klaus. Not done yet, Klaus continues his explanation. Please think carefully as to why the people feel dissatisfied with Noble Sama not just for that, but also the other things we also discussed. Klaus. First is, eleven years ago, the families that lost their loved ones and promising young people and father already foolishly spent the Salatium given by the new Brithhilda Margrave. If he was loved for either of these things, the territory people might be masochists. Next is, members of the branch family, including the late head, and their retainers, had been killed in action amongst those sent Herman, the second son, succeed that household, but he may be looked at as a spy sent to strengthen the main branch's influence over the vassal branch plus, he is currently in a bad situation to be dealing with problems. Herman Dono can also feel the upcoming crisis since he was cut from the head house by being adopted into the wife's family. He is now in the position of being able to express his influence against the head house. Klaus. Hey now. Wendlin. The current Bormister Knight Territory house seems to be in a dangerous situation though I didn't really care since I will be leaving the house soon. And this is the most serious. Klaus. The new cultivation plan has finally been completed but will need to be planned again if the population grows. But cultivation works that Noble Sama and Young Master Command have a bad reputation. Klaus. It is not that the workers get whip or anything after all, 
Further works voluntarily spearheading it and taking the same meals like everyone else. Father's body is strong so he can do the excessive work, but also he has a bad habit of unconsciously forcing others to do the same work when they feel exhausted. Moreover, he doesn't know how to command or construct efficiently. He also lacks the ability to lead as a commander. The territory people who are participating in the works seem to be getting depressed from working under him. Kurt Sama also has the same bad reputation for not saying anything to noble Sama. Klaus. He is the second in comment, yet he does not warn the noble Sama for his unreasonable actions and just does the same work as the ordinary workers. Being hated by the other workers is obvious for ignoring their plight. If the population ever increases and he continues that unpleasant reclamation work, then that would result in the territory's people further resentment. Klaus. There is also the fact that the workers dislike the bad meal they are given during cultivation dissatisfaction is such that the population in the village is no longer increasing. The boys from other families have started to leave the territory. Klaus. There are also many that leave their home with the merchant group that comes every few months from the closest city. Britburg. Plus those that leave tend to arrive in Britburg to look for a job or apply for recruitment in the new settlements that other lords are managing. Even the girls are recently leaving as well. Klaus. The only ones staying behind in the families in Bormister Knight territories are the eldest sons who can succeed the field and the girls who can become brides to them otherwise the others will leave the Bormister Knight territory. The worst outcome of depopulation would be when the eldest son of a family can't find a bride in Bormister Knight territory there is nothing that stops the population from decreasing currently. The worst thing is when Lin Sama's magic might get exposed. Klaus. It's my precious magic. It would be nice if I could live in this Bormister territory to develop it and for further to keep the current line of inheritance sadly, I know that wouldn't happen which is why I avoid contact with other territories people for fear of my magic being found out. But if I really wanted to develop the territory, I could work for the territory when the heir changed to me. Making that type of ruthless decision, such as becoming the next heir, is the mission of a so-called noble, right? The people of the territory already know that when Lin Sama can use magic listen, noble Sama is indeed treated as a noble in this farm village. But I believe you can succeed the house without any dissension from the others since they won't care about it. Klaus. It might be severe when thought about but humans are creatures who suffer from greed. Excessive greed is certainly not good, an appropriate desire is better. And that desire used to also improve their own lives a little more is essential to humans. It is important to at least feed all the territory's people. But Noble Sama stopped there he didn't think about doing anything more than that a ruler needs to do more than just feed his people he also needs to think about the future that lies ahead for them. Klaus. Klaus spoke up here and sighed. The population of Bormister Knight territory has already come to a standstill if this downward trend continues as he said, there would be endless problems to solve. I can understand your feelings, Klaus. But do you want me to declare here that I would become the next family head? An unnecessary uproar for succession will only increase the people's unrest. Wendlin. No matter how I think about it, there will be no one supporting me as the family head. It's futile when father does not make me the legitimate successor, and when the capital city hears about the successor conflict they may decide to intervene to confiscate the territory or reduce its size. Solely making a fuss is pointless it is much better if we ignore this conversation and did not make a fuss about it you should persuade furthermore to increase new immigrants as we can only push forward for efficient development. Wendlin. But with Wendlin Sama's magic. Klaus. If I did decide to use magic, what would you do when I die? Dot. Wendlin. That is. Klaus. I hear that talent such as magic is not genetic. If it was genetic, of course the royal family and noble families would be full of mages. Since it is not genetic, the royal family and nobles spend quite a bit of their fortune to secure an excellent mage into their ranks. Back to topic at hand. When did I decide to make use of my magic to enrich Bormister Knight territory? How would they preserve it if I were to die? Perhaps a dreadful decline will happen even worse than gradual depopulation that currently awaits the Bormister Knight territory. There must be those who will disagree if I am forced to become the head of the family. Wendlin. Klaus seems to hold dissatisfaction to father, but people in the territory do not hold that much dissatisfaction for both father and brother. Even if I take the position as the current family head, 
there would be no point when they feel antipathy to me, so I'll pretend that I never heard this discussion. Wendlin, when I leave that word at the end, I run hastily to the depths of the forest and disappear at once with teleport magic. Klaus was watching dumbfounded. Did he expect an eleven-year-old to agree to this? I understand Klaus's feelings but the order is wrong. There is someone else he would have to talk to before convincing me he would need to convince father first, so talking to me is useless. But this does look bad. It was unclear whether Further and Kurt Nissan even knows about Klaus's real intention. At worst, the suspicion of rebellion might wind up on me it would become troublesome in many ways if that happens. I might not be able to leave the house even after giving up the inheritance rights there is also the possibility of me becoming a nuisance to society as the person who is disturbing the inheritance order of my parents house. Such a nasty rumor will make my life difficult to carry on in a normal manner. But I am hesitant to consult father about this. What if it was used by father to dispose of me? The solution was getting more complicated the further I thought about it. Duh. Thinking about it is useless. I'll just ignore Klaus. Dot. Wendlin. At my destination, in the prairie of undeveloped land, I let loose a large-scale explosion magic in full force and created a big hole. TSK the environment gets destroyed due to me reducing stress. Wendlin. Though I was reflecting after becoming a bit calmer. I have no words to say when later on this large hole is used as an artificial lake by people later on in the future only heaven knows how it was formed. Dot. Ed, I see that last part as him not admitting to making it when he finds people using it in the future. Chapter 21, Adventurer Prep School Adventurer Prep School entrance ceremony will begin now. Instructor, one year after the ridiculous demand of the village, Hedman Klaus, who also the mistress father of my father who want me to become the next family head of Bormister House, finally turned 12 years old, I've left my parents' family to enroll into adventure at prep school that exists in Britburg, if I thought about this one year. I end up devoting myself to dodge the solicitation from Klaus that happen one after another. I had the feeling that if anything happen, I can convince further along with the other supporters when pressed for decision. I am unhappy that why I must inherit a territory in such a remote place. And I cannot manage the territory since I am just an employees of a second-rate trading company in my previous life. The duty of a noble or act in a fashion that conforms to nobility which I don't have. It will be great if in that territory I can work to earn a living with some freedom, and can privately make full use of my magic for adventuring. I'm dreaming to become adventurer in the future just for convenience sake, but that does not mean I don't want to do our freelance careers by using magic as a living. Moves easily to the savage land and the sea with teleport, I can make a fortune with magic. The results of what I have done in this five years, I can keep on living as a neat for hundreds years if I want to. That's right. I am already free. I had considered to never return again to my parents' house father, mother and also brother seems to agree with my idea. Despite being a poor the territory, when I contribute for territory people with magic, it would lead to new family feud. I have been asked but how stupid of my father for not noticed it. That said, there is the possibility that it can harm me later if I report it unwisely that's why I didn't talk about Klaus's movement at all. Had Klaus let out such scheme to father so easily? I would not be in this world long ago. Father and brother had thought vaguely that there's something odd but they didn't want to talk about it with me either maybe it just my imagination that they didn't notice anything. Now then, let's end this troublesome talk about my house. Now is the entrance ceremony of the adventurer prep school. The elderly man who gives a long speech on the platform is supposedly the guildmaster. Apparently a school is the same things anywhere. This is a prep school to brought up adventurers so there is no falling student. Everyone sitting in a chair listening to the story. Every one of you able to participate in Monstraria when become 15 years old but preferably the talented one. Instructor. The purpose of this prep school is by royal family's law. One must be at least 15 years old to enter Adventurer Guild to make up for the disadvantage. In other words, it intended to avoid inefficiently sends off a 15 years old amateur as adventurer all of sudden into monster area. Since an amateur will certainly die when suddenly sent to such place, any person must do basic training under guild management at the very least for three months. One of ten people still dead or injured in their first mission, 
which normal in adventurer's world. It is a heavy story but it was a popular job that can make a fortune which can take human live in many circumstances. And the entire continent is in the progress of growing in development and population. Naturally, the demand for material that can be collected in monster area is in raising, a newcomer adventurer who can collect it it is always welcomed. So adventurer prep school is to train people from age 12 until age 15. There also a school for those above 15 age to train their basic at worst for one year. For the entrance exam, everybody basically can enter the school. When tested, the high achievers will be given preferential treatment such as school expenses, and to be under contract with Adventurer Guild branch in Britburg after graduation. This is the major reason even Adventurer Guild also desperately securing an excellent adventurer. I leave house one month before entrance ceremony and immediately take the entrance exam. The test consists of basic geography, history, biology, monstrology and customs for each country, a must basic knowledge for adventurers. Afterwards, a mock match with instructor using weapon they good at and there also magic trial for mage. To be honest, I just do the basic training of sword and bow, but nonetheless it was a training that come from our noble ancestry. I took the test and received a fairly high rating. I'm better in bow but about magic, I decide to take it easy as I see fit. My magic capacity is at the highest point because of master who is the mage retainer of Brithhilda Margrave. Luckily, no mage with sharp perception like master here, they were engrossed in speaks very highly of me when I fired off a fireball as big as dodgeball burning the target that they didn't realize I am suppressing my magic. It can become the proof to what master said with an excellent mage is sensitive to the existence of other excellent mages. An excellent mage is a really valuable existence. So they would not appear in exam hall even if one's to pass the prep school using magic. Beside. Despite excellent mages sensitive to the existence of other excellent mage, not that they can actually perceive magic power. It's like intuition based ability. Magical power from person's body would not spring up like hot spring no matter how big one's magic capacity it is usually saved in magic bag in the body of another dimension, the magic circuit just circle around afterwards. Even when large scale magic were to be invoked. The magical power that already being used will not remain as it materialize into magic. This is the reason why mage can't easily perceive others magic capacities. With some exception, commoner at best only have a small amount of magic power, all they can do is put out a spark so the difference is clear. Intermediate class mage is valuable you pass the test as scholarship student. Instructor It appears that if ones can use magic up to intermediate level, ones would be freed from school expenses without concern the previous writing test and skill in weapon. That enough to show how valuable the existence of mage. It must be nice to be able to use magic. I can use magic but I can't get the scholarship since it just beginners class. While such an envious voice rises from other examinees, I pass the scholarship student test without problem. Enrolled into adventurer prep school was achieved. I am Wendlin von Benno Bormister as shown in my name. I am the eighth son of the nearby Bormister house but I can't inherit the territory so I enrolled into the school aim as adventurer it's nice to meet you all. Wendlin. Although the classification will be announced after the entrance ceremony, apparently, all the scholarship student were incorporated into the same class. The ages were approximately the same age with me with the higher will be about 18 years old. Person with excellent sword skills, good at bow, good at spear or person who can use magic in spite of being beginner's class. And finally, I ended the self-introduction with I could use intermediate magic, the curriculum table being passed by homeroom teachers guild staff, with lessons in classroom is 30%, practical training about 70%. Moreover, since learned only the technique to become adventurer, the lesson throughout the morning is a must. In addition, it easier with two days off during the week. All of you were not allowed to go into monster area until 15 years old those over 15 years old also not allowed for one year with the classes being few, it is also for you guys to earn money from part time job. Instructor Indeed, even if school expense were exempt for scholarship student, not that everyone will attend from home to school, rather, there are many people who left their hometown into Britburg. Naturally, they must turn their own money in renting. You come to think of it, we had to what kind of part-time job I should do. By the way, does Bormister got any allowance from parents' family? Dot.
boy. The boy of the same age I befriended next to my seat at the entrance ceremony asked me about my allowance. It is uncommon but when parents' family is a wealthy merchant or a great noble, the sum that given allowance as apology for not being able to take the inheritance, as the eighth son of Knight Peerage family, I've decided not to dream of it for years. Wendlin. You're right I am also in the same position but, boy, my heights have grown to at last 160 centimeters after turn 12 years old this year. He is about 10 centimeters taller and with a sharp look with short browns hair in crew cut style, a son of a small lord in the west just like me. He introduced himself as Erwin von Arnim. His parents' family is a knight peerage family that has a village about 500 population, their financial condition is much the same. Erwin is the fifth son in that house. Since it is a matter of course he can't take over the house. He told me his plan of using his talent in sword enough to pass the scholarship exam to live as adventurer. I got allowance from my parents' family once, I save up money until now by selling the catch obtained by hunting. Wendlin. I honestly can live without doing that but I can't tell that to others. I also got it but it just small sum all my results in hunting were taken by parents I ought to find a part time job soon. Owen. I can store the material for selling in magic bag. Wendlin. That must be nice being a mage hey. Do you want to look for a part time job with me? Dot. Owen. The part time job consist of being a babysitter. Say less clerk of the shop or cleaning the city. Other than the prohibited monster area which the job of adventurer guild to carry out, the low level job issued by guild is the important one. There was a risk of being attacked by wild beast but it was being hunted for its meat and fare as the town supply. This is recommended by adventurer guild to help improve combat techniques. Bormister is. Owen. My name is Wendlin, just call me Vil my family also call me that. Wendlin. I see. Call me you then the younger child name always get called so short right, Vil. Owen. You're right take care of me you. Wendlin. Same here Vil. Owen. I enrolled to adventure at prep school without any problem, and get friend in the same age for the first time. Chapter 22. First friends, a flag. Let me explain the course of events briefly. I was an employees of second class trading company in Japan for unknown reason become the eighth son of poor noble in the west of another world. I had talent in magic so I train in it, work hard at study with no one notice, I go hunting as to improve my eating habit. My magic gradually improved, and from master that had died become the talking dead which is an undead monster for the purpose of tell me his magic, I learned magic from master who is originally a human and major retainer of great noble. I inherited all his magic and his legacy. In order to prevent unnecessary succession fight from happening, I don't mind being called as useless son who not even helping his family, I succeed in obtaining my freedom. First of all, exploring the savage land that boasts a tremendous breadth, I do it with flight and teleport magic I had learned before, I have secured materials and assets that can last me for many years to come. Incidentally, it was hard to learn brewing magic for miso and soy sauces. Actually, it is a secret why this magic I am struggled most. One of the village headmans in the territory want to make me the next lord. The territory is really small but it could brought social upheaval like in history drama. Of course, it would be a pain in the ass so I refuse him politely. Since I may be invited in social upheaval when I'm at home, I entered adventure at prep school of another town by the age 12. Up to this point. Time has flown about six years and several months. Since I do many things in my own way, I feel like the time flies too fast. The season now is early in April. I didn't feel odd about it since it exactly the same as my previous life. The calendar in this world more or less the same with Japan. Twelve months in one year, the difference only that every one month is 31 a days which 372 days would be one year. Length, is in milli, centimeter, meter kilometer, weight, in grams, kilograms and tons, time, also in seconds, minutes and hours, day of the week, is from Monday to Sunday, Sunday basically has become a day off, it said that the god believer go to the church on this day, the god they believed in, the god who created this world, giving a name other than god in itself is outrageous, a one god belief, it seems no other gods exist at least in this Lingaya continent, depending on the region, 
there is a subtle differences in doctrine as it's associated with local primitive religion, there actually some sect that had long history is in bad term with each other, it was a story that can be heard anywhere. And when it comes to countryside in rural area like mine, instead of having no idea about rest day, farm work every day with going hunting and gathering in their spare time, this is their idea in take a day off. They have many holiday when it was leisure season for farmers but our village had a lot of work in cultivation and flood control work earning it a bad rumor. Although the talk become longer, I entered adventure at prep school in Britburg without a problem, and also made friends, immediately after classes began. In the afternoon a few days later, I decided to start a part-time job because I have began to get used to prep school. I don't need to do such thing but I don't want others to know about my assets situation too much, and anyway, I won't go into monster area until I am 15 years old. I decided to do hunting that served as a part-time job to hone my skill in battle. Together with Owen von Arnimoriu who is the first friend in the same age I made in this world. Sai we finally arrived. Owen. Not like we have any choice the nearby hunting place already taken by others. Wendlin. Iru and me had arrived at the grassland that the office in prep school had told us the distance about one hour on foot. Britburg was a big town that boasts a population over 200,000s but it need enormous food because of that. There are a lot of grain and vegetables from farm village in the vicinity. For fish, unfortunately since it away by 100 kilometers from the sea. It mainly river fish preserved with salt or as dried fish. Though the salt slightly higher, it seems to be more cheaper than other cities of inland because it was brought in large quantities. Sugar also can be obtained a little cheaper since it was the south speciality. And about meat, the amount hardly enough as the stock were carried out from the area of farm village. Cultivation of farmland constantly being carried out to raise grain production, but in proportion of population that had increased production of meat that could be used cannot caught up with the amount of grain. Therefore, adventurers' existence become important. Speaking about adventurers who hunt monster by entering the region inhabited by monsters, some of them only wanted to get the precious material or meat, which means not all them strong enough to hunt monster. Many of them went to secure meat for people to eat in remote place like this. They're also professional hunter for a countryside in rural area, farmers hunting in their spare time. The village sometimes goes out hunting together to get the necessary meat. It was a common knowledge for hunter in urban area to join Adventurer Guild to do hunting. Adventurer's Guild also served as Hunter Guild. So rather than a part-time job for the student in Adventurer Prep School, this hunting can be said as an important job to some people who could determine their prospects. Wild animals not as strong as monster but adventurers still die every so often being attacked by bear or wolf. It's still dangerous when one is careless. One must not unprepared when hunting. Everybody hastily went to the nearby hunting ground. Owen. Probably because there is a danger in far place. Wendlin. Dangerous animals such as wolves were often in a seclude place like this. And we just a student now so we need to think about tomorrow's class. Most of the part-time job is for hunting ground that were close to the town. But you know isn't the competition is too intense? Dot. Owen. Currently, a lot of guys who can't hunt also goes out. Wendlin. The hunting ground close to the town, naturally the prey frequently hunted so it's small in number. Since a professional adventurer's also in there, many student that still lacking in experience could not get any results. This is the so-called baptism to the rookie. Those who could not get any result in hunting give up and change their part-time job as salesperson or luggage carrier. There would be fewer adventures with this much distant right. V. Dot. Owen. Okay now be quiet. Wendlin. When I said be quiet to you, I investigate the area by invoking magic detection continuously. Detection magic? That's convenient to use. Owen. It's a convenient magic for hunting got it. Wendlin. When I moved to the reaction that pointing at two people, I encountered a scene of large wild boar digging root of tree on the ground. It must be looking for yam. So big. Owen. Yeah. Wendlin. It would a waste only staring and make more noise. So I and Iru decide to knock our arrow to the bow aiming at it. Iru gained the scholarship in prep school with his sword technique. But due to him hunting since he was small, he was adept in handling bow. His skill should be better than me who corrected the orbit with magic. He had hunt by risking his life to sold the prey for several years, 
he got some part of it for travel expenses or living costs in Britburg. I'll give a boost on the arrow. Wendlin. Okay. Owen. Iru and I shoot the arrow at the same time. Then two arrows were deeply pierced the ass and back of the wild boar. This boost things is handy. Owen. The arrow was reinforced with a boost of wind magic, increases the flying distance, rising the penetration power to pierces deeply into prey. A big animals would be in a critical condition with just one blow when it stuck nicely in the vital point. It didn't give much damage this time since the prey had stuck its head into a hole. Will it get surprised and escapes? Dot. Owen. Too bad, it get mad. Wendlin. I am not that sure as I never go hunting in my previous life. But the many ferocious wild animals live in this world. I believe it was a common sense for it to run away when received an arrow, but it run amok for some reason, it tried to get revenge on us who harmed it. The wild boar despite the damage, counterattack by rushing to inflict serious injury, adventurer can die at worst, some people have become victim in the past year from prep school instructor's story. It come rushing to us. Owen. That's rather convenient though. Wendlin. Iru and me shoot the next arrow without panicking. The arrow also enhanced with a boost, both of it pierces the wild boar's head that rushes to us. The wild boar no longer moving toppling down while making a tremendous sound. Is it dead? Dot. Owen. Iru carefully approached the wild boar. He checked if it already dead by stabbing it with sword. Lucky but will also good at bow. Owen. That the result from practice. Wendlin. It was complicated to aim at first so I tampered the trajectory mostly by magic, but my aim as of late is more accuracy. But my skill still inferior to Aru as his arrow was stuck in the middle of Wild Boar's head. It is easy since Vul can use magic please store it. Owen. Got it. Wendlin. I keep the Wild Boar that had die in magic bag right away. When keeping it in magic bag. The meat quality does not get worse since the state would be just like at the time it's stored. It is more efficient to deal with the catch after it had gathered up later so I just store it in the bag. Even so, the bag I had put the catch now is something I just made. It's something I create as practice in making magic tool, but I also have considered in always using magic bag as the corpse of wild boar drips blood. I am glad I make it beforehand. This new bag can only be used by mage because I can't still make the general purpose item for commoner. And I made it simple so the weakness is the carrying capacity only about one house. It was practically convenience as a bag for the catch. There are plenty of small prey scattered within one kilometers. Wendlin. Oh, a jackpot let's compete who can hunt more. Owen. Loser gonna treat dinner. Wendlin. Agree. Owen. I and Iru split into two group begin to chase our own prey. We joined after two hours, I announced my result at once. I got six rabbit. Wendlin. That's amazing. Owen. Thankfully I narrow it down to just rabbit. Wendlin. Iru really good at bow after all. I got two rabbit and three guinea fowl okay, my lose. Owen. I win in number but you're really good for hunting guinea fowl that much. Wendlin. No matter how good one in archery. Guinea fowl is sensitive to person's sign so there many case it runs away before it enter the bowshot range. This is the reason why Hunter said it troublesome. I could catch it quite easily because I can change the range and trajectory with magic. I just win in number so it's a you win what do you want to eat? Dot. Wendlin. I'll decide it after we return to town what's wrong? Dot. Owen. 500 meters in the east close to the town there a reaction of two humans with 12 wolves. Wendlin. Isn't that bad? Dot. Owen. Yeah. Wendlin. The situation was a pack of wolves that came to hunt have surrounded the two people. The wolf that forms a group pose a threat to human in solo or group. In fact, a lot of people die being attacked by wolf every year. Want to save them? Dot. Owen. It's in our way back. I'd feel guilty if they die. Wendlin. But will we be on time? Dot. Owen. No other way it's an emergency. Wendlin. I quickly chant magic for strengthening body and speed up. I went to the scene with frightening speed carrying a H. Hey, at least explain to me what kind of magic did you use? Dot. Owen. We don't have much time let's go. Wendlin. I went to the distance of 500 meters in just 10 seconds while carrying a -ru. I confirm the scene without paying any attention to a -ru complaints. In there. Two students of the same prep school as us were surrounded by wolves, one with spear, 
and the other is quite unusual as both hands equipped with glove which look like Kempo. In this western fantasy world, Kempo is actually widespread as a popular martial art it referred as foundation of battlefield martial art developed to fight barehanded when one lost weapon on the battlefield, many schools had been built for this, but it mostly had declined now. One could not compete with a ferocious wild animal or monster just barehanded after all some schools specified it as mandatory training menu for guard who maintain the security in urban areas. So it still remain. Next is magic combat style that widespread among adventurers were the most famous in the world. Magic combat style is literally a martial art fought by changing magic power into fighting spirit of course it can't be used when the magic power is not enough. It deemed as strong since it need magic power at least between beginners class or intermediate. It just the family member that set up the school can't be guaranteed would be born with magic so the purpose of such family member is to teach the training style or the technique style. This has become a common practice in the society, and because of fighting using magic, other magic is not usable while using it. Magic power below intermediate, and only a few can learn the magic. It was recognized by society as a kind of magic learned by a subtle person. Nevertheless, since one can fight for a long time with less magic power when the efficiency and consumption of magic power goes up because of training, adventurer is in fact also a jobs for a lot of people to leave their name in history. Hey, don't they look familiar? Dot. Owen. It is. Wendlin. And what's more, this two people who are surrounded by wolves was our classmate whom in the same scholarship class in prep school. The one wielding a spear is the same age with us, a fiery red hair to waist length, it gathers up casually behind. A beautiful girl with slender figure, in a Suzanne Rembrandt. Her parents' family seems to run a dojo that teach spearmanship to soldiers in local area of Britburg. Her name had a noble touch in it but in fact her parents is not formally a noble. It was a retainer of Lord Brithhilda Margrave of Britburg that has been appointed as a teacher to teach the soldier the skill in spear. The formal noble is only family who are appointed by the kingdom so when compared with Brithhilda Margrave. It is a noble family of a petty knight like my parents' family. If a vassal or blood relative that had a high rank become a great noble, they would have much more incomes than my house, but they are just retainers so not exactly a noble. They would be treated as noble only in the territory of noble they served, they were treated as half noble. In recent years, there are more people such as commoner that didn't know much about the difference if one does not know about it. No one would be bothered so no problem whatsoever. And it was commonly tragicomedy for the child of retainer to be unable to take over the house. This in a Suzanne Rembrandt should have introduced herself as the third daughters. She would be married to someone, though it's usually not possible for the retainer third daughter to be married into the house of the same retainer, if that's the case, she can make her way up as adventurer. Actually, Women who become adventurer with these circumstances were quite many the a slim chance for woman to be in army even if she had the strength, so it was natural to aim as adventurer. The other also the same 12 years old like us but she like 10 years old with her petite body. Still, since she obtains a scholarship with magic combat style, she must be a pretty girl with considerable prowess. She had a poker face with shortcut light blue hair, she looked really pretty. Her name must be Lou Eyes Yoland or Lee Overweg. My memory for remembering this might be amazing that I thought. But there are many names for noble that uselessly long, and bothersome, myself included. Her parents' family also taught magic combat style to soldier in Britburg. I heard that her parentage is a vassal of Brithhilda Margrave. She also the third daughter like Inna. I remembered that her goal is to be a successful adventurer when she introduced herself. Admittedly, there are a significant proportion of such people who are mixed in the scholarship class of prep school. Of course, there are also many ordinary class. There are saying it also not an easy occupation even for noble. It was the proof that life is hard in this world. No matter how many child a noble have, even if everyone to be appointed as noble, and no matter how much a kingdom had a budget and territory, it will not suffice. So the offspring that leave it house falls into commoner. These days such cases had increases even for imperial family, it was a common knowledge that it's not necessarily peaceful despite being born in the royal families. If you ask why I had the time do some explanation, I actually had the time to do it. In that interval, the drop dew that I had carried continuously shots the arrow, it pierced the head of two wolves in quick succession robbed its life, 
and the remaining ten dogs all silenced with the elaborate of magic after a long time. Start by isolate the two women from the wolves with earth wall magic, then the wolves had been killed at once by barrage of non-attribute magic arrow. My effort is meaningless. I mean, well, you don't need the bow if you have that magic. Dot. Owen. Of course I need it I can save magic power using bow and arrow. Wendlin. When I get rid the earth wall that had surrounded the two women while answering Aru, there was the figure of two people who did not break their look of surprise. Ahem, are you guys okay? Dot. Wendlin. We are okay but you are definitely Wendlin of the same class with us, right? The eighth son of the nearby boar Mr. House. In ah, can I really be friends with the two beautiful girls of the same class that I helped by chance? Rather, it was me who feel like spoke with women of the same age for the first time in six years. Chapter 23, Uninvited Member Thanks for helping us. In ah, thank you Vulcan. Lu eyes. Excuse me I also helped though. Owen. My bad. Owen can also really amazing but. Lu eyes. Magic is seriously a foul play. Owen. In afternoon after school, I went out for part-time job with my classmate Ryu. We were going to return to the town with an overjoyed face for considerable result. Then, by coincidence, we saved our classmates in and Lu eyes who had been attacked by a pack of wolves. Although the pack of wolves had been wiped out with Ryu bow and my magic, both of them would still be surprised if a mere 12 years old brat annihilates a pack of wolves. After collecting the wolf fur as it can be sold, the four of us decided to have a chat along with dinner. But are you guys okay with the wolf fur? Dot. Wendlin. About that? It's fine, think of it as thanks for helping us. In ah, that also can't be said as thanks more than half were defeated by Ryukan and Vulcan. Lu eyes. To be honest, when we rushed the their already eighth wolves die in the scene the two of them still had defeated eighth wolves on their own. But because of limitation in stamina, they were in a state of defensive fight without being able to defeat it further. I believe the fur of eight wolves they had defeated should be theirs but it given to us as a thanks for helping them. When I look at the side, Iru had a really joyful face he must be happy our income have increases. Besides I don't want them to feel indebted to us so I thought here that I should get it obediently. On the other hand, I remember that I should give Iru a treat in dinner since I lose to him in hunting competition after all. I also decided to treat the other two to a dinner while I am at it. After putting the catch we hunted earlier at the purchase location that had been designated by the prep school side which Adventurer Guild also manages, we moved to the restaurant near the prep school. In the past, I had sold the catch in the bazaar with Merchant Guild card by pretending to be a peasant who live near Britburg. It was easy now because I only took it to the appointed purchase location. Because of my habit before, I had thought that I must dismantle it but since there is a professional for dismantling the catch within the purchase location, I was given a warning by prep school saying that an amateur must not dismantle it. The value would be reduced when it was done by an amateur but when I sold it in bazaar, I had been praised by my customer and commercial guild staff that I am good at dismantling. However, the dismantling was done by magic, and at the reception desk of the purchase location, I met someone I know in the staff of commercial guild. I thought it would be bad if my name being heard because the receptionist called me, but it seems the other side didn't care. I was told by a relator that it was not unusual for a noble kid in countryside working hard at a side job pretending to be a farmer kid. He was like that too. It would become a serious thing when it was found that the false name for crime purpose, but they were relieved instead when a noble kid used false name for part-time job since their identity are trustworthy. What's more, the expert guild staff could tell the difference between farmer kid and noble kid they can be called as pro in such things certainly, that commercial guild staff didn't come to talk to me. The person with tag 7. Guild staff, here. Wendlin. After everything else done. 3 silver coin for 1 wild boar, furs, 4 silver coin for 8 rabbits and 3 silver for 3 guinea fowls. The wolf meat can't be eaten but the fur unexpectedly much in demand, which 6 silver coin for 20 wolf furs. Today's total is 16 silver coin so one person got 8 silver coin, or about 80,000 in yen. Despite the unthinkable amount for a part-time job, this is because we went all the way to the distant hunting grounds. Those hunting near the town. About half of it usually is boys which is normal. There is more danger hunting in distance place with no one nearby. Today's the result of this 2 Oju Sama A action. The rumor was true after all. In a rumor. Dot. 
Wendlin. Yes, about Bore Mr. House's eighth son can use a pretty powerful magic. In our, we arrived at Student Purveyor Restaurant near Prep School. We take a seat at a table. I order today's recommended dinner for four servings. One serving is one copper plate. A bit expensive but it had a lot more meat in the thick stew, fried river fish and fresh salad, with two white, soft bread. The drink is tea or coffee with apple pie as the dessert. The price worth the amount. I feel bad for having you treat us expensive menu. In a, ir you win the bet you see. Wendlin. Sorry for giving us a treat. Lou eyes. Since we earn a lot today. Owen. We felt hungry so we decide to finish the warm meal in the presence first. We'll have a talk while enjoying tea and coffee after meal, and eat even the dessert later. But that was a bad luck. Lou eyes. Well it must be takes time hunting the large boar. Owen. To air you comfort, the pretty Lou eyes with her childish appearance and blue light hair explained why they ended up surrounded with many wolf. Just like us. They luckily found a large boar at the start of hunting in a location away from the town, it'd take time to deal with it, meanwhile, the smell of blood invited the pack of wolves, not only that but the eighth wolf they defeated before is the first pack and the twenty wolf was the second pack, despite being a scholarship student, they are still twelve thirteen years old girls battle with two pack of wolves seems to be too much for them, and honestly, it was our first time hunting, in our, according to in our story, the two of them only training in the dojo every day so they had no experience in hunting which made them allocated their stamina incorrectly. Yugi's never go hunting before? Dot. Wendlin. It's hardly surprising, Vil. Owen. Really? Dot. Wendlin. Yeah nobles and even retainers that live in the town is like that. Owen. As for me and Iru, since our parents' family is in rural area, we must do hunting despite being a noble. There is less hunter given that farming is priority, as adventurer mostly does not come, there some that train their martial art and some considered it as a hobby. On the other hand, nobles and soldiers in town can work as hunter or adventurer, martial art training has its own formal menu. And there are also countless hobby and entertainment besides hunting. Fighting a single wolf would not be a hard fight for someone trained, however. Wendlin. The scary thing about wolf attacking in a group, despite knock down several of them and inflict a wound, they would be injured sooner or later, many lives stolen after losing their strength. Besides your bearing composition is wrong. Owen. In a with spear and Lu eyes with magic combat style. Since both of them are vanguard types. Iru advised that at least one person should keep ready with bow. In that aspect, I can use bow and sword with Vulcan use bow and magic a well-balanced party. Owen, I think it has nothing to do with balance. In ah, why is that, Rembrandt? Owen, in is fine listen, I know your skill in sword is good, and your skilled in bow too but Wendlin's magic is in entirely different matter. The result will be the same if Wendlin were paired with others, right? Dot. In a, makes sense I get what in a want to say Vulcan magic is already a top-notch adventurer's level. Lu eyes. Lu eyes also agree with in a speech. Otherwise, he would not be able to kill ten wolf with just magic arrow not just his capacity in magical power, his magic accuracy already in expert level. In a, just like in a said, I have plenty confident in my magic precision. This six years is not for nothing. That does not mean I kept doing intensive training in magic while I leave the house. Right, I just put all my effort in magic training and eating alone. By no means I didn't do other things. And I also had master I was indebted to while just in short time. He is a great existence for me by his teaching. I was able to training in magic efficiently. I won't say it is unfair but Erwin partner is too overwhelming. In ah, I can't help it I was lucky in that part tilde. Owen, normally, it often sound arrogant when one talk in such a way, but Iru had a strange charm with enviable personality that does not make any enemy. And what Iru said is a fact by a coincidence, we become friend after meeting accidentally in the entrance ceremony. Interestingly, Iru was an expert at swordplay at that point his prowess in bow also not to be underestimated I never thought about him as a burden. What Owen said is true. In ah, you're right this is also fate it's like one fate was bound with others tilde. Lu eyes, Lu eyes and me as vanguards, and depending on the situation Erwin can use sword as vanguard and bow as rearguard and Wendlin as rearguard with his bow and magic a well-balanced party isn't it? Dot. In ah, somehow, 
a party is formed without permission. Wendlin, girls is a creature, with their cuteness and weakness both combined become powerful combination I am somewhat have experienced it in my previous life but it seems I have taken it too lightly. The next day, when we enter prep school classroom, we were called by teachers staff guild at once. For Mr. Unum we have received the party application from Rembrandt and Overweg. Instructor, pardon? Dot. Wendlin. If I am not mistaken, we were given the explanation about party formation at the entrance ceremony. The trick for adventurer to survive is with their own ability or finding a companion. With all the trouble for attending prep school, in this stage, one should create a party together with their close companion in studies or training. Thus party application exists for that. If one were applied to this, the applied member were given priority at a party training to be held later. Even prep school side expect that one would feel safe when one know about other members movement from hunting as part time job. That's a well balanced party we'll expecting you guys in the future. Owen. Those girls. Wendlin. Is this the so called raised a flag like those in light novel? I don't think they had any bad intent, it would be insipid to act only with a guy like Aru or alone all the time, for the time being, I suppose I'd wait to see what happens. Chapter 24 Margrave Brithhilda hosting a garden party. Wow, it was a big catch today. Owen, oh, we were able to hunt one big bear. In our right it stopped a Yukun's blow splendidly. Blue eyes. I have calculated it but it didn't damage the bear's gallbladder properly. Wendlin. Before we realized it, the two pretty girl we had helped from pack of wolves entered our party. Rather I become the new party leader without knowing it. I have thought that even I don't have any experienced being class president in my previous life, but when I actually do it, the conclusion is, it surprisingly didn't have that much work. After school, the four of us moving toward a distant hunting ground with a little competition, and I'll find the prey using detection. Hunting something easy is for the qualified members to make an effort while fighting with four people by taking advantage the party characteristic if it was something big. At first, I feel a bit anxious about teaming up with both of them but it seems the many being unlucky with the pack of wolf. In our spearmanship was a skill that sometimes able to kill the charged wild boar by a single blow, with Lu Ai's special skill. In approaching opponent by erasing her presence, she able to catch easily the guinea fowl deemed difficult even for professional hunters. Since we operate by four people, there is no need to panic being attacked by a pack of wolves or several bears, it more efficient and the profit also quite good. Nowadays, it become natural for the four of us to go out hunting. Should we have a dinner at Leaf Bower? Dot. Wendlin. What would the recommendation menu today's be? Dot. Owen. When we try to eat dinner after selling all the catch in the purchase location, soon, the homeroom teacher that look familiar come running up to us from school building of the prep school can be seen. He is a mid-level staff of the guild, formerly an adventurer with considerable skill regrettably forced to retire because of injury, even now working vigorously and guiding the next generation at 37 years old this year, with a wife and two daughter. He might have a hard time feeding his family. Hey you guys. Seeked. Seeked sensei. Did you need something? Dot. Wendlin. Yeah. This were delivered through prep school. Seeked. The homeroom teacher was for envelopes. When I cut the seal of the envelope addressed to me, inside was a letter of introduction of garden party. A garden party. Dot. Wendlin. You must go there since it was hosted by Brithhilda Margrave Sama. Seeked. Got it. Wendlin. For some reason, we will be attending the garden party hosted by Brithhilda Margrave. But why I was invited to garden party. Dot. Wendlin. Perhaps because Vulcan parents' family is the vassal of Brithhilda Margrave House. Dot. Blue eyes. Three days later on the rest day, before noon, the four of us by dressing accordingly heading toward the meeting place where the garden party was held. Iru and me were in formal noble dress which has been hurriedly made. Incidentally, the price is two silver plate, it costs about 200,000 yen. I and Iru were half crying by the sudden spending. In and Lu eyes had a dress at their parents' house so they didn't need to hastily made it but they were weeping as well, being forced to waste money on accessories and shoes. Both of them saying, the new equipment purchase savings is and fainted in agony. Since they were born as pretty girl, I thought that they should be happy to be able to dress up. Which reminds me, you're right my parents' family was the Brithhilda Margrave vassal.
Wendlin, what do you mean? Dot. Lou eyes, since it was like it didn't relate to me at all. Wendlin, Brithilda Margrave had experienced a terrible accident because of it but they still the Lord, the relationship can't be cut so easily, should it be called as the sadness of small noble? However, when recalling the past, for some reason, father and brother never participated in a garden party or social gathering, or more precisely, they never leave the territory they need to cross the mountain to attend, which is something natural, but still, Brithilda Margrave Sama also, in my opinion, didn't want to give an unnecessary burden to Bormister House in attending an important garden party or social gathering. Lou eyes, perhaps, it just like what Lou eyes have guessed, but father and brother for missing the chance of making a connection, I wonder is that really okay as a noble connection and acquaintances is worth to make over a lifetime in my previous life, it was like those old men the company counselor in morning gathering. This time, since you'll stay in Britburg I guess you were treated as the representative. Owen, representative, huh? Wendlin, I can't declare myself in abandoning the succession right of Bormister House before comes of age, so I am still a noble. Are you also in similar circumstance as me, with in and Lou eyes is the vassal's daughters since those two entered the adventure at prep school with excellent results they would be claimed before it was too late. Noble is a creature who's scheming many things behind the scenes. To the last, it just my guess though. The party would be held in the garden of Brithilda Margrave Mansion which located in the heart of Britburg City. As expected of the Garden of Lords Mansion, hundreds of invited guests were eating, drinking and chatting leisurely. This garden party would be held once a year in Brithilda Margrave House, local and foreign noble with their families vassals with their families, merchant dealer, various skilled and church officials were invited, even the principal and some teachers of adventure at prep school, and scholarship student, noble or not had been invited as well. I can recognize some of them. For an occasion like this, I can be identified as noble. Owen, are you, have you participated in a party like this? Dot. Wendlin, yeah since our house have a lord that lord hold a party regularly. Owen, despite Iru as the fifth sons were in low priority, he still have gone out several times to a party like this. But it can't be compared with the party of Brithilda Margrave House, the head noble in the southern part. The foods and the wine was the extravagance. Since the lord of my house is a viscount, the content falls a little more. Owen, Iru while saying so, aggressively make a move to the dish. I can understand that feeling as it stole our happiness in making all that money recently. Spending lots of money for a dress to wear at the party by eating the meal desperately trying to regain at least as much as one copper in particular, it seems to be concentrated in the expensive meat. You're not going to eat, v dot. In a similarly, in an Lu eyes who is a girl, had more appetite than sex appeal. In their plate, the dish was centered on the meat had been piled in heaps. Of course I'll eat too I can't recover even part of this dress price by eating but. Wendlin. Despite our blunt speech and behavior, this is the reality of the child of small nobles and vassals. It was similar with the other prep school students, they can only enter into adventure at prep school, they are aware that they are not a noble anymore. If they can't realize that much, they can't live in reality. But, dot. In a, well. I have been thinking after coming to this Britburg. Wendlin, after leaving my birthplace Bormister House, with every meal is a hard brown bread, likely seasoned with salt just like those sick person food, eating soup that it make me feel lucky if there are many small pieces of meat, I was wondering what the heck was that, when I go hunting, it was added into the menu but still no change with that hard brown bread and thinly seasoned soup, only after I secretly come to Britburg, I had realized just how delicious the stew I ate in the restaurant from the money in selling the catch in the bazaar. I can't believe a Japanese person who obsessive in food like me had gotten accustomed to that thinly seasoned soup. R. So it's about Boar Mr. House. In a, does Ina know something? Dot. Wendlin, when I'm still a kid, I have heard about it from my father. Wendlin, to put it briefly. The financial of Bormister House have fallen into crisis from sending the troops. Since the territory is isolated, to sell speciality products to outside, many years have been entrusted to the caravan which in a fixed time coming over the mountain, 
there is no need to take it out by specially passing through the mountain. It must be hard and time-consuming to transport a pack of food to the mountain path without a magic bag. So with the demand is comparatively high, Brithhilda Margrave House have decided to voluntarily accepted the wheat without profit which lasted a long time. As someone would buy the wheat, further led the expansion in agricultural land to sell even a bit more wheat. I was being ignored completely because I am just a kid in the eyes of my father and brother. No wonder, while imagine there were such circumstances, I wish they would think about other speciality for being able to earn money at such time. And with father and the territory people are busy in producing wheat, they reduced the time to go hunting and gathering, resulting in hours meals significantly lacking. Despite bread as staple food is a little few. Bore Mr. Knight territory being blessed by nature a lot can obtain meat or obtain fruit, wild vegetables, river fish, wild yam, and also honey from gathering. It just that these goods can be produced normally in Brithilda Margrave territory beyond the mountain as it can't be used for export, otherwise it would motivate father. I can see why the village headman Klaus want me to become the family head I suppose he didn't think about his own greed. What's wrong Vel? Dot. In a, well. I can only imagine my parents' family future in decline. Wendlin. My condolences. Inna, despite Inna say it curtly, it might be harsh when I said it like this but neither she or I had any interest in the future of Bormister Knight territory. I as the eighth son to begin with, have no interest in inheriting the territory, and a story of nearby territory by all means was unrelated to Inna. If this succession in parents' house really happen. The Lord might have feel somewhat uneasy about the story of Vassal Governor Territory, and whether we were born when the expedition to Demon Forest happened, sacrifice appear from the parents' family of In and Lu eyes, they would likely to hold some estrangement. But she have also said that, I would not remember even if such thing were said. When I am still a baby, our family ties will be cut after three years, it didn't bother me. Wendlin. Well, I think you are a little naive. Wendlin von Benno bore Mr. Kun. Suddenly, I hear a voice of young man other than Inna, I turn myself in the direction of that voice. Stood there was a young man about first half of his thirties, who had grey pupil with elegant brown hair. Well, I guess he wouldn't mind being treated as young man despite his age. Erm, um, who would you be? Dot. Wendlin. Vul, you idiot. Dot. Inna. When I asked that young man name. Inna who is next to me in panic pulled my arm. That gentleman is? Dot. Wendlin. Ah, I hope it's not too late to introduce myself. My name is Amadeus Ftag von Brithilda. You must be the mage who was born from Bormister House. It is an honor to meet you. Amadeus. I can't believe the young man who come to greet me was the young family head of Brithilda Margrave House. Who is the lord of my Bormister House? Sorry for my rudeness. I humbly beg your pardon. Wendlin. I heard that Wendlin can never come to make an appearance in a place like this and you are not even the heir of Bormister House it was reasonable for you not knowing my face. Amadeus. But I feel it was unheard of for the child vassal not knowing the face of their own lord, but it seems Brithilda Margrave didn't really mind about it. However, it saved me some trouble when you enrolled into adventure at prep school the people of Bormister House were invited to gather like this is a pity so. Amadeus. They need to pass through mountain to attend the party and Bormister House's financial condition is currently in bad shape. What's more, since it was their own fault, father and others didn't come to the party as not to get criticized, but because father always refuse it, surrounding vassals seem to be criticizing it irresponsibly. Many people dissatisfied about it so you saved me some trouble for coming. Amadeus. I did not learn etiquette for this kind of thing either and I can escape from the etiquette of noble in dancing at the garden party, I didn't think about anything else other than eating a large amount of expensive foods, but apparently there is a significant meaning for people in Bormister House to attend. Noble is really a troublesome creatures. Because the greetings were over, this is the main subject can I take your time for a little bit? Dot. Amadeus. I don't mind but did you have any business with me? Dot. Wendlin. Yes, it's not an important business. Amadeus. I who went to the mansion being invited by Brithilda Margrave, never thought that it just outright lie. Sorry for taking your time. Amadeus. No. Wendlin. I was guided by Brithilda Margrave to his private room. Moreover, it just the two of us in the room. At first, 
Some of the maid were brewing the black tea but they leaves the room immediately after bowing. So what is your business? Dot. Wendlin. You didn't notice yet? Dot. Amadeus. Well what would that be? Dot. Wendlin. Your talent was guaranteed but it seems you are still lacking in experience Burkhart. Amadeus. After saying so, when Brithhilda Margrave called someone name. The come in one man. Age about the latter half of his forties black hair with crew cut streaked with grey hair. He had a sharp eye that it feel like adventure veteran, and he was dressed in robe which is common for mage. That's mean. He is a mage. He is our senior retainer mage. Amadeus. I'm Burkhart Ringstadt as you can see, I am an adventurer before. Burkhart. What's more, he was the master of Alfred Rainford who also our previous senior retainer mage. Amadeus. A. Dot. Wendlin. When my master name was suddenly being put out. Anyone can understand that it was shown clearly in my face I was surprised. He become the talking corpse after his dead, more than five years keeping his appearance in order to teach his own magic to a promising successor, master wish finally fulfilled after meeting me. I had intended to take this story to my grave without telling others. The matter about master become the talking corpse or about him meeting me to teach me magic and finally about me taking over his legacy, especially the last one is actually fraught with big problems. Brithhilda Margrave army that was annihilated in Demon Forest, the expedition including the march of more than several hundred kilometers distant, with that shortcoming, the supply had been entrusted to master food and resources to support an army of 2,000 men, everything were put in magic bag that master carried. In addition, the commodities for Brithhilda Margrave armies that had been annihilated were not used that much. The resources with ridiculous amounts still remained within the magic bag. And that resources, all of it is inside the magic bag that was attached to my waist. This magic bag is something that had been handed over from master to me, so it was something natural to do. I have told you earlier right? You're still lacking in experience. Amadeus. Since I am just a kid and a student. Wendlin. Yeah you can use magic well enough but you are still insensitive to the sign of other mages weren't you being taught by Al? Dot. Burkhart. Eh? I can't understand what Ringstats and are saying. Wendlin. As expected, the master of my master know what he talk about. He noticed that I learns the basics of magic from master. But it will be dangerous if I admit the fact so easily so I decide to be ignorant for now and see the situation. Oh? Did I make you feel in danger? Dot. Burkhart. Isn't that bad Burkhart? Amadeus. Listen boy I'm not going to punish you it's the same with Lord. Burkhart. I want to negotiate with you and Burkhart want to know the final moment of his disciple would you please trust us? Dot. Amadeus. Being persuaded by both of them, in the end, I talked about my only secret with master. I see you even done capacity adjustment you must be liked considerably by Al. Burkhart, for a while since then, I had a long talk with them, about when I had been practicing quietly in the forest as I realized that I had talent in magic, master who become talking corpse show up that to make me his disciple, it was a short time I had been study under him, but it thanks to that I become what I am now, about master to die peacefully with holy magic attribute before become zombie as the final graduation test and about me inherited the contents of his magic bag as a thank you and graduation gift while I am talking they heard it with serious face really so he was satisfied and die peacefully Burkhart you didn't believe me dot Wendlin no I didn't doubt you or anything Burkhart Burkhart San who is my master's master he had a special ability that can't be used by other mages once he remembered the stored magic power he is able to sense that magic power owner whereabouts. Honestly, this ability is amazing. No matter how much magic power a mage had, the magic power that can be called out from one's own body is usually small. An excellent mage is sensitive to the sign of other excellent mages in fact just some kind of intuition, and that detection range can be about several hundred kilometers. Masters who become talking corpse in Demon Forest have noticed my existence which were almost in his detection range limit. For Burkhart's and once he remembered the magic power can detect up to several thousand kilometers. It can only be described as something amazing. Well, despite that ability being amazing my magic capacity were around intermediate to high rank even for Al who you call as master it may be presumptuous to call him master for making a mistake so easily.
Burkhardt, Burkhardt San said that for some reason, in Demon Forest in the southern region, he had felt master magic power for more than five years. I even expect him to become, Lich. Burkhardt, Lich is an undead monster of the higher rank kind of zombies. It had no reasoning, unlike zombie that can't use magic and can't talk. Lich is a monster that it may not equal while it's alive but it able to use magic. Despite being a lich, that Al is a genius he must be eliminated but is it obstructed by the place. Burkhardt, although the military forces have finally come, it almost impossible for adventurer to reach it inside the demon forest. Luckily, he didn't leave that place. Burkhardt, however, master magic power starts to move suddenly. That must be to met me, for Burkhardt San. He might have thought that a lich begin to move into a frontier village. I had considered to subjugate him but I am also an adventurer at that time. The commission didn't come out either, it would be unjustifiable for my friends so I didn't say it. Burkhardt, go over one mountain, fighting with lich who originally a genius mage. The cost is far more than the reward. Burkhardt San wish that the subjugation commission to come out quickly. However, he stay in one place furthermore. He disappeared in about two weeks I thought that somebody have defeated him on the other side. Burkhardt. But a mage in a frontier village should be non-existent so who is it? Dot Burkhardt. He limited his work with an adventurer while thinking about that. He changed jobs as retain a mage of Brithhilda. Margrave House replacing his disciples who had died, for a while, he forgot about it. But a talk suddenly develops in here recently. From Bormister House that shouldn't have any a mage enrolled into the adventurer prep school as a scholarship student and as a mage. What's more, I was convinced today I can see that the boy are wearing Al's magic bag right now. Burkhardt, I may have stolen it. Wendlin, that's impossible that magic bag can't be used by others except Al changed the owner that's mean Al didn't become a lich he entrusted it to the boy as talking corpse. Burkhardt, a talking corpse tries to accomplish the regret that was left in it lifetime. The fact about no rumors of subjugation even thought his magic power disappear. His regret may have been fulfilled. Indeed, as Alfred didn't have any family. Burkhardt, Al was very popular with women though. A mad use. He worked more than 15 years as adventurer since 15 years old. Master become retainer mage of Brithhilda Margrave house with great fanfare but apparently from being an orphan, he have some fear towards making family. Many women make an advance to him but in the end he have died without establishing a family. That's why, no problem whatsoever even if the boy inherited Al heritage it were transferred by himself anyway. Burkhardt, it's still master even if he become talking corpse. Burkhardt San seems to think it wouldn't matter even if I inherited master heritage. I also think there is no problem. Amadeus, although he say that, Brithhilda Margrave seems to have some concern. I can easily guess it but there are also different possibilities so I'll let him say it ahead. Alfred had played a major role in my father's expedition to Demon Forest as the sub-general chief of staff of expedition army. Magic Forest Captain and Supply Troops Captain. A mad use. Master as a mage is likely an existence that can be counted with finger in this continent. Advanced class magic that can be boosted as top class, not to mention various attack magics. I who studying under master to sample a variety of his magic, had widened that repertory. Of course, his attack in battle has been recognized as the number two within the expedition army. About Magic Forces Captain. Only a few other mages available which all of them in lower class or intermediates that had no ability for maintenance so he has been automatically appointed as the captain for supply troops captain, as he put all the resources in magic bag and carried it, and not much person with high social status in the supplely troops which is also an important aspect. He put the huge resources to the bag, the things placed inside can be taken out freely thanks to that. 2000 expedition armies may not worry about supply. Amadeus. Besides, the important thing is carrying the load, so it won't slow down the supplely troops which was the major point. When briskly marching, the resources needed will decreases accordingly. There must be supply goods of the expedition army stored inside that magic bag. Amadeus. Yes. Wendlin. I had thought that it didn't matter if I steal it when he didn't know but I'll return it back if he know about it. Since I go to the adventurer prep school in his territory anyway. Honestly, I didn't think much about my parents house though. By the way, here is the list. 
Wendlin. When Master still alive, he had checked without missing the amount or the kind of resources of Expedition Army in the bag, dutifully every day. I showed the memo with his handwriting he leave behind and hand it over to Brithilda Margrave. Various foods, water, medicine such as medical herbs, materials, to spare armor. To give it to soldier or material derived from monster obtained in Demon Forest or to purchase other resources, considerably large amount of money had been keep. Furthermore, some of the reward had been given. A large amount of monster material, a medicinal herb or all were included too. We didn't get the material of elixir to cure brother, Demon Forest indeed, most of it is a valuable material. Amadeus. So you want me to return it? Dot. Wendlin. Yes, as expected of Alfred I really appreciated him for dividing his assets dutifully. Amadeus. As I had decided to return the resources, I matched the mouth of my own magic bag with magic bag that Burkhardson has. Furthermore, with the stored items that I had specified in my head, one after another moved to Burkhardson magic bag. With this method, it will end it at once without bringing out all the resources. It almost at the limit of my magic power nothing we can do about those that was consumed in March and Invasion. Burkhardt, the owner of the magic bag is limited only for mage, despite it hardly utilize magic power, it had been equipped with a nasty function which the stored amount is the limit amount of magic power of that mage. Burkhardt San seems to confirm the size of his disciples magic power over again. So you didn't even know the name of a famous mage like Burkhardt? Amadeus. Though what Lord said is true but the boy does not know much about other mages. Burkhardt. You were right. Amadeus, due to my upbringing and my current life, I don't have that much knowledge about a famous mage in the world. My library card account expired a long ago, I can only see the description of some historical figure. But I am still pretty famous you know however, Al is a genius who far surpassed me truly, the lost precious man. Burkhardt, while Burkhardt San is grieving over it. Brithilda Margrave who had the list in haste calculated the rough estimate of the asset value of the returned resources. It easily over 50 platinum plate. Amadeus. Ironically, the material obtained from Demon Forest were accounted for quite a lot of worth. Otherwise, bread, dried meat, water, wine for preservation that people usually eats. Beside that is spare armor and tent for lodging, the price shouldn't be that high. Instead, the significant portion of the asset value were occupied by high value material that had been collected within Demon Forest. This can lighten my territory's finances. Amadeus. Despite all the heavy loss the territory army have suffered in this near to 12 years, recovering the loss of close to 2,000 people death would take some time. Other than the increases of expenditure in military expense, during that time, the internal affairs can't be neglected. Still in increasing the cultivated land. The need in developing the town as the population in Brutberg and around it increases gradually, it would not easy the financial condition even with the income of Brithilda Margrave House. The resources that I returned, make Brithilda Margrave to look really happy. You really saved me. Amadeus. It was something that could only be given up, I who had been so near. Comply in returning it obediently. He seems to be pleased. And about the reward. Amadeus. There is. Dot. Wendlin. Of course. Amadeus. In case the resources inside Master Bag had been left behind in Demon Forest until now. No adventurer will take the request to collect it. With that in mind, paying me a reward was cheaper. The reward will be 20% please take 10 million cents. Amadeus. He is surprisingly quite prepared. Brithilda Margrave immediately handed over the 20% of the agreed reward. There is no platinum coin after all. All of it were paid with gold plate. Platinum coin is used by wealthy merchant to settle a large transactions. Imperial family or important noble assets maintenance won't get bulky. It would not be available in the market which is natural. And when used in the shop, it would have been refused since no money change so it had no meaning even if I had it. It just that about 10 plate were included somehow among master heritage. Let just said that it possible for adventurer to earn it by risking their life. I return the resources after all. But I still get reward, master heritage and my own materials I had obtained by myself were not affected. When I unexpectedly refuse to return it, I'll make an enemy of Brithilda Margrave who is a large force in southern part of this continent, but I'll get favorable impression if I were to return it obediently.
I'd get a connection too. I would not be able to live as I like with only being good at magic so my judgment is not wrong, at the very least. I decide to think so. 10 platinum plate will be about 1 billion yen. Master actually had a lot more cash. Even so this amount of money was a lot of money, judging from me who never spends a large sums of money in this world or even in my previous life. To be honest, I was virtually quite tense. I take it carefully so as not to ruin it, either way, I decide to maintain my current life. As I cannot buy a high quality imported car. I can spend a lot of money for clothes and accessories but unfortunately I have no interest in that field. Let assume if I as adventurer and mage use it for expensive material or weapon and armor with magical abilities, when master still an adventurer, he had obtained a large number of fairly expensive things which were put in magic bag. I didn't see the need to buy a new one. Now, by unexpected good fortune, I was able to earn extra income, but I had one more thing I must hand over to Wendlin Kun. Amadeus. One more thing. Dot. Wendlin. Right you are eligible to inherit Alfred Heritage who is the top retainer mage at my Brithhilda Margrave house currently, has formally received the contents in the magic bag no. Dot. Amadeus. Yes, I've received it. Wendlin. His property not just in the magic bag but also elsewhere. Amadeus. What Brithhilda Margrave said is, Master had purchased a mansion in Britburg after retired as adventurer. Besides, he had even deposited a certain amount of money to Adventurer Guild. Even if Adventurer retired, that does not mean no longer had any relation with the Guild. Amadeus, being employed again by the Guild, famous name new in Adventurer Guild able to receive an unofficial position in favor of their name, or deposited the money to the Guild which were saved when still active. That deposited money is a basic education given to newcomer Adventurer, lent to low interest funds to buy initial equipment or profiting by giving a low interest funds to merchants guild or craftsmen guild. The deposited money had no interest but no idiot would steal it in adventurer guild, it would be credited as contribution to adventurer guild with just depositing a lot of money, retired adventured often entrusted their money they didn't use to adventurer guild. Since there is no such thing as bank, adventurer that safely keeps money is a helpful existence. This also called as give and take. But master had died for more than 10 years it still remain. Dot. Wendlin. There are also some circumstances about this. Amadeus. Master had no family either. The financial of Brithhilda Margrave territory before were in dire situation which can't be compared to now. So master heritage soon had been confiscated. It's fine to deposit the money to the guild since the amount of money remains in the record. It's easy to withdraw the money to hand it to you was it 10 million cents? Dot. Amadeus. Dot. Wendlin. Master is a famous adventurer after all. There are a lot of money being deposited in the guild. Is this really okay? Dot. Wendlin. Rather. It must be transferred to you. A mad use. This Brithhilda Margrave territory is his own territory but various laws were applied to operated the territory. In transferring a heritage, many fight from small to large have occur every year. The office work in Brithhilda Margrave side have a hard time in giving decision whenever that happen. They must follow the rule, since we operate with strict law that's why I can't violate it you are the one which the inheritance was transferred to formally by Alfred thus. I also had the obligation to hand it over the other heritage that had been confiscated to you. Wendlin. It just as what Brithhilda Margrave Sama said. Burkhart. The mansion were close to prep school you can move out from your dormitory today and live there. Amadeus. In addition since it was close to the office work headquarters of Adventurer Guild, Master had built a house near that location. Many years had passed but it still remains clean as it had magic of condition preservation. The furnitures inside also had been left as is. Amadeus. Why is that? Dot. Wendlin. Alfred House security is pretty strict because of a magic tool. Amadeus. I had thought that the house furniture had been taken out long ago but it was not so. Burkhart San told me the reason. Why? The furnitures within the house are not usable for others as it was remodeled with magic tool. When tries to forcibly take it out outside, the small golem guarding the house would jump in. This small golem also a kind of magic tool but apparently master got it from ancient ruins in his adventurer's era. It seems to be made much more advanced than now so it led to the conclusion that releasing it by any means is impossible. In other words, it was convenient to force it to me when I showed up. Dot. 
Wendlin, don't say it like that and I expected that the exclusive servant would likely to be changed as the boy had the magic bag. Amadeus, I try to get the house. Wendlin, oh I'll be expecting you invite me to celebrate when you changed house. Amadeus, I will once I am done. Wendlin, nothing was wrong with invited him to the party but it was unexpected for me to be able to negotiate with Brithilda Margrave like this. I lost most of the material taken from Monster of Demon Forest but likewise I got more things so it can be said that I am really satisfied. It saved me some trouble when Wendlin can't set up a base here by the time you were retired as adventurer, you can be like Burkhart and I would welcome you to serve me right now. Amadeus, yet yeah, was hard indeed to be active in ages of sixty I'll be relieved if the boy remains to succeed me. Wendlin, well. Amadeus, other than master who despite being not family, they're also such a reason to give such good condition to a youngster. After my retirement as adventurer, I won't be suddenly hired. No matter how superior my magic capacity, it would be hard in many things to become senior retain a mage of great noble house without life experience. Seeing the many duties when master goes on expedition. Besides fired off magic, various knowledge is needed to carry the duties. Experience as adventurer in order to obtain that. I need to get older to be able to have life experience and human relationship. I can't promise right now but. Wendlin, right now I just want to have some tie with you your student still attending adventurer prep school no need to rush it. Amadeus, I have become Brithilda Margrave acquaintance without knowing it, I had been claimed to be put as retainer mage candidate in the future. Not that I'd be an adventurer forever, a second life is a welcome story, my side will send the deposited money later well then, please go enjoy yourself in the garden party. Wendlin, after everything done, I come back again to the hall of the garden party and begins to eat by hastily gathering the remaining dish. Whoa. You eat so much after just come back. Owen, I'm hungry. Wendlin, you get called by Brithilda Margrave Sama, parents family matter, dot. Owen, something like that. Wendlin, there is no way I can talk about the content of that business to other people. I answered your question with the appropriate answer while filling my mouth with meat dishes. Chapter 25, Master was a celebrity. So here is Master's house. Wendlin, the next day of the garden party, I have formally been transferred to Master's house that had been under the care of Brithilda Margrave House I had come to see the house condition after school. However, she said that the house was actually an aristocracy, it has the magnitude of a villa, the garden is wide, and the house was surrounded by a tall wall for crime prevention purposes. The front gate is also quite respectable, I guess the more talented the adventurer, the more income they get. It was also a residence of a suitable level for a retainer mage of the Margrave family. The gate, or rather the small magic crystal stone it's the thing that is used to recognize the master. Wendlin, even if I try to open the gate just as it is, it's said that the front gate doesn't open because of the magic tool. It will break if you use a high level magic, but there's a small golem that has been placed there probably to chase out anyone who attempts to do so I had been told by Brithilda Margrave before. This gate, seems like it's a 500,000 cents magic tool if it's broken, even if it's only once, I won't give it an excessive importance. Wendlin, if one were to enter, they won't be stupid enough to break the precious expansive magic tool this was also the reason why 10 years ago Brithilda Margrave family's side left the house, as for the first year. A number of self-proclaimed people who said they were a relative of Master without proof, they left to saying that it's a send-along heritage. It's clearly a lie, but as Brithilda Margrave stated a fair governance, he had no choice but to do a decent investigation, though the result takes a little time to be published. In addition, the self-proclaimed relatives lied in an investigation on the Brithilda Margrave side and it seems to have been for acclaimed land forwarding on the charge of a fraud attempt for several years. Human beings should earn by their own hard work one shouldn't get used to easy money. Indeed from the memo that Master gave. Wendlin, Master had probably figured out, that with luck, I'll come here and he'll give me a memo that has instruction on how to change the Master of the Lock. That being said, the method itself wasn't that difficult. I'm listening to the words or rather the cipher from Master looking at it while touching the magic crystal stone. It seems to have a lock reset I have to set a new code after opening it. If you follow the instruction written in the memo, the gate will open immediately. Well then, 
Next is Wendlin. When you enter the mansion, there will be four small gillums guarding the house that will show up. The gillum is small and even the size and height was about two meters. It had issued a word of warning while it surrounded me. Intruder, a human being other than Alfred Sama eliminate by force. There's one gillum that has an artificial personality through magic technology and can speak human language. Incidentally, in ancient civilization this type of technology was popular, but now, it has become a lost art of course it is studied, but the result had yet to come out. The current working ones was brought by an adventurer, it was something from the ruins. The current gillum did not have a precise movement. Practitioners have to always stay close to them, if one isn't close to it, for example giving an instruction to toil the field it won't complete the instructions to your satisfaction. Simply digging the side of the soil with the hoe at full force will end up with a broken handle. However, when there was a war, it was good. Just by waving their arms and weapons into the enemy, or destroying the defensive barriers made by the enemies, you can easily defeat them. In short, Gollum magic was not only used for combat purpose. I have succeeded Master Alfred's house now. Wendlin. When I declared that to the small Gollum, I issued the cipher which will make the Gollum stop immediately while including the magic voice code. Then, all four Gollum stop moving. Stopping them was a success, now you. Wendlin. Like the gate, the Gollum has a magic crystal stone embedded in it, touching it. I sent magic to it making the Gillum restart a few seconds later it was a success. Wendlin Sama has been recognized as the new master after Alfred Sama. Alright, let's continue the task. Wendlin. Understood. The Gillum's postponed task was resumed, all the Gillum returned to the garden, even the front door was opened the same way. When I entered the mansion, it was like a newly bought house. The inside was sparkly clean one won't believe that it had been left for decades as there were not a single dust to be found. Magic state saving is really effective, I see. Wendlin. Well, I think that it's good, the mansion was clean as I can immediately search the mansion without the need to clean it. On the first floor, there is the living room, study room, kitchen, toilet, bath etc all arranged neatly. After that is the basement, there is a warehouse there so I took the key with me. Inside the warehouse was a wine cellar, there's wine and brandy as well as expensive vintage placed there. In addition, all the cookware, water and sewage function based on magic tool the bath, the kettle, the toilets water and water for washing purpose functions the same way. Immediately after arriving to this world, I first found myself in a remote area for the first time and found myself in a child's body it was a delayed struggle for civilization. If the toilet was no good. It'll be useless if you don't go and get water from the well. The bath also needs to be filled by drawing the water. The kettle was more troublesome, at best it can cook the water for twice a week, especially the bath, unless you learn magic to boil the water, the body will be itchy. Even so, in this house, he can perform cooking and take a bath freely because the magic stone would continuously supply magic. Master's house is a good house. Wendlin. This is a good property moreover, this house has officially become mine, it will be a loss not to live in it. I suddenly remember that I need to report to the prep school's dormitory for moving out. The prep school's dormitory was intended for guild supported students, for a person who can afford their own house, the dorm will be given to someone else. Now, immediately move to Wendlin. Since I didn't have much luggage. I tried to move it alone but it seems the thing that was being hidden underneath will be impossible to move. You how did you get this house? Dot. In a. I wonder if it's by chance? Dot. Lou Eyes. Is it accidental that it's a residence more luxurious than mine and Lou Eyes' parents' house? Dot. In a. There are also no reasons by which two people who are a child of a retainer of the house of Brithhilda Margrave won't know about the poverty of my parents' home. According to rumors. The house belonging to In and Louise's parents was more excellent than my parents' one, well, it's a fact I can't avoid. And a magic stove, a magic range and a restroom are also flush, and water supply is also automated. It's impossible to arrange in order first at my home. Louise. It's impossible local country manner is not going to last. In a, there are many people who do it luxuriously because the scale and appearance of the house are experienced by the noble and the rear family. And as a result, they can't afford to buy furniture and maintenance of premises suitable for the identification. Using magic tools, like my parents, 
Louise and Erwin von Armin of the lower nobility and middle class. In my house, a magic stove is a luxurious thing. The cooking stove for which I burn with firewood is used at most because even this is large and high firepower. It's quite expensive, isn't it? Dot. In a, this is probably because Inna's parents' house gives a meal to the pupil that was taught the art of spear fighting. Dot. Lou eyes. It's probably at Lou eyes is. In a, not so bad. Lou eyes. Surprisingly, these two people were good cooks. On a holiday and part-time jobs at the time, I went hunting for prey for the local meat and material. I often cooked outdoors. I can cook myself. Wendlin is banned from cooking. Dot. In a, certainly. That stew was inedible. Lou eyes. It is not good enough to let out complaints even if it is not good, it is better than animal food. Wendlin. I had made many bad meals, when I was small, I went hunting and cooked food for myself by going through trial of bad food. But somehow, it became a habit to of mine to make bad food. However, that does not mean I don't have a sense of taste. Because I noticed that the cheap restaurant which I went after hunting is bad with its food in other words. Food that tastes good was quite low. All right, let's party here for our new headquarters. Lou eyes. All right, let's make this our party headquarters. In a, if you say it like that, isn't that just an excuse to hang out here? Dot. Wendlin. That's right, Vul. In a, ah, uh, no, even if you say that I'm right. Wendlin. Ira found us very quickly, and after this short exchange, the number of residents in the house increased by three. Anyway, Living by myself would be lonely, so after a brief lecture on cleaning and tidying, I let them be free to do as they wish. It's not bad, even five aristocrats could live here without complaining. I'll heat up the bath to an even temperature. Owen, I agree one could possibly house three retainers' daughters here. Please leave dinner to me, something like this is relatively simple for me. In a, Vulcan, I'll prepare some tea. Blue eyes. In this manner. I firmly established my new household. Right now that the end of term examinations are over, next up is to decide what to do for summer break. Wendlin. It has been about three months since I entered adventurer school, in which time I encountered a variety of experiences. Since awakening in this world at the age of six years old, I have finally made my first friend. His name is Erwin von Arnim his circumstances being similar to mine in that he left his house in order to become an adventurer to make a name for himself because he is not able to succeed his family's house. He is the same age as I am, 12 years old, has the best reputation in school in terms of his skill with the sword, and due to his time spent hunting, is equally proficient in archery as well. Speaking of which, it was while hunting that we came across two girls facing off against a pack of wolves we then helped to subdue. The two of them were fellow students at the adventurer school from the same level as us one of them being a slender, red-headed Bishuo spear wielder, in a Suzanne Hirembrandt. She was the daughter of a vassal house which taught the art of the spear to soldiers of the Brithilda Margrave, an art in which she possessed a considerable degree of skill, as for the other person. She was a girl with light blue hair who was in reality older than her appearance suggested, a practitioner of magic, her name is Louise Yoland Aurelia Hofovk, who also happened to be the daughter of another retainer household which taught magic combat to the soldiers of the Brithilda Margrave. No wonder they are so capable despite their relatively young age. To be surrounded by a pack of wolves during their first time however, can only be blamed on a lack of experience and sheer bad luck, after which the two girls requested to form a party with us, bringing the number of hunting party members to a grand total of four members. Although I might feel slightly uneasy at this arrangement, perhaps this is the work of fate after all. After this commotion, as to why I received an invitation to a garden party hosted by the Brithilda Margrave, it was in order to introduce to me, the mage who was the master of my master Alfred. Blanchirk San. As for this person, it seems he has the ability to sense from great distances away, the magic capacity. T.L. Note, magic power of people he has met before, and was aware that I had succeeded ownership of my master's magic bag after he'd become one of the talking dead, the same bag which contained all the supplies and rations belonging to that subjugation force from twelve years earlier. Because they were aware of this fact, I had no choice but to return the supplies to their rightful owner also should I refuse to do so, my family might be dragged into it as well as for me, 
I who wished to be independent from my family as soon as possible, was at an age where I possessed little power on my own, and not being old enough, it would be hard to survive without working. In the end, it seems that I made the right decision to the return the immense quantities of rations and supplies, along with the reports and valuable materials that the subjugation force obtained within the demon forest. I received a reward worth 2% of the calculated value of what I'd returned. Furthermore, having been recognized as master's legal successor, I thus inherited the house and possessions he'd left behind in Brithhilda. I must profess my gratitude, as a result of the total amount of assets I possessed increased vastly like this it would be possible to live out a sedentary lifestyle for the rest of my days, although such a lifestyle could be said to be rather, no, extremely boring because this was a world where neither games, nor manga, not even the internet existed. Although it was a long story, at the end of it I now have a new house, and am sitting and chatting with you while leisurely drinking tea. Because the adventure school was a school for beginners, the examinations in turn were rather ordinary as well speaking of which, while comparing to the schools in my previous life, even though the level of education here could be said to be somewhat lower, because the history and geography of this world, along with magic theory and the study of monsters were written examinations, one definitely had to make an effort to study, although one wouldn't fail over silly things, one might die, do badly if they were not paying attention, and thus everyone had excellent note-taking abilities. Furthermore, the practical examinations added another burden to our load. This is not some story where simply talking will settle things, rather everyone has to put in their utmost in order to face the examination. For us scholarship students, the practical test was at the level of a normal test where it was easily cleared our scholarship duties is normally needed us to pass the practical exam. Although even though one might pass the exam, it doesn't mean one won't die in real combat so. The teacher who was originally an adventure advised us to never be off guard even when it's summer vacation. The period for vacation is 7th of July until the 7th of September although two months could be considered a long time, there is a reason for this. While students are allowed to return to home, the continent of Ringea is a vast one after all, and although most of the students come from around this area, there are some who require at least one month's worth of traveling back and forth from their hometowns. Such is the reason for the long summer vacation although training still continues after returning home. Thus the long summer break is not much of an issue the meaning of training is also meant for homecoming, but it is not so much of a problem with this long summer vacation. Louise and I are not going home. In a, yup after all I go home every day. Louise, for in and Louise there is no need to return home specifically during the summer vacation as their families are situated within Braybrook, therefore, they wish to use this time to earn money through hunting. I would like to buy some new equipment with the money earned from hunting. Inna, I agree with Inna, I'll probably do the same. Lou eyes. Me too. Owen. R. Iru, you're not going home. Dot. Wendlin. While I can understand the two ladies not returning home for summer, I had assumed Iru would be going home as he was originally from a land far to the west. Even if I return home, I'll simply be treated as an annoyance. Owen, I was the eighth son of the family with no chance at succession, and Uru was in the same circumstances as I. Furthermore, his sword play was the best amongst the five brothers and thus did not have a good relationship with his older siblings. Amongst the family retainers, there is a guy who wishes for me to succeed the head of the household due to my outstanding sword play. Owen, I had heard such a story that the head of a family of knights would have to fight at the front lines in times of war therefore a family head who is skilled in fighting is more desirable as it increases the possibility of survival, and as such the survival rate of the household increases in turn. However there has been no war for over 200 years this is due to the abilities of the soldiers. Bandit subjugation and occasional skirmishes with neighboring fiefdoms still occurs however and thus a strong nobility was still preferred. If the aristocrat numbers are big, but the supplements are not enough, retainers are also needed. I could say that I'm in the same situation. Wendlin. It's more serious in Vil's case isn't it? Dot. Owen. You can easily deal with your brother if you are excellent with the sword, it doesn't even need that many work. There is also the support that is provided to the son-in-law in the vassal's house, utilizing the technical skill skillfully. 
because there was also the chances to be nominated as the guard of a king in the capital. In the case of magic users however, it is not so simple. Depending on the amount of magic capacity one possesses, a person with high level of magic power is more likely to be kept within the household in order to use magic to benefit the family. In my case, my family isn't aware of the extent of magic ability I possess eventually. They wasn't able to know how many magic ability I possess although I am the one who doesn't want to tell them, because I have become the mage. it probably ignited dispute for the successor because of the unknown amount of magic I had in hand. I'm sure it's no longer a human being, as for me, I do not intend to return to the house anymore. Wendlin. Since the house is in Braybrook, the plan is to use this area as a base of operations after graduating from adventure school. The area around here is an abundant wilderness which can be easily and quickly reached, and thus traveling the poses little problem. Well then, are you going to look for a part-time job vol? In a, I'm going to do magic training during the summer holidays in order to raise my proficiency. Wendlin, my magic capacity has yet to reach the upper limit and Blanche Erksam the master of my master agreed to teach me magic whenever there was free time, and thus I wished to make these lessons a priority. Private lessons with the highest ranked magician in the Brithhilda Margrave household. Lou eyes. Then Vulcan can be considered one of the magic elites now. Dot. In a going by level of magic capacity alone, I estimate that my magic power has exceeded Blanche Erksam's by many times however, he is a talented magician with great skill and experience this is evident from his ability to detect and identify individual magic power for example, and other original convenient magic abilities, along with his skill in magical surgery. Such forms of healing magic are considered skills that are not only difficult to learn, but require many years of study as well simply put, his level of ability is not something that can be perfected without sheer hard work. For example, a fireball expends 100 units of magic capacity. When it is released for a fireball with the same amount of power, it is common to see inexperienced magicians use up to 150 units of magic capacity, while a magician who has trained into old age may only require 10 units for the same amount of output. For swordsmen who are reliant on their body, they cannot prevent the raging of their bodies with the passage of time. As for normal people with little magic and cannot utilize magic capacity, the ability to use magic power to strengthen one's body and prolong one's lifespan is an enviable ability indeed. Just saying, I am in reality much more mature than my age, suggests. In reality, whether one is able to learn properly is dependent on hard work. Even if one was a magician who possessed a large amount of magic capacity since young, normal people who don't practice will see their body stop functioning with old age whereas it is not uncommon to see old folks with small amounts of magic capacity still moving with the agility of a much younger person. No doubt, hard work is key. Speaking of magicians, magic capacity will not increase in the amount as they grew older, but, I hear that the benefit about saving the amount of magic capacity since young is not to be taken lightly. There are many normal magicians who neglect their training, and this is the cause for the differences in levels. If you realize you have talent in this field, you should make effort to work hard at it. This is also one reason why veterans are so highly regarded, because of their hard work. But hey, I got a magic instructor for two months from hunting. Wendlin, although we had already made plans, I received an unexpected invitation to a certain special event from my brother Eric. Eric Nitchen invited me to his wedding although the location is at the Imperial Capital. Is it not good if I don't attend? Wendlin, the capital city of the Helmut Kingdom. Stadtberg, is located a little ways south from the center of the Ringaya continent, and it is a metropolis that boasts a population of over one million people. Not only do they come from various lands throughout the kingdom, there are many people from the distant Turkic Holy Kingdom as well, a flourishing hub of economics, arts, and culture. Even though the capital is far from my current location, there is no way I'm going to miss this once in a lifetime occasion. Using teleportation I can reach the capital instantly, and as such I'll be going to the capital. Wendlin. Then what about Blanche Erksan's training? Dot. In a, ah, I guess that will have to wait for a while. Wendlin. Certainly the imperial city is far, but it is after all the capital city of the country in reality. It does not take that long to go there if one uses certain methods. There is an magical airship that comes to Braybrook every week. 
Wendlin. The city of Braybrook is the Helmut Kingdom's representative on the southern border, and thus receives treatment equal to that of a secondary capital city. That's why a magic airship harbor exists in this region. Erikanism. I had intended to travel to the capital via long-distance horse-drawn carriage, but I guess using the magic airship would be much more convenient. Wendlin. Comparing the differences between the two, traveling by horse-drawn carriage will take at least one month round trip while the price is around one silver plate which is reasonable for commoners in the case of the magic airship, the total traveling time is only five days, which means I can reach the capital within two and a half days travel. However, the cheapest airfare is one gold coin, roughly one million Japanese yen. 8,200 US dollars it's a bit nostalgic, reminding me of the times I used to travel by plane to go overseas for vacation and thus such forms of travel are not unfamiliar to me. Yosh, to the capital city it is then. Owen. Me too. Lou eyes. Me too. In a, huh? Is it okay? Dot. Wendlin. The fare cost for the magic airship is one gold coin, in that case I can pay it without any problems however, I didn't think Irwin's group would be able to pay it, too. Once we come back, I will hunt for prey in the training camp even bears are easy going. Owen. That's how it is. In ah, so, lend us some. Owen. I have no particular problem loaning it out, however it also isn't acceptable if this relationship ends up strange because of that. Besides, even if the money wasn't returned, I wouldn't be able to see it through anyway taking into account the case of not returning it, I decided to lend them the fee for the magic airship. My father from my previous life referred to it as if you lend money to your friends. Do it with the certainty that it won't be returned to begin with. Eric Nissan mentioned it in his letter, too if there were friends wishing to come, then I should bring them along. Wendlin. He probably imagined, me and my friends, who wished to be adventurers like me, jolting around in a long-distance carriage, while enjoying the unfolding scenery on a month-long round trip. However in reality, we are considering to use the magic airship with its high-priced fare. Natilda. Are five congratulatory gifts sufficient? Dot. In ah, there's no need. Wendlin. Putting it like this might be bad, however Eric Nissan as of yet is no more than a junior governmental official and his influence within the family he is entering as a groom is approximately in the same way rather low such as the situation. For this reason, even if we came as requested by the written invitation, the story is that we would need to shoulder the travel expenses by ourselves in such a situation. It is the general approach to not bring any congratulatory gifts. The lodgings will be prepared by Eric Nissan as far as I am told. Wendlin. It seems like it will be a room in the residence of the bride enabling us to stay in the royal capital while we are there. If that's the case, only the transport is left after this. Owen. After this, what? Iru. Dot. Wendlin. Before we are setting off. I'm going to hunt for prey there is nothing better than returning borrowed money as soon as possible. Fortunately, there is no interest either. Dot. Owen. That's because I'm no money lender. Wendlin. Regarding the interest, there would also be the idea of working it off with my body. Owen. Because you say such things, strange rumors are spreading. Dot. Wendlin. And then for three days our preparations for the departure to the royal capital were advancing while we were hunting on the side. At last we met aboard the magic airship together which will bring us to the royal capital Stadberg located in the central area of the Lingaya continent. Chapter 26. Encountering an undead ancient dragon. Incredible. What a magnificent view. Dot. Owen. As one would expect after spending a gold coin for the fair. The meals included are superb. In ah, the dessert is delicious, too. Lou eyes. To participate in the wedding of Eric Nissan who served as junior governmental official in the royal capital, me and the others had boarded the magical airship that visited Britburg once a week. This magic airship was a legacy of an ancient magical civilization that had perished long ago. Miraculously it was excavated almost completely functional from ruins and it was possible to operate it using modern magic technology. Even though the modern magic engineering skill was far inferior to the ancient one, leaving aside building a fully new magical airship. It posed no problem at all to maintain it with simple servicing. The amount of magical airships excavated from the ruins was limited to eight ships. Originating from the royal capital of Helmut Kingdom they operated in a total of four directions, 
won the major northern sea route to the imperial capital city Barud of the Holy Empire Urquhart, two the western route to the border territory of the Margraviate of Homer, three the eastern route to the border territory of the Margraviate of Brauag, four and lastly the southern route to the border territory of Margraviate of Brithilda. Directly managed by the kingdom, the magic airships also were strategical military assets which would be requisitioned by the army in case of emergencies. Furthermore, the Northern Holy Empire Urquhart were operating several airships they had excavated from similar ancient ruins as well. Thus, even if the Helmut Kingdom possessed magic airships it wouldn't be an one-sided military advantage in case of a war. Because the ceasefire had been kept for now almost 200 years, the common opinion of those involved in the foreign state politics in both countries was that there would be no war for the next several hundred years to come. Otherwise setting up the sea route using magical airships wouldn't have been possible. However, it's really fast. Wendlin. After spending an entire day aboard the magical airship peacefully, they had already traveled 40% of the way. Looking outside the window you could see the magic airship advancing at an astonishing high speed. Spreading below was the splendor of nature of the Helmut Kingdom. Most of it was undeveloped soil infested with monsters, thus it was only natural that the inhabited areas were scarce and widely spread. Boy, what are you looking at? Did a monster come out of the woodworks? Dot. Burkhart, certainly not, there are a few exceptions. Monsters never venture outside their domain. Wendlin, calling out to me and coming to my side was the employed head magician of the Margraviate of Brithilda, my master Alfred Reinford's master, Burkhart Ringstadt. By the sound of it, one would think that the head magician of the Margraviate of Brithilda was quite the busy person. Once I mentioned that we had to delay the training as I was going to travel to the royal capital for my brother's wedding though. For some reason he announced to accompany us as a guardian and really boarded the magic airship thereafter, being such as, for example the wandering corpses. Wendlin. An ordinary monster won't leave its domain without exception therefore it was not unusual for a farmer to nonchalantly plough their field next to such a domain even if it was a surreal scene looking objectively from the outside at it. You might say the only exception were the talking corpses who originally were human to begin with because of their lingering affection their behavioural pattern to try accomplishing it was in itself understandable. However, the majority of humans dying in the domain of monsters became zombies or ghouls. Zombies and ghouls had neither lingering affections nor any kind of intelligence, thus it was impossible for them to leave the domain. Further evolution into an higher undead like Lyches was certainly possible but those were rare and they seldomly ventured outside the domain. Subjugating them quickly was easily accomplished as there were only few of them. There aren't any other exceptions, are there? Dot. Wendlin. There actually is at least thousand years ago, going by the books. Burkhart. This rare exception was a dragon who turned undead in the same way as the talking corpses. However, small-sized dragons like wyverns are not of the same type of class like a proper domain lord dragon although they may turn undead. They will not leave the domain by themselves. Burkhart. And if it is, dot. Wendlin. If it isn't an ancient dragon of a level that was hunted by the masters of previous generations, then it doesn't leave the domain as it doesn't know how to do that. Burkhart. Old documents stated that the blood of ancient dragons was a cure for all kind of sicknesses. In the past the Margrave of Brithilda sent troops into the forest domain because he wanted to obtain this blood the result was an utter defeat. In the first place, up until today no one has confirmed the existence of an ancient dragon going by Burkhart's declaration. Are you doubting the existence of ancient dragons, boy? Dot. Burkhart. Practically I don't believe in the existence of things which can't be confirmed to exist. Wendlin, if you were to go there, you might as well believe in ghosts and UFOs and I don't believe in neither of them. There are many who think this way but, ancient dragons do exist. Burkhart. However, they live deeply in remote regions that are impossible to access for ordinary humans. Furthermore they won't turn undead easily as they live for ten thousands of years. Thus you won't likely find one in the areas inhabited by humans easily. In other words meeting one would be a miracle. Dot. Wendlin. Most humans wouldn't be happy to meet one as they are categorized as natural disaster. Burkhart. There was no part of their body that was unusable basically it was a cluster of high priced raw materials at the same time, those humans who were able to slay one were a miracle by themselves, too. If an ordinary person were to run into it, 
they would be dead in no time. It possessed an overwhelming might and was merciless towards others weaker than itself. That would be the being called an ancient dragon. In other words, it is unlikely for you to run into one while you're alive, huh? Dot. Wendlin. That's right. Burkhart. By the way, why is Burkhart San accompanying us? Dot. Wendlin. I asked the question which was weighing on my mind since the first day. Departing for the capital to lead a bunch of children. No matter how I think about it, that's not the job of an employed head magician. About that, it's just a good opportunity. Burkhart. According to Burkhart San's explanation the Margraviate of Brithhilda had an obligation to regularly report to the king about the local state of affairs in the southern part of the kingdom. However, it's not like the Margrave could go himself every time to report, thus sometimes the head magician substitutes him as a representative. As a matter of fact my social standing is considerably high, therefore using me as substituting representative works well. Burkhart. Additionally there are other matters to attend in the capital since acting as representative isn't considered as impolite. He is expected to visit several places. To attend Eric Dono's wedding for example. Burkhart. Attending Eric Nissan's wedding apparently was part of his duty. Even though the family Eric Nissan is about to enter as a groom belonged to the lower class nobility, they still possessed a high pedigree due to their inherited high-ranking governmental office. Naturally. If you consider having close ties to the soon to be reigning family head of nobility possessing an inherited high ranking governmental position, it would be a bad move to not attend the ceremony. If an influential rural noble and a noble possessing an inherited high ranking governmental position became too close friends, it would cause strange suspicions and rumors to spread. Having said that, possessing no connection at all would be problematic as well though. Therefore the wedding ceremony would serve as an ideal stage for the representative of the Margraviate of Brithhilda, Burkhart San, and them to meet. Well, it certainly is a difficult topic to talk about in reality it is only to confirm that it is possible to make a small connection in the end, that would be the hope of my lord towards Eric Dono. Burkhart, considering the relatively mediocre family members within my house, poor Mr. It was an hope of expectation of the Margrave of Brithhilda towards the considerably more intelligent Eric Nissan. Originally he wanted to employ Eric Nissan as retainer in charge of domestic affairs in the Margraviate, but was rejected by the person himself. It would have been troublesome, if the fifth son of a vassal were to become a favorite of the feudal lord. Burkhart, for supporting the favored Eric Nissan as next family head of the Bormister clan. Wendlin, such suspicions would definitely appear. Burkhart, such detestable difficulties seem to be the reason for Eric Nissan becoming a junior governmental official in the capital additionally there was that troublesome invitation from Klaus. It was the same issue for me though however it would be quite sarcastic if I were to become an employed magician of the Margraviate of Brithhilda in the future. While everyone believed each and every member of the Bormister clan to be an idiot. The ability to rule. Regional bonds through consanguinity and the abundant troubles of a being involved in complicated human relations that's a noble. Burkhart, aren't you in the position of a noble yourself, Burkhartson? Dot. Wendlin. Not particularly I am not holding a noble title as I was hired solely due to my magic abilities neither do I have a wife or children or oh, oops, disclosing this information so easily. Burkhart. Suddenly Burkhart San broke off the conversation and turned his focus with a sharp gaze towards the direction the magic airship was heading. Exclamation mark Burkhart San. Dot. Wendlin. Due to training for half a day, my perception one has slightly increased I can sense a very sinister magic aura. Burkhart. Moreover, this kind of magic aura was an impossible feat for a human being. Though there are people possessing huge quantities of mana. They shouldn't be able to simply emit it on the surface. As explained previously, the mana of a person is confined within their body and it was not possible to detect the full extent of it from the outside. Burkhart San's magic aura detection ability was quite amazing as in contrast to many common magicians he could sense magic auras up to several thousand kilometers away. It's not human wild animals are not possible either. Burkhart, it can't be a common monster as this route is far off any monster domain. Wendlin, under the present condition, building another flying magic airship was impossible same could be said for the neighboring nations. What is it then? Dot. Wendlin, I would have never thought about this. Dot. 
Burkhardt, apparently our apprehension was right on the spot. The magic airship suddenly made a sharp turn increasing its speed to make an escape. The magic airship operated by feeding mana into a gigantic magic stone to power what appeared to be something similar to a steam engine additionally to this steam engine. The magic airship had deployed sails to use the wind for further propulsion. Although the power generated by the wind was for free, the mana stored in the magic stone had to be replenished at certain intervals naturally this resupply required payment. Therefore, for the magic airship to leave the course considered to be the most economical, it was impossible unless there was an emergency forcing it to disregard the most fuel-efficient cruising speed. Um, Burkhardt san dot. Wendlin, boy. Follow me we will go up to the bridge and ask the captain about the circumstances. Burkhart, eh? Why me too? Dot. Wendlin, just listen and come. Dot. Burkhart, Burkhart San forcibly dragged me by the hands until we arrived at the entrance to the bridge which was usually off limits to unauthorized personnel. Hereupon we stumbled into a crowd of ten odd people appearing to be nobles and wealthy merchants protesting with loud voices towards the guards stationed at the entrance to the bridge. Therefore, why was the route suddenly changed? Dot. Explain what happened. Dot. Such speed of the magic airship disregarding fuel efficiency. Something strange must have happened. Dot. You won't hear anything from my mouth. Guard. Then send out the captain. Dot. Ain't it natural to expect an explanation? Dot. The irritated crowd started to push their way into the bridge from within the bridge several sailors of the crew appeared as reinforcement to prevent anyone entering. Thus the current battle of strengths had come to a total standstill not advancing in either direction. Upon seeing the figure of Burkhart San, one of the sailors called out to him. Are you the head magician of the Margraviate of Brithilda, Burkhart Ringstadt? Dot. Sailor. That's true, so. Dot. Burkhart. The captain wishes to consult with you regarding a certain matter. Sailor. Understood since the situation is causing anxiety and cannot be comprehended like this, I will act as representative for everyone here and listen to the story of the captain. Burkhart. Unlike the casual way of speech Burkhart San used when talking to us. He addressed the gathered nobles and merchants with the proper polite manner that was expected of an employed head magician frankly speaking, he was like another person, his social status being what it is, apparently he had to be able to act like this in certain circumstances, too. Oh well, as it is, we won't get anywhere either way. Leaving it to Burkhart San should be alright. The nobles and merchants, who were disputing before, knew Burkhart San to be a famous magician and thus made way for him to pass. Certainly. The social standing of a famous magician seemed to be rather high considering how the big shot merchants and nobles meekly retreated before him. This boy is my disciple you don't mind us entering together, right? Dot. Burkhart. Yes. Sailor. I received permission to enter the bridge and since it couldn't be helped I followed Burkhart San inside. The bridge of the magic airship resembled those of regular sailing vessels on top of the upper deck there was steering wheel to navigate the ship by whirling it around due to the high speed of movement the upper deck was covered by a dome using material similar to glass as protection against the head wind. I am sorry to specifically call you I am the ship's captain, Kunz Flea. Kunz. I am the first mate, Leopold Bergen. Leopold, both were in the latter half of their thirties the middle-aged men who bore a weathered composure greeted us. Without waiting for an answer the pair pointed in a hurry towards the rear of the bridge. Thanks to the transparent dome you could clearly look at the rear of the ship it was questionable though whether the situation will become clear by just looking at the back of the ship, right? It's not just an ordinary dragon, is it? Its size doesn't differ overly much from this ship's size, does it? Dot. Burkhart. Furthermore, Adding to the malposition, this dragon possessed another characteristic trait it didn't have any kind of skin or flesh left on its body anymore, in other words, it was a dragon made completely out of only bones. This huge dragon or to call it properly, bone dragon, was the emergency approaching this ship. Certainly you couldn't inform the passengers about this. The renowned Ringstadt can you take care of this? Dot. Cuns. You want me to fight against such a monster? Dot. Burkhart. That is so it's not possible. Dot. Cuns. If I were to tell you a lion claim I can win, after dashing out and losing, the panic spreading would just increase, I believe. Burkhart. Winning is impossible, that was clearly transmitted. Such a severity, as expected of a former first-rate adventurer. Yet, even if we continue to escape, 
guns. It is just as the captain stated only running away will not end this deadlock. Even if we kept fleeing disregarding the increased fuel cost, sooner or later the mana would run out and the bone dragon would catch up to us. Having said that, the situation wouldn't improve though. Even if Burkhardt-san went and challenged for a battle with no chance to win. Even worse, Burkhardt-san might even spur on the Bone Dragon's wrath further. Also, it's not like we have no hand to play at all. Burkhardt, oh, what kind of hand would that be? Dot. Cuns. With an attitude of grasping at straws, the captain and crew eagerly waited for Burkhardt-san's reply. That dragon is undead in that case magic with the attribute, holy, would be able to cleanse it. Don't you think? Dot. Burkhart. Indeed Ringstadt's armor can let it depart the world of the living with holy magic. Cuns. Unfortunately I am not capable of using holy magic. Burkhart. There are considerably few magicians who can use holy magic no matter how high level a magician one was. The chance of being able to use it was the same as for beginner or intermediate magicians. Because it was not in proportion to a magician's ability, those using holy magic were valuable their significance increasing furthermore as not many people were able to do it. Also, excessive usage of holy magic by the user actually diminished it. Come to think of it, Alfred Shizu made me use holy magic at the end there was such a guidance. Wasn't there? So, who'll use holy magic then? Dot. Cuns. Well, my disciple will do it. Burkhart. Burkhart San declared, calling me his disciple given that he's my master's master. It wouldn't be incorrect to call me like that considering I was the disciple of his disciple. Eh, hey, I will do it, dot. Wendlin, boy, there is no one but you. Burkhart, that is although that's certainly true. Wendlin, I understand Burkhart San's point. To defeat that bone dragon holy magic is necessary and since I can use it, it makes sense that I am suited to fight it. But even so, I'd like you to reconsider and think about it. I am just a kid who is not yet 12 years old and my combat experience amounts to no more than dealing with a ferocious bear such me, dealing with a ridiculously large bone dragon that is far too unreasonable. That's impossible. I have never been in a situation where I had to fight a monster yet. Wendlin. There are many first times for every human. Burkhart. While that is certainly true. I feel like I'd like to refrain from such first time. In what world would the debut fight of an adventurer apprentice be against a dragon? Dot. Wendlin. That would be here. Or rather, if you don't fight, everyone here will die. Show some fighting spirit. If it was Alfred, he would say I'm off, with a smiling face. Burkhart. Those words. That's unfair. Wendlin. For me master was a person risking his life in pursuit of greatness. He died early without ever being able to fully use his talents. Therefore I have an obligation to live the life of a magician in his stead. For the sake of making the great teacher Alfred Rienfeld known throughout the world, I, Wendlin von Benno Bormister, had to carry on. Even if I usually am carefree, lazy and selfish on this I won't concede. This bone dragon somehow resembles a large maquette. Wendlin. Dot. Note, like a dragon model showing its bone structure, in case some were not familiar with the word maquette. Ah, just a little, the materials are expensive after all. Burkhart. Thus, by Burkhart San's explosive statement, my first real fight against a monster would be against an ancient dragon turned undead, making this the worst debut battle one could imagine to face. The strategy is simple the boy rushes out using flight, magic and cleanses the bone dragon in one go. Burkhart. No, no, that's not what you call a strategy. Dot. Wendlin. There is no time to set up an elaborate strategy. Burkhart. That is a correct realization however I still am quite unhappy. Wendlin. On the bridge, the ship's captain, who left the matter of extermination of the pursuing ancient dragon to Burkhartson, expressed words of gratitude towards me who was designated as the one performing the deed. Anyway, since it was indispensable to fight outside it was necessary to prepare properly it was then that Erwin, who had joined us, called out to me with a worried expression. Well I pray for your safety. Erwin, don't worry as long as our attacks hit. Wendlin, even if I were to attack it, my level of magic power is too low and thus it is impossible to cause a fatal wound I'm sorry. Erwin. The captain had already informed everyone on board their ship about the dragon chasing us. Usually the place would have erupted in a state of panic, 
But the captain continued by telling everyone that Burkhardt Ringstadt and his excellent disciple were on board the ship this caused them to calm down before long and be certain of their safety. As expected of Burkhardt San, being the Brithhilda Margrave's prided magician, I suppose if it were Alf, he would generally win though from what I've heard we're at a suitable disadvantage, but you should also be our best chance. Burkhardt, for an undead of this level. There seems to be no other way than by acting suitably and putting all of one's strength into their magic power to get rid of it. Petty tricks and their likes are pointless. All that's needed is to fire the holy magic into the undead ancient dragon to safely put it to rest. It seems to be a battle of power rather than technique, huh? Anyway, pay attention to your senses and fire away that's all there is to it. Burkhart. Burkhart San will remain on the ship in case the bone dragon decided to use its breath. That was a necessary measure as there was no meaning in defeating the dragon at great pains while the ship was sunk beforehand. The boy will perform the main role as for me. I will make sure the ship doesn't get a single scratch. Burkhart. Although we didn't know what kind of breath the bone dragon spits. Burkhart San made efforts to prepare deploying a magical barrier for the sake of protecting the entire ship. If the breath attack should be aimed at you during flight, I will cast a magical barrier on you. Save your mana till the end so you can focus on cleansing the dragon with holy magic. After all, you are Alfred's disciple. Burkhart, the simultaneous deployment of various magic spells, the prided special ability master excelled in. I also learned this skill and increased the amount of simultaneously deployed magic spells to three in the past six years. However I still have a long way to go as master was able to use up to seven magic spells at the same time but there is nothing I can do about that now. One should be cautious to not make blunders due to haste. For example, even if the opponent is a legendary ancient dragon, the match will be over in an instant. Wendlin. At the immediate rear of the ship the bone dragon was approaching, steadily closing the gap while soaring through the sky there was only little time left before the preparation of, holy, magic was finished and I had to leave. The gathering of mana had already started once it finishes. I have to hurry and rush off this ship to cast the magic at the bone dragon. Truthfully, the time window for deciding victory or defeat was small what made it kind of a gamble. Boy. Set up the flight magic to make your body float once you leave, do not forget to adjust your velocity as well. Burkhart. Yes. Wendlin. If I were to forget it, I would be instantly left far behind by the ship and the dragon. Trying to catch up then by flight would be a waste of time with my mana that's why this was a crucial matter without having to say as much. Boy, once this is over, training will resume at full power so, don't die. Burkhart. I don't intend to die at such age well then. Wendlin. Upon my nod Burkhart San and Erwin opened the door towards the back of the ship in one go. Without any problems I flew out. Immediately following my exit, the bone dragon began on a wide scope to spit its breath which was similar to a threateningly black fog full of malice. Hey, that's dangerous. Dot. Wendlin. Starting to prepare severely. I invoked a magical barrier at once. Burkhart San as well had finished the deployment of his magical barrier enveloping the entire ship almost instantly. After all Burkhart San was the teacher of my teacher. The magical barrier enveloping the entire magic airship completely defended against the breath attack of the bone dragon. Way to go. Well done for being able to break it up. Dot. Wendlin. Confirming the ship's safety for a moment. I invoked my mana I had saved for the sake of this moment in almost no time to cast the holy magic. The bone dragon was thoroughly engulfed in the highly concentrated holy magic. Wendlin. Because there was a risk that the beam of light I used on master before to let him pass on could be evaded, I decided to invoke the magic this time with such an image in mind. The bone dragon was engulfed completely in a bluish white light characteristic to the holy magic attribute cast by me. The holy light bathed the bone dragon for several dozen seconds and caused it to raise a severe howl of agony. During this time, the bone dragon was recklessly thrashing around swinging its claws and tail. Even though I prevented the attacks with my magical barrier, the force of the impact from the attacks of the bone dragon caused me to be knocked back. As I was knocked back the aim of the holy magic I casted with trouble shifted and the bone dragon was released from its grasp. Just like that the chance to finish the bone dragon in one go vanished. While eagerly trying to control my position with flight magic, I had to defend against its attacks. Not yet until that bastard can't move at all anymore. 
Wendlin. I channeled even more mana continuing the holy light. Thereupon the howl of the bone dragon gradually began to weaken in the end it entirely stopped moving remaining still on the spot. Seeing the response to the rush of magical power, it seemed like the undead monster finally stopped all its activity completely. Comparing it to the time when I cleansed master, the body doesn't seem to disappear, huh? Dot. Wendlin. Still, as one would expect of an ancient bone dragon, even though it was bathed in holy light for an extended time not even one bone is damaged. Rather, because it was released from its undead state, the bones emitted a beautiful brilliance. A few seconds after the holy light diminished, the airborne dragon's skeletal structure retaining the figure of bones started to gradually break apart and the parts dropped towards the ground one by one as the bones which lost the state of undead only were an inorganic matter this was to be expected. Being pulled by gravity and falling down one could call it a natural conclusion. Oh tilde I, boy. Collect the bones, so wasteful. Dot. Burkhart. Burkhart San shouted towards me, who was floating in the air in order for me to collect the bones which were in there. Process of breaking apart and dropping towards the ground. Although those were the bones of a legendary ancient dragon, I still didn't think it would be a good idea to collect the bones of an undead. Then again, there might be no problem as they were safely cleansed with my holy magic. Quickly I successfully collected all the bones before they were able to reach the ground at times like this the magical bag was convenient after all. And I succeeded in retrieving another mysterious object to approximately two meters directly below, there was a naturally shaped stone casting a beautiful bright red pure light most likely this was the dragon's magical core without the magical bag I wouldn't have been able to pick it up in the sky. In books it was mentioned that every monster possessed such a core within their bodies containing the monster's spirit. After processing this magic core it will turn into a magic stone then it could be used to recharge diminished mana. Adventurers should always collect the magic cores of monsters they defeated this was also written in the reference book of the prep school e even in class, the teacher had emphasized this point. As expected, my mana is almost at its limit for today. Dot. Wendlin. When I returned to the ship after collecting the dragon bones and the magic core, my mana already was down to the breaking point of exhaustion. If there was another dragon, I would definitely go to the netherworld. However, an entire set of dragon bones and an outrageously large magic core, ha huh, that's quite the large profit, isn't it? Dot. Wendlin. Although many people greeted me, who defeated an undead ancient dragon, with joyful cheers, it seemed Burkhart San couldn't help it to be worried about the aforementioned magic core. In answer to a request, I took it out of my magic bag this caused the surroundings once more to raise their cheers of joy in an increased volume. Certainly, it's quite big. Burkhart, although this magic airship is moved by a magic stone, its size is at the most 50 centimeters in diameter. Cuns. The overall length of the magic airship exceeded 100 meters and was fed with energy by such a magic stone still it was only a quarter in size of the huge magic core in front of their eyes. Then, just how much could be accomplished with a magic stone four times in diameter? I started to feel very uneasy about such a praised value. Let's see for a magic stone of that size you can estimate a market price of 1000 platinum coins. Artur. As if hearing the voice in my mind. One merchant called out to me while nodding with an un uh. The age was about 50 years, I think. Judging by his attire, it was a merchant conducting considerably big business. Because he took the magic flight for one gold coin even if it is the lowest fair cost, he couldn't be an insignificant merchant. Artur, you want the magic core after all? Dot. Burkhart. Ah, if it is me, I will start with a price of 1200 platinum coins. Artur. It seemed that he was an acquaintance of Burkhardt San and a wealthy merchant to boot. While the pair looked at the magic core, they were chatting with each other showing their good relationship. 1200 platinum coins. Although it's rare. Do you have this much? Dot. Owen. Well you, are you a friend of the tiny hero donor who defeated that ancient dragon? Dot. Artur. I am a classmate in the same adventurer's prep school as him. Owen. Owen greeted and introduced himself to Artur San. I see is that so? Burkhart, your employer seems to be zealous in raising fine adventurers. Artur. That guy is fairly skilled with the sword so much, that you can hear the lower grades of the Knight Order talking about it. Burkhart. Such a youthfulness that's quite splendid. Artur. Dot. Note, 
The name of Wendlin's father is also Arthur, right? Don't get confused. Oops, we were talking about the market price of this magic core the magic stone that is moving this magic airship. It was processed from a magic core of a fire drake who took residence in the Schnapps volcano and boasted an age of 7,000 years. Even though the size of it is only a quarter, it has critical significance for moving this magic airship as it is lost technology. In the auction where they put up the magic stone, a businessman with political ties, who had received a request by the kingdom, caused the bidding to be dropped. The amount of money that was paid in the end was 275 platinum coins. Artur, considering that this magic airship would be used as battleship in times of war, the value of the magic stone moving it wasn't low in the least. Considering it would be 27,5 billion yen in Japan, it can be said that the amount of money invested was far lower compared to nations in my previous life on Earth who owned such things as Aegis-class cruisers and nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. Then, such magic stone with four times the size? Dot, Owen. Er, uh, Owen it was. Naturally, it is at most a minimum estimation I while it may be true I want to have it even if I became this much of a big shot, the bidding in an auction would definitely drop the price. Artur. Such level of huge magic core can't currently be found in existence even in the neighboring nation Holy Empire Urquhart. In the Holy Empire Urquhart there are many ruins and dungeons inherited from the ancient magical civilization. Apparently within those ruins and dungeons such huge magic stones, which can't be produced with the current technological level at all, are excavated occasionally. However, even the auction won't be held this time. Artur. When the merchant called Artur murmured those words to himself, the surrounding nobles and the merchants agreed to his opinion and began to nod their heads in silent approval. Um, that is, dot. Wendlin. Oh that. That's a simple matter however, tiny hero dono for you there are various troublesome matters to settle in their royal capital. Artur. Troublesome matters like what? Dot. Wendlin. While not understanding what kind of troublesome matters were meant. The magic airship returned to the peaceful route and arrived half a day later safely at the royal capital. Although there was a delay of several hours due to the bone dragon, it was not so much of a delay as I suspected at first. I I Tilda, we were even treated like feudal lords. Burkhart, Burkhart San, is it all right to drink such an expensive sake in one go? Dot. Wendlin, it's all right boy. We saved the magic airship from being burned down by the breath attack of an ancient dragon after all. Burkhart, certainly, by enveloping the entire ship with his magical barrier, Burkhart San had properly protected it from the breath attack of the ancient dragon. I successfully stopped all signs of life of the undead ancient dragon by using holy magic, too. During the remaining half day, the captain arranged the most gorgeous room on the ship and guided us. Burkhart San and me as well as Erwin, to it. The fare usually would have been one gold plate which was about 10 million Japanese yen. It was quite the exclusive room usually only used by major merchants with political affiliations or important nobles. Inside the room there were luxurious ornaments, furniture and similar spread on top of the table there were various appetizing dishes served like a basket full of high priced fruits. There was an exclusive maid who could be asked to serve high class tea and cakes without restraints there even was a special wine cellar which could be used with no reserve. Owen and I drank non-alcoholic drinks due to our age, but Burkhart San lost all restraints gulping down obviously high priced sake. Although I suspected him to become a proper acute alcohol addict. It seems he is abnormally strong against alcohol. Without even a hint of hangover he wolfed down the delicious breakfast while asking for seconds. Did you like it, boy? The captain wished sincerely to express his gratitude for saving the ship, by changing our rooms it would have been rude towards his courtesy to hesitate and hold back. Burkhart, indeed, having emptied out that wine cellar. Wendlin, I I Tilda. I thoroughly enjoyed the high priced sake drinking this much I have had my share for one year. Burkhart. I don't know whether Burkhart San's simple point of view was true or not thus I ignored it. However, the captain and his crew certainly treated us politely without a hint of belittling us as we disembarked the ship the captain went even as far as seeing us off. Since you are the heroes who defeated an ancient dragon, the captain won't get angry over a little eating and drinking. 
Artur, for some reason Artur San was accompanying us. It seems he is the present master of a large scale company with its main office situated in the royal capital being able to do such things as coming and going into the royal palace. He was a person who was treated as businessmen with political ties in society besides, he used to be a famous adventurer back in the old days who also partied with Burkhardt San. By the way, that old aged fire drake which was mentioned earlier was subjugated by us. Burkhardt, I established the company with my share of monetary award. Artur, although they succeeded in subjugating the fire drake, Arthur received an injury which was not curable and fatal to an adventurer's life thus he started a second life as a merchant because it was a huge success, the injury from back then now was a nice memory. Then, this would be the second dragon extermination for Burkhart San. Wendlin, huh? What are you saying? Dot. Burkhart, after all Burkhart San protected the ship with his magical barrier while I cleansed it with holy magic wouldn't that count as group work? Dot. Wendlin, if Burkhart San had not defended the ship, the magic airship would have been sunk by the breath attack with its sickening color by the ancient dragon. Thus I insisted on Burkhart San having the claiming rights to half of the dragon's bones and the sale price of the magic core. In this case, without your holy magic the dragon extermination wouldn't have been possible in the first place I only protected myself, no more than that oh well, Erwin was aboard the ship too so. Give me one tenth of the profits on sale as a bodyguard fee. Burkhart, but. Wendlin, or rather boy, you should know that I'm more than wealthy enough at my age you don't need such a large amount of money anymore. Burkhart, in his early days he had been an elite adventurer making heaps of money and after his retirement Burkhart San served several noble families therefore it seems he had amassed a fortune that rivaled that of nobles and their likes. Thus I was told that he didn't need half of the share of the looted prize. Moreover I was appointed by my lord to deal with his business here because of that, due to the approaching burdens, you can just think of it as nuisance fee. Burkhart, nuisance fee, it is, dot. Wendlin. As I didn't understand what Burkhart San meant, I tilted my head to the side in that situation. You seem to have trouble, boy you don't understand? Oh well, okay Artur, won't you come along for a little while and take care of it? Dot. Burkhart, the reward being? Dot. Artur, accordingly asking for a reward, as one would expect of a person in the occupation of merchant. Which reminds me. You were a merchant you should be grateful to consider yourself being close friends with such talented magicians such as Alf and me. Burkhart. Well, isn't it also poor taste to demand gratitude like this? Dot. Artur. Artur San, as the sole person comprehending nodded. Say, Iru do you know what these two people are talking about? Dot. Wendlin. Well, an enormously large amount of money can probably be obtained it might be related to that. Owen. Listen will be arrogant with the cake in the royal city. Burkhart, I couldn't grasp what those two were talking about more and more furthermore, Iru, who was next to me, didn't seem to understand it neither. Just a little bit longer and you will understand it well, I am off with this. Burkhart, I expected Burkhart San to act more or less like a leader but it seems he had business to attend to and thus left to head towards the harbor. Those of us remaining consulted the map that was attached to the letter by Eric Nissan, and after discussing the route we walked towards his house in front of the house there was a knight in dazzlingly bright armor together with an attendant visible. Considering the splendidness of the armor you could immediately tell that such a knight was a person of befitting high rank. I am here to deliver a message of the king regarding the matter of the ancient dragon extermination. Thank you for your trouble such being the case, you are now requested for an audience in the royal palace. Knight, so this is the nuisance Burkhart San wanted to avoid. I am extremely honored I shall visit at once. Wendlin, I will guide you there. Knight, if I didn't defeat the ancient dragon, far from coming to the royal capital I would actually have lost my own life. I asserted that this action was not a mistake. But, as a result I was forced to meet the king of this country. Interlude 01, I can't summon a familiar. Oh, right. I should raise a pet. Dot. Wendlin. I was given freedom in daytime but I actually don't have anything to do in this place. First, work help is prohibited since it can cause the inheritance dispute in territory. It has not been directly told but I was given a warning from Eric Nissan in the letter that comes regularly. Kurt Nissan won't have that much courage to go so far but. Wendlin. 
I can cultivate a new land and digging irrigation can alter contributed in land and road works. That's okay for a large territory. A great noble's family head will try to leave it as younger brother in high treatment that can be used. It can be useful as branch family head or a vassal with preferential treatment. Our Bormister family however, is poor. Only the second son's Hellman is married to the branch family. If I take active part and territory people who look at it directly will certainly start to say that I should become the Lord instead. It can be justified for a small territory. Contributed to the territory development with triumphant look and admired by territory people. Everyone and even the heir would say that I am more suitable as the next family head. You could be assassinated while asleep. I don't want to see my brother gruesomely killing one another. Wendlin. Human jealousy is frightening. I have experienced it several times even as second-rate trading company employees in my previous life. Let alone for a small kid to fight over as noble next family head. I'm afraid that I'd be killed while sleeping and called as died from illness. Magic no matter how can I use it would not be enough if I get caught off guard. Curtness and perhaps also more important as the next family head for status and territory though. I was not really needed. I can be declared as not needed instead. That's why it's better for you to pretend as useless prodigal son because Vil after all was treated as an oddball for a long time. Eric. I'm subtly damaged at the last sentences but Eric Nissan truly the smart one in Bormister house I might have fallen in love if I'm a woman. In no way to experience it personally as we're family but I can cooperate in anything for Eric Nissan, I would not hesitate to lend my hand. By that reason, I fly around freely in southern undeveloped land alone. I goes to Britburg about twice a week. But I cannot afford to make it public because if they know that I can teleport freely, the inheritance problem will get complicated. With that in mind, I have finally does not need to depend on dealer group that come to three times a year, if it was known that I could brought the necessary trade item as I like. That would be a big difference between me and Kurt Nissan. It became natural for me to replenish my supplies that way, so a difficult problem appear as what would happen after I am dead. Every kindness may not be rewarded even if there is a benefit in short term gains, it can cause large damage for long term which is bad with that circumstances. I limited my acquaintance in Britburg, I comes to Britburg to sell the catch that I had captured with traps and hunting from nearby farm village. I was Wendlin the dutiful son that does only shopping ask to return. I've relation with several staff of commercial guild, several gatekeeper that in rotation, several familiar shop owner and employees and library receptionist a Nissan. A Nissan in the library is not wearing glasses but she a beautiful woman who looks intellectual. I think she was a woman I'm in contact with most next to my mother in this world. The description above is something that I thought this way. There were many people in my previous life that keep pets because of loneliness. In living alone I am a mage in this world so it would be not strange for me to have a pets and familiar. Thinking that, I examine the magic related books that master left behind. That remind me, master didn't have any familiar because the reason was surprisingly easy. Familiar becomes mage eyes and ears. One that bears role to replenish magic to its master hence, only a human with high affinity with animals can form a contract. Alfred, simply put, only those that liked by animals can do it. Master said that but let me test it out. Wendlin, I did not think I can say good dog to a wolf but this is just a test. The perhaps one animal that by some chance attached to me to become my familiar. I who thought so take out rabbit meat from magic bag. Looks for the most close a pack of wolves and try to tempt it with meat. Look here. It's a delicious meat. Dot. Wendlin. New you 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 tilde. Dot. Wolves. They're also such a scene or speech in anime I have seen in old days but I am not really copying it so I keep trying to tame it. Then the sooner change. Gra gra. Dot. Wolf 1. You woo oo. Dot. Wolf 2. It's no use. Dot. Wendlin. Far from taming it. The pack of wolves on the contrary came at full speed trying to eat me alive. Honestly, I was a little scared. Damn it. It's not working. Dot. Wendlin. I know it's difficult for cross-species communication, and I was lead to gave up with the half being okay to be a loner. I mean, it is hard for human to communicate with animals. Dot. Wendlin. In the end, I knocked down all wolves that came attacking me which become a fur now. I can't eat the wolf meat because of its smell but the fur can be sold fairly well. It would have eaten much meat though if it becomes my familiar beast is so pathetic. Wendlin. I look for the next candidate while putting dozens of wolves fur in magic bag however, 
Every animal that I tempted out come showing its bare teeth to attack me. Well, it can be said as something normal but territory people in Bormister territory must be not come to the savage land quite often. Wolf, wild boar and also big deer. It is really belligerent even though it's not a monster. My stock for meat and fur only get increased. Wendlin. Eventually, there was no animal that can became my familiars. I defeat them all. What I had done is just increasing my stock in meat and fur. Oh well Alona is just fine. I'll just keep on training magic. Dot. Wendlin. Nothing changed even if I thought more about it. I who thought so start looking for something with detection magic while flying today. That is. Wendlin. Then I confirmed that the rocky mountain in front of me emitting thin light just now. I take some of the rock and use verification magic on it. The result that come out is a copper ore stone. I have no ability to distinguish a raw ore and gems but I can tell much with detection and verification magic easily. Now, in what way I can do my purify technique. If there is magic that I am devoted to, helping in rising my magical power and magic accuracy. That's mean it get faster as time goes. I need to go back to sleep at night I'll leave it like that for now. Wendlin mountain that generated the thin light was mainly produced copper. I can do full exploration tomorrow as I decide to back home today. I really want to sleep over but it can create a lot of problem for a miner like me. Copper, silver and also gold, maybe I can mind it a little. Wendlin. The next day, I keep investigate the mine that I found yesterday while eating rice while I ate breakfast at home. But I still want to eat rice so I am holding back at home. Cook the rice in a large pot that I bought in Britburg. I can put it out from magic bag to make rice ball. I can make a fresh rice balls that I can eat at any time. I make a stove in an instant with earth magic in the savage land and cook it at once with my own fire magic I saw it in CM a long time ago. That guy cooking with strong direct fire. At first, the rice blackened several time as the heat is too strong but I can even cook a delicious burnt rice now. The ingredient is a meat that are caught in savage land or boiled a seaweed and fish that are caught in the sea with miso and soy sauce. I make it with eggs and vinegar which the material that I have purchased in Britburg and stir it with wind magic. The no need to frequently preparing a huge bowl that I've created. As expected of magic it is very convenient, but no matter how versatility it was. There's still a problem for mass production and spreading it I had no obligation to spread it, so I've no complaint though. I don't really want to sell it a mass this is enough for me. Wendlin. This is only a self-sufficient so I only do what magic can perform. Magic training is also like killing two birds with one stone. This business talk after I get out from house first. Is there even a merchant that will try to deal with the eight years old kid even if he was a noble? I first need to leave the house as a grow up. I can't do anything about worldly things doing as I like the wilderness alone is some kind of stress reduction for me. What's that animal? Dot. Wendlin. I found one bear in a little distance away after I had finished creating copper ingot as a test. It's quite big. It can't be compared with black bear that I saw in the bear ranch in my previous life. The bear also not get angry when looking at me. It's look at me with great interests. Maybe it was this. The so-called much's wavelength. It was rare for bears as familiar but it's not impossible. The possibility for this bear becomes my familiars is high. I can do it. Let's do this. I was secretly full of joy but outwardly calmly taking out rabbit meat from magic bag and try to show it to the bear. Then the bear sniff it while approaching me little by little. So my familiar is a bear how about its migration? Well, I can think about it later. Beside I feel exited as I can be put on its back with that size. But a nightmare happen as if shattering my dream. The bear suddenly approaching closely and attack me with its teeth exposed. Honestly, this is quite dangerous. I'm glad I have also learned handling my body along with training in the sword every morning even if I have no talent in it. Damn it. How dare you playing with my pure heart. Dot. Wendlin. The bear head eventually hit with magic arrow that summoned from heaven, leaving a good fur meat and liver that seems to be used as medicine. With that difficulty in cross-species communication, I have confirmed again the fact that I am a loner. Interlude 2, The Bride and Mother-in-Law Conversation Can I ask you something mother-in-law? Emily. What is it Emily San? Dot. Joanna. It's about my brother-in-law, Wendlin Kun. Emily. I am referred to as Emily von Benno Bormister not too long ago. I was called Emily von Mainbach. What it means is that I was married from the Mainbach house my parents' house, 
into the Bormister House. The Mainbach House is of noble lineage however, the house is in charge of a small territory within the Helmut Kingdom so it was natural for my parents to decide on a political marriage for me even if the Bormister House that I was married into, was in the same situation. I do not know what is on Kurt's, my husband's, mind as a woman, I can't escape political marriages even if I longed for a marriage born from love like in the storybooks in my house. This longing is not really a sin either I have no complaints about the marriage itself albeit a knight peerage house in a remote location, it's not a bad story as the second daughter of another knight peerage house, I was married to the heir son, the second daughter usually won't be married to such a person at best, I would have been paired up with the heir of an important retainer with a great noble as the lord, for a same ranked noble family, the second son onwards would usually be placed in the vassal houses of the noble, I would have at least been the mistress or the second wife of a great noble it was also not uncommon for the lower class nobility like the Mainbach house to partly sell one of their family members to a big shot merchant, so although I had no choice as to who I would marry, I thought that I was lucky given that I had married the heir of the Bormister house, though I was a little surprised when I saw my mother-in-law twining rope, but still, the sight of a noble lord working diligently to cultivate the land they were in charge of or hunting was not an unusual sight for a noble house in a rural area with a small amount of territory to their name. That kid. Joanna. It's just that one person. A kid where his everyday behavior couldn't really be understood. The youngest child of the Bormister house, a boy named Wendlin. He was born as the youngest child from mother-in-law whose age exceeded 40 at the time of his birth this was pretty rare in and of itself since it's normally the young mistress that gives birth as such a time. In fact, the current lord of the Bormister house also has a mistress it's not really that rare for the mistress to stay in her parents house. However, this mistress in particular was the village head's daughter I have only known her to the extent of meeting each other at the wedding. The same goes for her two sons and two daughters that I would have less opportunity to meet in the future. This was mainly because of the social standing difference between the mistress and the legal wife her four children had no inheritance rights, no right to take over the village head house or being married into another village head's house in the future. Since the social standing was different through the half-blood connection. Nothing can be done about the situation. He was a kid that I have given birth to but I had no choice but to leave him alone. Joanna, mother-in-law said heavily even she had not expected an eighth son to be born. She had not looked after him for a very long after he had been born. This was because the villagers were in a period where they had to make up for the damage received from the expedition to Demon Forest. Every day after that disaster had been spent on land. Reclamation as such, it was natural that she have left him unattended at many a time. But let alone showing his dissatisfaction over the treatment he received. He seemed to have been just reading books in the study room alone. And as a result, his literacy skills were much better compared to us for a kid in his age. He just wanted to be like Eric Sand that had become independent not too long ago. Joanna. I have only spoken to Eric San a little but he seemed like quite a sharp person. I think he might have been a more suitable lord compared to my husband. I felt that my husband maintained a distant relationship because of that but Eric San, the person in question has already left the house. It is very likely that he will pass the test to be a petty official in the imperial city. Maybe, that person might have passed it by a large margin. Not just that. Joanna, according to mother-in-law, Vulcan at the age of six, could already talk to Eric San as an equal even though Eric San was ten years older Vulcan's literacy and math skills were above average. And he can also use magic. Joanna, I can't dare to hear to what extent he can use it. Still. He will not have to worry about his life even if he becomes independent after growing up father-in-law and my husband would likely have come to the same conclusion. Why such talent was left by itself. Dot. Emily. That was strange. With such a precious talent, how much would work progress if that child used his magic to develop the territory? It would have been a great chance for the Bormister house. You would normally think that way. Joanna. But such argument was not as valid if one looked at the bigger picture. The Bormister territory is small and is located in a remote area. Joanna, that does not mean they couldn't support themselves but it was a territory that no one wanted to live with all of its inconveniences. Actually, almost all of the inhabitants of the territory had participated in the wedding. Despite leading a modest daily life, a large amount of food and drinks were served on that day only. This was often done during important ceremonial occasions like in my parents' territory. 
the wedding was considered a festival for the territory with few pieces of entertainment mixed in. It's because of all that a large amount of meat was served that day. Joanna. It was officially seen as an achievement for Eric San who is an expert with the bow but in actual fact, the real effort came from Vulcan who could use magic. All the more reason for him to cooperate then. Emily. It would become a family feud if it happens. Joanna. The distance between the territory's population and their lord is close. Couple this with the fact that if anyone knew that one of the lord's sons could use magic and this was in a closed of off, rural area that did not have a lot of territory, that of course would influence the territory's population to appeal for a substitute of the next family head to father-in-law. Normal farmers might hesitate to do so but the opinion of village head is usually enough to make this appeal directly to the current lord. Since they're influential people in the territory, I cannot imagine what kind of confusion would happen if that occurs. Joanna. There is no way everyone will agree about that. Disputes would thus likely occur in the Kurt faction and the Wendlin faction. And reinforcements could not be expected from the outside even if confusion happens in the kingdom's territory since even the territory's neighbors would need to pass the mountain range first. It would be your downfall as the wife for the next family head as well if that happens. Joanna. She was right. I who has just become the legal wife of the next family head why would I try to throw that away? You're right. Emily. It looks ugly but world is not that naive. Rather than bore Mr. House being developed by Vulcan as the family head, I choose that current life should be maintained by my husband as the family head. I'd never choose any other option. Vul, fortunately is not interested in this territory. Joanna. She's right. Since he can use magic, he could become an adventurer or gain employment from other nobles the income from either must be better. So it's okay for Vil to do as he pleases that would be better for both parties. Joanna, even I felt this was a little cold but this is the only form of affection mother-in-law can show for her son. Holding conflicting interest in the territory and one's own children fighting amongst each other it really happens quite often and nothing can be compared to such a nightmare. I understand that but unexpected things can happen in the world. Emily, you're right, unexpected things can happen. Joanna, both of us sighed I felt like I was able to befriend with mother-in-law even if it's just a little. We are now family for life anyway so I need to get along well with parents-in-law. Interlude 03, I don't need such poor territory. This is bad. Dot. Wendlin. I'm planning to leave the house for another years but the village headmen in the territory suddenly want me to succeed the territory. As result, I have declared that I'm unwilling to cooperate. This is not the time to be joking around this also can lead to the worst consequences of killing each other with brother. But I am not sure what I should do my previous life experience is useless. Born in mediocre salary men family, with only one younger brother beside me, which family feud would not happen I mean, I feel scared on the contrary to those taking part in family feud discussion. Anyhow. It was preferable for me to avoid contact with Klaus. Well, I'll make full use of detection magic to avoid contact with others except my own family. Klaus after all would not be shouting in front of my house saying, I want to discussing about changing the next family head to Wendlin Sama, please come out. My daily life had become who is up early in the morning and return late at night to sleep at home it was to the point of me not taking meal at home. I had been eating at Britberg shop and self-cooking. I was attacked by a feeling of being partly leaving the house but I am still legally a minor under Bormister House's protection, I was one with inheritance rights in the fifth positions. It become even more troublesome because of that. My only salvation may have been my family didn't say anything even when I didn't take the meal. Vulcan, letter from Eric San has arrived. Emily, thanks sister-in-law San. Wendlin, when I returning home late at night. Emily San who is Kurt Nissan Bride handed the letter to me in front of my room I guess she is the most I have conversation within Bormister House. His handwriting is polite he also used kanji. Emily, Emily sister-in-law San have been impressed seeing Eric Nissan handwriting such as the letter address. Despite in the same night peerage family in rural area, she actually able to read and write with kanji mixed as the second daughter she can be married into merchant so her parents allowed her to study. Since Eric Nissan a government official. Wendlin. It was explained before that Hiragana and Katakana intended for common people, when the writing style mixed with kanji, ramaji and English word, it was intended for noble or governmental matter. Beside that, 
when kanji is mixed in an individual private letter like this, there was an advantage of looking intellectual to others. Maybe it is simply for impression, a kind of vanity or an appeal aspect also strong. The letter envelopes only use kanji in express and southern though. For more simplia, there is an advantage that only I in this house can read the letter when it was unsealed. Only Emily Sist in Lausanne is the exception in this past few years. The letter is something only Vulcan and me in this house can read. Emily. Letter for Emily sister in Lausanne also coming from her home occasionally, but it was normal for her not to be able to write reply to the letter that come frequently. Mail system also exists in this world. A dedicated receptionist in commercial guild of some town, depending on the distance with the fees paid in advance. At least about 5 copper plate or 5,000 yen, as long the partner can be trusted. It can be sent also to Akut Holy Empire, the neighboring countries, but it can exceed about 5 silver plate or 50,000 yen when the country is different. It was normal for it to arrive for several months it was possible for quick delivery but it take extra money when used. By the way, receptionists for mail does not exist in our territory the letter that arrived at Britburg Commercial Guild can only arrived being carried by the caravan that come three times a year for sending a letter. Just pass it along with the fee to the caravan that come to Bormister territory. It is comparatively expensive as the caravan must be paid to carry the letter sending and getting a letter only Emilis and me so it was not that inconvenient. And when Emily's sister in Lausanne sends a letter to her parents house, it take two silver coins for paying the caravan. She told me that she can only send letter once a year. I don't have any money as I never got any pocket money since childhood. So further pays for it and I had to hand it over the catch that I captured with magic as the price later. I said to father that Emily sister in Lausanne can send a letter three times as the caravan only come three times a year, I give him a bit more catch. Father didn't give any response, but Emily sister in law San after that had entrusted the letter every time the caravan came so my request seems to have been here. After that, Emily sister in Lausanne began to speak to me often. There are many kanji in Eric San's letter. Emily, maybe it was occupational disease. Dot. Wendlin, I made it as occupational disease for now, but more than half the kanjas used is actually on purpose, as further and brother can't read kanji, it can work as a kind of code so they can't understand the content even if the letter is read. Fortunately or unfortunately, they never opened the letter and read it even once until now. Imperial City is it, it must be glamorous. Emily, Emily sister in laws and parents family also lives in rural area but not to the extent like our house, so there also a feeling of longing for a large cities like Imperial City. I'd like to go the once I grow up. Wendlin, I want to go the once before I die. Emily, I go back to my room after we done with the small talk. It was a small room used by four brothers long ago, now since it not used except for sleeping. It feels spacious and greatly desolate. I sat on the bed opening the letter immediately. I had in fact, consulted Eric Nissan about Klaus's matter. You seem to have met with bad experience actually. I also have had the same problem in the past. Eric Klaus that bastard, according to the letter from Eric Nissan. He told me that he have experienced the same thing before he leave the house. He was persuaded like, you can become the next lord rather than Kurt Ono who can't even write kanji. It is possible to enrich the territory when planned. But that his old trick, don't be deceived by his humbleness. Eric, so that village headman Klaus was on Eric Nissan blacklist. He had experience in war and he filled the duties as village headman perfectly he was competent but. Eric, at the same time, on the side he's also selfish. Although there are also other village headmen present in Bormister territory in order not to get overtaken from him. He presented his daughter to father as a mistress. Eric, as a result, he was entrusted in calculate and recorded all tax revenue of residents in the territory. Of course the other village headman didn't like him. This is my own prediction, maybe he will get some benefit from making Vol or me as the next boar Mr. House's family head it was written in your letter that Klaus brought half younger brother and younger sisters. Eric, when I became the next lord disregard the other brothers, my relation with other brothers of the same mother naturally will get worse. It would be difficult for me to get some help from government side. With regard to second son's Hellman, he might give a clear decision of him already in another house. Of course he will expect that our family will let stepbrother or sister to marry there is a significant benefit for Klaus. 
Eric. Eric Nissan said that it is merely his prediction. Klaus will be guilty if he put me under the same invitation. That does not mean what he's saying is wrong. Eric. Since there is a vast savage land. When developed under excellent lord regardless eldest son as successor, bore Mr. House could growth into baronet, baron or even viscount. In that plan, his grandchildren in the future may get favorable treatment for inheriting father's blood. Indeed. It can be said that territory development and Klaus family's development are set as a countermeasure, don't meet with Klaus. Eric, there is nothing I can do other than this. As for talking with Father like a good kid, it will be catastrophe if Father did not notice anything. Eric, for Father, Klaus existence equal to traitor he can be punished accordingly, but no one in our territory that can do tax calculations accurately other than Klaus. For such a house to raise in title in the future. It sound like a joke to me. When father and brother know about this, Klaus would be dismissed but if confusion happens in territory some of that resentment that come from confusion will also go to Vil. Eric, it is not my fault but they may come to blame me. Quite unreasonable, it potentially happen in the future though. Did you thought that you can prevent that damage if you frequently communicate with family and territory people? That also impossible. Eric, it already exposed long ago that I can use magic. If I suddenly come in contact with territory people, they will have expected Wendlin as the new lord all the more. My family will shun me for that then Klaus will draw near saying step brother and sister come to lend a hand. It disgusted me just thinking about it. I believe that it is for the best if will to leave the house as the lazy eighth son who does not work to help the territory. Eric, I don't want to meet Klaus. I don't want to see him either. While I keep my current life now, I need money to leave the house quickly I decide to follow Eric Nissan advice. He is a really good brother for giving advice to me. He is without a doubt would be the only person I recognize as family in this world. I write a thank you letter, I put the gemstone that I pick in the savage land inside and sent it with express delivery price. Money also essential to leave the house quickly. The answer exists surprisingly in close place. I wonder why I didn't notice it. It was very simple. I finally leave the house after I turn 12 years old. Interlude 04, a man named Wendlin von Benno Bormister. Amazing. I, Inna Suzanne Rembrandt, was purely surprised. I with my childhood friend of the same age who also my best friend was saved. Earth wall instantly formed to prevent wolf attack. The cunning beasts were annihilated by the indiscriminate firing of magic arrow. Due to my kinetic vision I got while training in spearmanship, about two ordinary arrows also flew, and seized the life of two wolves. However, even this archery is amazing if one think normally, would paled before that magic. Because of talent, the number of mages is extremely few and among them, it is rare for a mage to be regarded as amazing. Actually, among the mage that had been hired in our Britburg territory, only Burkhardt Sama the senior retainer mage can use something equals to the current magic. Moreover, he also win his fame as first class adventurer more than three decades, he was given an honor from the kingdom by killing a dragon in the past. Who on earth can use magic comparable to him? I who think so, checked the owner who shoots this magic. Following this, it was the figure of my classmate in adventure at prep school we enrolled to at the same time. The owner of this magic is Wendelin von Benno Bormister which is my classmate of the same age. It can't be for his ability to be this far. When I enrolled into adventure at prep school, there is one rumor spreading around. The vassals of Britburg Margrave House who is my parents family lord, a poor knight family beyond the mountain range. The rumored eighth son of Bormister family pass the scholarship test by showing off his magic. It's not hard to just to enroll into the school, but it is difficult to pass the scholarship test with magic. Due to the fact that, however precious magic is, one can't obtain a scholarship by just producing a spark or a glass full water. There is no way a magic of that level could be useful in subjugate the monster. Many of such person give up their plan and challenge the scholarship test with the sword and the bow. With such circumstances, Wendlin von Benno Bormister passed the scholarship test purely with only his talent in magic. Naturally, Brithhilda Margrave Sama should have heard the information even I heard the rumor from my family. He can use at least intermediate magic despite being a minor, it'll be natural to establish a claim for the future. If something like that didn't happen, it would not be strange if someone said he was disqualified as important noble.
but regarding this matter, it's a good thing for the current head of Brithhilda Margrave he was appointed as the family head of Brithhilda Margrave house when I was just born. Until this day, that bitter failure will be taken as material in conversation by high ranked people and even my family. To succeed with the remains predecessor who was killed in battle have left in the failure of Demon Forest Expedition twenty years ago, with the important noble controlled other territories enduring for a long time the harassment and interference of vassal in a bad relationship while struggling in governing the territory. He has received an evaluation better than his predecessor. And also, about the failure in Demon Forest Expedition, there are few people who believe in the public declaration such as the cause is from Boar Mr. House side which have abide the request. The predecessor is killed in battle. And when the first reports came from military leaders and troops that had almost annihilated, there a person who had vomit blood hearing that report. It was Daniel Sama the eldest son who is the brother of their current head of Brithhilda Margrave. He was a genius. He was loved by the previous head, it seems that he was violated with fatal disease. His sickness has progressed greatly, when he hear that report, he's shouting since their Amadeus within Brithhilda Margrave family, despite everything is fine, father, you fool, and apparently die after. Exactly. His death is suitable to be called as death in a fit of anger. And a miraculous medicine that can be effective against such illness by creating it from ancient dragon that might live in demon forest. It is a scenario which anyone already understands afterwards when written up to here. The predecessor do a thoughtless expedition to save his eldest son who gets a fatal disease, asking for reinforcements to bore Mr. House as the Lord. In this case, it would not be an exaggeration to say that he forced it and it was an utter failure. In this age without war, not the country army but lord's army that near 2000 people die in battle, it certainly would be talked about by those in royal palace and nobles. Moreover, even the family head were among that killed in battle. Naturally, for the pride of important noble, it tries to conceal the fact as much as possible. In this expedition, Brithhilda Margrave accept the request of Bormister House but they calculated incorrectly the force of the demon lying hidden in magic forest, taking many sacrifice as result. If one know the situation a little, one would immediately find the explanation is a lie. But a lie also can become a fact sometimes. For Royal Palace, the confusion in Brithhilda Margrave House that controlled the southern part will only be a hindrance of the peaceful southern governance. For this reason, Brithhilda Margrave House didn't say anything about the circumstances to goes on expedition, even to lie that it was the request of Bormister House side, the fact that the purpose is for the son with serious illness can't be denied. Besides, they did not intend to give some punishment by forcing the responsibility to Bormister House. Everyone without a doubt know the truth but must not speak of that truth. For me who still a kid, it's a story of dirty politic in society. I feel pity for Bormister House but I hear that Brithhilda Margrave Sama had compensation to the soldiers accordingly or by accommodation in trade. As it harmed their prestige, they tried to cover it with money or worldly benefits. This is the reason why only a few people in the vassals or the soldier of Brithhilda Margrave House who are holding a grudge against Bormister House. It's an inevitable method from time to time. There's some people who think that only those have lose their family or foolish enough without knowing if the rumor is the truth, seriously criticizing Boar Mr. House. I don't really hold any estrangement to Boar Mr. House. Even if someone tell me the story when I just have been born, it honestly troubling. Father and brothers might have a little estrangement as a lot of disciple who went to my parents' family dojo had been lost. But at least I never hear them said it openly. Thanks for helping us. In air, I expresses my thanks immediately to Bore Mr. House's eighth son. To tell the truth, it may be fairly dangerous without this rescue we had been a little overconfident. Rembrandt House which my parents' family have been. Vassal served as a spearmanship master to Brithhilda House from generations. Knight with interest in martial art makes a good appearance even in a time of peace. Sword is regarded highly as shown in the word when one take an oath in case being appointed as a noble. Even in such ceremonies. It's common for high ranked people to prepare a beautiful, expensive sword. However, in actual battlefield, it is important to be able to use bow from long distance or spear with long reach. Many wounded were killed in battlefield because of these two. Often talked about in sagas, such as fellow knight using the sword upon one to one fight almost rarely happen which is normal. Hence, 
the status and treatment of the military officer who teach the spear are actually more higher. But it's not the time for a third daughter to be carefree. It is more difficult for the third daughter to be married into the same vassal's house. I learned spearmanship since childhood for the sake of independence. I could say that I am lucky as I had the talent in that field. Father disappointedly said that it'd be better if you're a man. I can't still match my father in techniques but I actually have a bit more magic power than ordinary person. With a little training, I can put out about a few glasses water in a day at insignificant amount but this magic power is quite useful. I can pour this magic power a little at time into my own body to strengthen my physical ability. The result of all my effort in training this technique, I no longer lose to further and brothers in a mock match of actual combat form. It just that it resulting an unfortunate consequence at the same time. I came to think that they hate me. I know that they love me as a daughter and a younger sister. But I am hated as disciple of spearmanship dojo. If I am a man. There were choices for me to remain as a teacher in my parents' family with that skill. But I am the woman. The term for third daughters as a bride is not that good. The skill in spearmanship does not really matter to become a bride. Rather, it would be unpleasant when there is a rumor of the husband is weaker than the bride so no one will accept me. With such circumstances, I am in a Suzanne Rembrandt, entered the adventurer prep school. With my speciality in spearmanship, I have passed the scholarship test. But are you guys okay with the wolf fur? Dot. Wendlin, the eighth son of Bormister House who helped us, rather than something were missing, it feel like he was different from other. Without saying any such condescending thing is preferable here. To begin with, he had heard about the distribution of the acquired fur. He's a strange person. Furthermore, he treat us dinner as thanks for being able to earn the money today. Is he a soft-hearted person? In any case, he was that famous eighth son of poor Nighthouse. That living style must be really poor. That it can't be compared with mine. Despite being the daughter of Vassal House, I don't want to be in such situation. I know about the financial condition of the nearby small noble house. Precisely because I know that I feel sad about it. This world is peaceful without war. That's why, in royal family, noble and vassal it was common for the child to be in sorrow being not able to succeed. Unlike the boy who also having the way to the military. Even that is extremely narrow for women, obtaining a good family to be married into or tries to be successful as adventurer just like me. Only for the former, it would be hard with social position like me. Being the mistress or second wife of retired aged noble or become third to fifth mistress of small territory noble, with better luck to be married into lower class merchants, or just become the bride to a wealthy farmer. If it was like this, it would be better being independent adventurer. Someone before saying dangerous thing like, Will there be a war? I thought in my heart that someone will advocate it. My turn might come when Noble were reduced in war. In as fine listen, I know your skill in sword is good, and your skilled in bow too but Wendlin magic is an entirely different matter. The result will be the same if Wendlin were paired with others, right? Dot. In a, even though we gathered to eat, I unintentionally said unnecessary thing to Erwin who also the partner of poor Mr. House eighth son. But in fact, most people still want to see the situation. Many prep school student had their eyes on the eighth son of Boar Mr. House who could use magic. The boys, as party members candidate. The girls, as a partner plus marriage. I feel it's still too early but there also such competition. Especially noble child who enrolled to this adventurer's prep school, who already half commoner, desperate for their own future. It seems I look down upon commoner if I say it like this but everyone were born in the brink of losing their status and treatment. Being desperate, many people think drop kick others is fine. The world of noble is really a tough world by no means. It was something unspeakable which being glossed over. If I am doing well with Wendlin, he was an excellent mage so he could be ennobled. Life should be guaranteed with the income even if that didn't happen. If he become the retainer of some noble, it possible for him to establish a house as that noble vassal for generations, as retainer or vassal for the boy, with girl naturally can become a wife. Despite being in adventure at prep school, there must be many people who have already fixed their eyes on that second life. It's a cruel and realistic tale, and there is no way below the second daughter and the second son of noble or vassal didn't care about it. First come, first served don't even think being shameless is not good. Inherit one's family and territory. Married with the eldest son or the eldest daughter of good families, those who think about such thing would be criticized behind their backs. But one were in blessed situation at best, 
noble child in adventurer prep school would not be treated as half noble. Adventurer earn a lot of money had nothing to do with social status, or gain fame being employed by other nobles. Otherwise, retired from realizing one limitations go to reclaim the land or begin a small business. Rather, there are a lot of such people within the kingdom. Most descendants of noble were originally a commoner. One's name does not limited by social status so many commoner with names like a noble. They usually decline to introduce their last name. I don't want such life. In our dinner is over, we were walking on the road to home after parted with Wendlin. Beside me is my childhood friend Louise, she leave the house before being growing up she can stay home but she could not refuse marriage proposal recommended by her parents. It impossible to dream of a wondrous thing like those in nice stories, she would not be able to refuse if the partner exceeded 70 ages when she remain in the house. Third daughter staying in the house would be treated as bonus after she mature. In Achan are smart, you can think about many things. Lou Eyes. Others would not think much about it since she looks young but Lou Eyes is actually much smarter than me. Despite having friends in the immediate neighbor family, with the situation look like childhood friend, are being close friends, deep inside we have similarity. I think we got the chance. In a, you mean about Vulcan? Dot. Lou Eyes. Despite being the same age who aspire to become adventurer, we're so worthless that we were helped from the wolf. That does not mean we are awfully weak. It might have the same result with the other scholarship students in short. Wendlin is too strong, since in Achan's a beauty, you want to catch his attention? Dot. Lou eyes. That's not it. In a, from a young age, others often said that my features is good. But I don't learn spearmanship because of that. There also may who said that my sharp eyes look scary. What's more, I tends to become silent when thinking. The man didn't know what I am thinking about, and they would see me saying harsh things sometimes. I don't think that the type of woman Wendlin would like. Even my figure also standard, I think Lou Eyes had better appealing with her cute appearance. I looked like a little girl. Lou Eyes. Some man love that. In a, in I might think what I am saying all of sudden when the figure were to be expected in the future in a can be expected but it would be hard for me. Nevertheless. A girl like Lou Eyes might be Wendlin type. When I put it in number, the two of us will be too type for many better choices. But it's just a stupid idea if I may say so myself. I was just kidding. I wish we can become his friend and form a party, that would be great. Lou Eyes. Lou Eyes can also scheme something amazing without hesitation sometimes. Prep school student will not go to monster territory until graduation. Starting from the latter half of school year. Expect battling with the teacher for training party's skill. Prior to assembled party for that, for those had been confirmed can't cooperate in hunting, they would not be able to object when said as not suitable to be adventurer. Everyone thought that it was a precious time now. There must be many rival. In a, you're right it will be overwhelming when there are Vulcan, Irukan also quite good as swordsman. Lou eyes. That said, it would be foolish of me if I suddenly put out party formation request. When someone without ability all of sudden would like to form a party, those with high ability would say that you're just a nuisance and burden. Please leave. What would they think about us? Dot. In a, well. Lou eyes. Honestly, I don't think we are that inferior to other scholarship students. Both of us were in the top five of admission grades. Thinking about it is useless, let's put out the application form. Lou eyes, Lou eyes, you. In a, sometimes giving such an intuitive action and opinion, but that was my best friend Lou eyes. However, that result surprisingly not that bad. If it's no good, they can cancel it. Lou eyes, what a positive action. In a, by that reason, with nothing to lose, we decide to put out the party application with four people. However, when I fill in the party application paper on the next day and submit it, Homeroom teacher Seek did not reject it. So four people within five place in admission ranking the balance in fighting ability isn't that bad either, since life is at stake I won't say that people with lower grades need get in to get some experience. In a, since life is at stake, people with low grade were allowed to join with the top grade for balance, Seek teacher who also originally an adventurer does not seem to say, and we are not a professional adventurer, because we just an apprentice. Those with the closest grade were put together, people with low grade hunting to gain experience, 
trained to dealt with monster in the future. This is the correct objective of prep school. Anyone want an excellent party I'll give the application toward the general affairs. Lou eyes. I can't believe that the party application would pass is so fast. The only problem and the most crucial would be Wendlin and Irwin who didn't know about it. I feel that is the biggest problems. It would be okay. Lou eyes. On the other hand, Lou eyes was not worried about anything. In some way, she is the big shot. And about Wendlin and Irwin who unconsciously joined a party. Hey, Iru. Wendlin. I never thought about it but besides teamed up with other low grade people it would be like this. Owen. Really? Dot. Wendlin. Adventurer is also the same as other job if we can't be together, we can disband to make a new party not that we will be in the same party in our lifetime. Owen. It makes sense if you put it that way. Wendlin. I didn't really know about Wendlin that well. The idea of Owen was extremely dry. The application has already been passed, we can just make a new one if we can't be together. If fact. Even a first-class adventurer party would be impossible for it to be the initial member. Everyone keep forming and disbanded the party, some member replacement immediately became the best members. It was normal for human beings to be like that. Oh well please take care of me then. Wendlin. Same here. Inna. Me too. Blue eyes. Take care of me I guess it just something trivial for an excellent mage. Owen. I and my friend just realize it now. It make us think that Wendlin is a really important figure. Anyway, I promised that I'll made an effort not to become a burden. Interlude 05. I'm not a Lilikin, I think. Hey, take me somewhere. Lou eyes. What are you saying all of a sudden? Dot. Wendlin. Successfully enrolled in adventure at prep school, while passing time by hunting as a part-time job. I am teamed up first with my close friend Erwin von Armin. He was in a tough situation just like me as the fifth son of a knight peerage house that's why it didn't take that much time to befriend him. Well, most of the child nobles at the adventure at prep school are in the same circumstances. Then, we saved two of our classmates from a pack of wolves while returning from hunting. Of the two classmates we helped, one is Inna Suzanne Rembrandt. The cool type pretty girl an expert with the spear with a sharp gaze she occasionally shows that makes people uncomfortable. Some people might think she's scary, but I don't feel that way. Since this is a western fantasy style world, she appears more mature than Japanese people, but she is a 12 or 13 year old girl after all. With my mental age being over 30 years old, it feels like she's showing her deep moment. I know that she always tries her best which is charming. The other is Lu Eyes Yoland Aurelia Overwig, the Lilite type pretty girl typical nobility. The name is so long that it's hard to remember. In my previous world, I'd get arrested immediately if I make a move on her. It's the real cute type girl. But, don't be fooled by her appearance. She is a talented person who passed the scholarship test with the magic combat style the army uses if you try to touch her chest. Without a doubt, you will get a broken nose. And if you touch it and say no bulge, it can be expected that she will mark you for the next few years. Take you isn't this your hometown? You must be more familiar with the geography of Britburg than I am. Wendlin. But I think it's still a man's role to escort a woman. Blue eyes. There is also such a theory. Wendlin. Because Vulcan is a man, you should escort me like a gentleman. Blue eyes. Unfortunately, I am lacking in experience. Wendlin. Ah. Blue eyes. With some twists and turns, our first holiday starts without any problems. Today, Iru went out to look for a new sword and is also going out to look for a new spear. Surprisingly, Iru and in our weapon lovers it's something that we entrust our lives to, so I guess it's natural as aspiring adventurers. That reminds me, Lou Eyes, do you want to look for new gloves? Dot. Wendlin. I don't need them now. Lou Eyes. According to Lou Eyes's story, one's own body is the most important for the magic combat style. Fortunately, the gloves she got from her father are a high quality set despite being second hand goods. She won't need a new set for a while. If needed in the future, she intends to use the money she has saved. I see saving money is important. Wendlin. Saving up a certain amount of money to buy something you need. I was like that in my previous life, saving money diligently while still a junior high student. Right so treat me to something as a guide fee. Blue eyes. You. Wendlin. I had thought that I have no interest in Lily, just like in my previous life. But when Louise asks me while smiling, 
I can't say anything. For many years, other than mother and sister-in-law, I hardly talked with women that I am biased. Nah, I also had a girlfriend before in my previous life. I don't have fear of strangers or gynophobia but I didn't meet that many people in these last six years, so by chance, I may have developed one. Within my mind, various thoughts are swirling. I'll guide you to a shop specializing in magic tools. It's a holiday, so let's go out. Blue eyes. Okay, I got it. Wendlin. With Lou eyes leading me by the hand, we go to the area in Britburg town that I had not seen until now. You didn't buy anything. Lou eyes. All the merchandise isn't really that good. Wendlin. After about an hour, with Lou eyes as guide, we leave the store specializing in magic tools that I didn't know of until now we have a talk while drinking tea in a cafe in the main street. I can't tell the difference. Blue eyes. The magic tools aren't so bad. Wendlin. Shops that display magic related goods are something hard to understand, indeed. Are there any general purpose products that can be used by people with low magical power, or, are there only magi exclusive goods? And, are there weapons and armor that can be equipped by mages? Actually, due to mages being so few in number, only a few shops display the third category of items. If all the items were to be put on display, they would be numerous. Nevertheless, as expected of the specialty stores of Britburg, there is generally a decent quality of goods being put on display but, the quality can't be compared with master's heritage. Of course, I don't need any of them. I move to this cafe after checking all the items. Magic tools are expensive. Blue eyes. For general purpose products in particular, even an item that lets out a spark just like a lighter is almost 1000 cents. The reason is because only an extremely small number of people can make them. Items for mages aren't that expensive by the way, Lou Eyes didn't buy any. Dot. Wendlin. You noticed it? Dot. Lou Eyes. Of course, mages can notice other mages. Wendlin. In fact, I've been aware from the moment I saw her at the entrance ceremony. In and Lou Eyes hold more magic than most people and Lou Eyes must be beginner or intermediate, which greater than in a what's more. Luai's deliberately concealed this and didn't do any training to increase her magical power. I think you can exceed intermediate if you train. Wendlin. There is a reason for that. Luai's. Overweg House, which is her parents' house, is a family with social standing that has taught magic combat style for generations. But human beings with a lot of magical power should not be born in such a house. The generation's old secret training method draws out battle ability so that even those with the magical power of an ordinary person are able to overwhelm an average person it can be said to be a technique that is able to use magical power efficiently. My father and brothers only have the magical power of ordinary people I am an exception. Lou Eyes When Lou Eyes became able to understand what was going on around her, she began to learn magic combat style from her father and brother immediately. She didn't notice about her somewhat larger magical power so many that Lou Eyes gradually become stronger. Even her father and brother were overwhelmed by her in combat. I thought in my childish mind that I must hold back but I found out that my technique becomes rigid if I hold back. Lou Eyes, go easy on children. In addition, that child was a girl this caused her to gradually become isolated in the dojo. Even though her father and brothers were gentle at home, she was treated coldly in the dojo but she was never told not to come to the dojo. Were she to be forcibly excluded, other disciples might think that, because she is stronger than the instructor, that small girl was excluded. But it was hard to handle a girl who was stronger than the instructor it didn't take much time for the training to become painful. But Inna whose house is close also had the same problem. Lou eyes, as a result. Most of the time she was excluded during training. She knows that magical power can increase with extensive training. However, when the increased magic power was used with magic combat style, it would increase the gap in strength between her and her family. She had no choice but to postpone her training in magic power. These are her current circumstances. But I feel remorse it took so long to defeat that pack of wolves. Blue eyes. If she had increased her magical power properly, it might not have taken her so long to defeat those wolves. With that in mind, now she's determined to work hard at training. I'll work hard to master the magic combat style. Blue eyes. Oh, do your best. Wendlin. But we discover later an unexpected fact in the process of that training. As a result of her magic power increasing, 
the fighting power of magic combat style went up, but other magic still can't be used it made Lu Ai's feel dejected. In fact, sometimes these people exist only able to use magical power to improve their physical strength or strengthen the power of attack and defense, the so-called magic swordsman or magic martial artist. Lu Ai's Even if you call my name, I only said that it was possible for you to gain more magical power. Wendlin When there is low magical power, in order not to consume the magical power, I can imagine that the body unconsciously cannot use other magic. Another theory is that it had been carved in one's deep psyche that one can't use other magic. This description is written in the book that Master left. It was written that there are some people that are originally without aptitude and are not able to use it, so it's difficult to distinguish it makes me quite disappointed. Although Master was an excellent mage, when looking through the book and letters he wrote that he left behind, it often described with a very mild personality. Even if I flip through a book desperately seeking an answer, I don't think it will give me one. You can just become stronger with magic combat style it's rather strange with that talent that no invitation has come from Brithhilda Margrave. Wendlin Louise's magical power should already be close to Blanche Erkson who belongs to Brithhilda Margrave's house. Despite having just started building up her magical power, she has more magical power than most retainer mages. That's because I am a woman. Lu eyes. Due to being a woman, it's not possible to create a family. To become a vassal, this county and the neighboring country Elkut Holy Empire are the same. The status of women being lower, a woman as the head of a household is unlikely to possess a title. If Lu eyes was a man, Brithhilda Margrave would have come over to invite her. It just for form's sake. She still registered as Overweg House, though the conditions of after she grows up can be put. However, that is impossible because Lu Eyes is a woman. Even if she has the talent, as a woman, she would have to leave Overweg House to teach the generation's old magic combat style to Brithhilda House. It might be possible for Brithhilda Margrave to push it forcibly, but the relations with vassals would likely become strained this time if he does that. It is not a time of war either. A newcomer disturbing the current system would lead to overreactions. Even for those with the ability to be hired immediately, it wouldn't be smooth sailing. Brithhilda Margrave's house is a huge structure, ed, metaphorical house, not the building he lives in. Such stories are also often heard about government offices and large companies from Heiseira Japan, so I don't think it's something ridiculous. What a troublesome story. Wendlin. Completely a feudal society. It's a hassle to serve in the court. Not that I really care though. Lu eyes. Lu eyes will get stronger from now on. That can only spell trouble for her brother's status, which is more precious than jewels for Overwig House's current head. Actually, it was the same with me. Kurt Nissan is more precious than jewels for the Bormister House's headship and territory, but I can only recognize it as something troublesome to manage with little income. Not all humans desire the same thing. It would be nice if I could use magic. Lu eyes, raise your magical power, and pray to the heavens. Wendlin, such an irresponsible teacher. Lu eyes, I get along well with Lu eyes due to her practicing and raising her magical power slowly I am getting on good terms with her. But some ridiculous rumors goes around because of this. Oi, Vil. Owen, what is it, Iru? Dot. Wendlin, are you really going out with Lu eyes? Dot. Owen, I am not. Dot. Wendlin. Rumors spread within the prep school that Lu Eyes and I are dating. At the same time, there are also rumors going around that I like small girls and small chests. Interlude 06, a strong willed ally girl. Vulcan. Lu Eyes. What's up, Lu Eyes? Dot. Wendlin. For the sake of participating in Eric Nissan's marriage, we had boarded the magic airship heading for the royal capital, the four of us, Erwin, Inna. Louise and myself. As I had inherited money among other things from Master, I was different from the remaining three people, and thus I had to loan them the ship fare for the magic airship myself. Although they were saying things like it's nice to be able to lend money so easily, the act of lending money to others wasn't such a nice thing in this world. Not returning the loaned money to the creditor would result in a lawsuit upon losing the lawsuit. The debtor couldn't even complain about being made to slave away in a mine either. The amount of money was an important factor and not being able to return it meant being forced to labor until you were able to earn enough money in compensation. This was also written down in law. However, 
This time there was no contract or interest either way. Therefore it would be difficult to win a lawsuit if those three wouldn't return the money to me even if I told their Margrave of Brithhilda. That's because there was no evidence. But, to explain the situation this time, there were two of our group caught in a dilemma. The children of retainers had borrowed money from me, who could be considered to be placed in the duty as head magician in the future without being able to return it, even more so without any contract or interest, complete loans without collateral. Naturally, the families of Inn and Louise would be carefully examined by the Margrave of Brithhilda and eventually fall into disgrace. Being fully aware of this matter, it was very improbable that those two would avoid repaying the debts. Moreover, including Erwin, the four of us wanted to go hunting as soon as possible to return the amount of one gold coin per person. Being unwilling to spend one gold coin would have meant wasting a full month using a carriage to make the trip, which would have been profane. Because those three came to this conclusion, they asked me to loan the money unconditionally. Yes, about the money that was loaned. Blue eyes. After boarding the magic airship and finishing to eat the first dinner while lazing around in my room, Blue eyes appeared and passed me the three gold coins they had borrowed from me. Honestly. I was amazed by the speed of reimbursement. That was fast. Dot. Wendlin. I found a good part-time job. Blue eyes. Can I do it as well? Dot. Wendlin. You can't I don't think you can use a magic combat style for a part-time job, can you? Dot. Blue eyes. What kind of answer is that? Dot. Wendlin. Though it is fine to tell you, I want you to keep it a secret. Blue eyes. Blue eyes began to explain the method how she was able to return the fare costs just after having boarded the magic airship for less than half a day. This ship is dedicated for the exclusive use of rich people, wouldn't you agree? Dot. Blue eyes. Because the lowest fare price was one gold coin, common citizens were excluded and the quality of customers was mostly limited to only nobles with their attendants and wealthy merchants. That's why Lu Eyes had gathered many people in the lounge and started a game. If you can win in arm wrestling against me, you will be awarded one gold coin. The participation fee is ten silver coins. Lu Eyes, with a cute girl talking about such courageous matter suddenly, naturally it gathered a lot of attention. The noble Samas wouldn't accept such a challenge. Wendlin, the ones I was aiming for were the retainers. Lu eyes. One gold coin for beating Lu eyes, who looked like a ten years old. In arm wrestling, there were many guards, employed by nobles to protect them, who were confident in their strength. Assembling those, Lu eyes started to challenge them to arm wrestling. I feel sorry for them. Wendlin, the unadorned strength of Lu eyes wasn't supposed to be any different from a girl of the same age. However, she had endured the training in a magic combat style until mastery with her father and her brothers as instructors. A muscle man with a stature exceeding a height of two meters was defeated by Lu Eyes in mere seconds because of that all of them got fired up and paid the participation fee in order to become a challenger. When it became the second half of the challenging, their surrounding mood turned into something like, there must be a person who can defeat her at least once. To this degree Lu Eyes's streak of consecutive victories had lasted. Apparently you yielded quite the profit. Wendlin. And, now I am able to go shopping in the capital. Lu Eyes. As we wouldn't have any expenses while staying in the royal capital, she quickly returned the borrowed money so she could focus on shopping and getting presents no matter what. I was told that the earnings this time had resolved any and all worries regarding that. There won't be any problems. Lu eyes. As she had defeated them all fair and square, the adult men certainly wouldn't admit such an embarrassing thing like being defeated by Lu eyes in arm wrestling. For that reason I am pretty sure there would be no issues with Lu eyes keeping the five gold coins she had earned, just in case. I lost once in the end. Blue eyes. Only one person, a former adventurer, who was employed as a guard of a noble, was up to the task. Therefore, she had acted as if it was a close contest and lost on purpose in the end. You shouldn't do such a heartless thing. Wendlin. Naturally the gallery noticed and glared at the challenger, who had defeated Blue eyes and obtained the price of one gold coin which lead to the conclusion of them facing that man next. During that busy time Lu Eyes used the opportunity to skillfully sneak away with a feeling of me. Adoari, being shrewd, you reimbursed Irwin's and Inna's share as well, huh? Dot. Wendlin. Ha ha has for paying Irwin's share, I have arranged to work him hard as a luggage carrier while we go shopping. 
Lu Eyes, because Inna's her childhood friend, it isn't particularly strange for Lu Eyes to not demand anything of Inna considering the relationship of those two, Inna likely will diligently work towards reimbursing Lu Eyes. You're a frightening woman. Wendlin, right, I am a devilish woman. Dot. Lu Eyes, while saying this, Lu Eyes was making a coquettish looking pose unfortunately I must say, though, that it apparently had no effect at all. Unfortunately, there isn't much time left. Wendlin, don't say that. Dot. Lu Eyes, just on this occasion, the devilish woman was nowhere to be found no matter how you look at it. Without wanting to make light of her disposition, it was still a fact. I am the same age and am also a student of the adventurer prep school. Just like Vulcan although I am the child of a semi-noble retainer, I don't want to incur debts as far as possible those are my thoughts, but... Lu Eyes, although she shamelessly relied on me, she still has pretty much the extreme pride of a noble. Finding a balance there is an exceedingly difficult task. Then let me pay a little bit of interest. Lu Eyes, no need. Wendlin, a gentleman would silently accept it. Lu Eyes, like that Lu Eyes swiftly moved to my side and gently kissed my cheek. As one would expect of a magic combat style user I wasn't able to do anything but ending up being kissed as is. Because it's embarrassing, it's not on the lips. Lu Eyes, while stating those words. Louise's face turned bright red due to her embarrassment and she ended up escaping from the room quickly. Despite still being a child, it's clear that she will become quite the devilish woman in the future, huh? Wendlin, I am not sure what I should think despite being seduced by such a child, but to tell you the truth, my heart was severely going doki doki. However, the doka doki ended up changing into a totally different doka doki just a half day later.